that's three streamers now that we've heard sing the praises of Coke Zero. What's going on? They must be in the pocket of Coke Zero because it's Northern Lion and, and Destiny. And then Joseph Anderson has said that Coke Zero is really good too. And then my brain went, but Joe, we're Joseph Anderson. And then I said back to my brain, exactly how deep does this go? <laughs> um, before I start talking, I need to make good on a promise that I said last time that I ended the stream. So... Um, this is just one minute. Don't get all crazy like, oh my god, here comes the whole thing. This is just one minute. The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt is a weird sequel. As is tradition for this channel, we can break this down much more than it needs. There's a 3 right there, even though this will be the first and only Witcher game that most people will play. Even if this is their favorite game, most people won't go back to the first two. Many of them won't even play the DLC for Wild Hunt. And that their part is weird too, Wild Hunt, not THE Wild Hunt, which is how the group is always referred to in the books and games, just Wild Hunt, because repeating THE twice in THE title would be visually and audibly awkward. Even weirder is that THE Wild Hunt is barely in THE game. They are undoubtedly important to the plot and do serve as the game's major antagonistic force, but their screen time is shockingly low for something that is placed in the title. The last pieces are the colon, which are inherently odd and the butt of many wordplay jokes in the literary world, and as we all know, Witcher is a weird word. Welcome to the third and- Alright, promise kept, let's do this shitty fucking leap day, umineko, whatever the hell, and let's just get this over with and move on. Alright. Was it one minute exactly? Was it really? All right, anyway, so, um, four score and seven years ago, I made a joke about, um... <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. About doing a read-through of Umineko, it's on the screen, but if you're not reading, you just want to hear me talk. Obviously, that's where you want to read someone, uh, you want to hear someone read a fucking VN. Um, I'm a little nervous, sorry, it's been a while. Uh, so, I said that we were going to do Umineko, and I thought it would be funny if it was, oh, we're just going to do it on leap days only. And when I made the joke, you know, the next leap day was, it was so far away, who cares? That's a problem for future Joe. Well, now I am future Joe, goddammit. And mistakes were made, regrets were done, uh, reaping is great, sowing is not. I, like, fucking, where's that meme with the girl that's crying when she's like, hmm, yes, joking about playing Yumi Neko on Leap Day, and then next meme, actually having to fucking play the fucking game. It's not, it's not a game. It's not a game. Anyway, um, so I messaged resident uh, expert uh, Umi Neko, uh, Kusoro, and asked what version, and he told me that the one on Steam is fine, so that's what we're gonna do with. No mods, no nothing. That's all we're doing. Um, so, Kusoro, um, oh, sorry, I just hit the mic, uh, defends that title viciously. Very, very important. Oh, shit, squeaky chair, squeaky chair. <sighs> Wait, are we really doing it? We are really doing this. I don't know how long for, but we are really doing this. I, I only have 10 streams to do this if I'm lucky before I die. I might die before I have enough time to, to finish this, so we're probably never finishing it. So, you know, like... <laughs> Question, question mark, because I can only stream it on leap days! And there's only a leap day every four years, so the four times ten is forty. I'm almost forty. If I'm lucky, I'll get to eighty. So I only have, I only have ten streams to do this before I die. So, so I, like, like, I'm probably gonna be dead before we're done with this, okay? Do you know, there are, there are weebs, there are, there are, there are weebs in the chat. Obviously there are weebs in the chat. There are, there are dozens of weebs in the chat right now. Nate, hundreds, hundreds, th there are thousands, millions, if you count all the weebs that are watching this in the VOD on YouTube, not on my second channel though, on a highlight, like millions of weebs are watching this live or in the past, or sorry, in the, in the future. Uh, and we're in the past, that are that are thinking right now, hoping, hoping, hopium and co copium, one in each nostril, that are like, you know what? He's going to love this so much that he's going to want to continue and do a full read through on stream. That they are, they are on that. They are on that. They are inhaling hopium, exhaling copium, and then inhaling that back in. That's what they're doing, man. That's what they're doing. The weebs. Squeaky chair is still here. Squeaky chair, squeaky chair. That's what they're thinking. Anyway, um, I have the game ready to go, maybe. Uh, so I, I launched the game to make sure, and then I heard the seagulls, seagulls crying, and my dumbass thought that maybe the seagulls at some point were upset about something, and then when I heard the, like, cry, cry, I'm like, oh yeah, they do call that a cry, don't they? <laughs> I'm like, why, why are this... <laughs> 
<laughs> Why are the seagulls? Oh shit! There's a there's a coffee. Hold on. <laughs> Yeah, my Sundari pills. Oh, you got it. Yeah. So when you, when you, if you heard Lily, if you heard when the seagulls cry, do you think the seagulls are sad? It makes me think of Prince. Prince? When doves cry? Get out. <laughs> Get out. Here we go. <sighs> Get out. Sorry, I have to. I have a coffee and it has dairy in it. And I'm, I'm, I have to take one of my soon dairy pills because I'm very anime and I don't know if I'm lactose intolerant. We're, we're figuring it out. In case you don't understand, they're called soon dairy pills because soon I will be consuming dairy. So they're my soon Get it? Because it's lacto lactose, lact get it? The <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get the game on. It's not a game. Fuck. All right. The music was really loud. Oh my God. What the? There they are. They're, they're, oh, they be crying. Oh, they're crying. Oh, you can't see it. I'm jealous. That is not the right order. Still not the right order. There we go. Did it. It's in 4-3, so we needed a background. So that's the background. All right, so is it, um, is it too loud? If you can hear it, it's too loud. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, it, it is actually legitimately too loud for me. I don't know if it's too loud for you all, but I'm gonna turn it down a little bit. All right. Citizen Kane might also seem bad in first half. Steins Gate gets good. I remember that. Oh man. Oh man. Oh man. Zero Seventh Expansion presents. Welcome to Rock and Jima. When they cry three. Oh, it's like Devil May Cry three. Did I'm sorry. Did we skip over one and two? I. I Am I gonna be confused? Yes? Okay. I can't believe Caps actually gave 100. Did Caps give 100 subs? I'm not reading subs today. I'm sorry. Thank you so much for the subs. I'm, I'm completely lost. Okay, I have Evolve going in the background. I broke my Evolve hiatus just for this, so I would have something to do when this is boring. So, me and the boys, the boys watched their first grown-up movie last night. I realized I quickly have to have a disclaimer of what I meant by that. Okay, so they, mo they, they, they watched their first movie that is not a cartoon, okay? They watched their first, like, with actors, like, like a, a movie that you might enjoy, okay? Like, that's, the, they watched their first, they watched their first, like, movie, um... Like, they've seen the Mario movie, they've seen Shrek 1 and 2, they've seen, I don't know, some Paw Patrol bullshit. I don't know what it would have else they've seen. But they watched their first movie last night, that's that's a real movie. Do you want to guess what movie it was? Matrix. Yeah, it was, I started them off with the Matrix. Drive, yeah, it was Drive. Oh, someone said Drive, hold on, one second. Minimize, no, stay minimized. You don't like to stay minimized? Shit, is it still here? Oh no, is it gone? Oh, here it is, all right. Someone said drive. Boys have no idea what girls go through. What's my favorite movie? Oh, that's so easy. It's got to be Drive starring Ryan Gosling. Seriously, you've never seen the movie Drive with Ryan Gosling? It's only one of the best films ever made. Oh, nothing on Netflix looks good? Well, as a matter of fact, I happen to have a copy of Ryan Gosling's Drive. It hit 2011 film Drive here on my Blu-ray. Fuck that up. Let me just pop it in the flare and let's sit watch. Isn't Blu-ray without an E? Cackle E? Cackle E? Look, it was set up. It was on purpose. Cackle E. All right. Um, they watched. Leo just turned seven. Leo just had a birthday. My, my baby boy is seven. I'm very upset. Also proud, but also upset. He just turned seven. Loves dinosaurs, so we watched Jurassic Park. Last night, we watched Jurassic Park. And let me tell you, that movie does not hold up. What the hell? What happened? That movie does not hold up. Now, the CGI and the effects hold up. Don't get me wrong, that it, it really did. Like, it still looked good. But the last half of that movie, oh my god. That just, I was like, whoa. This, this is not as good as I remember it being. Nah, you trip it. Nah, you need to go watch it again. Nah. Nah, nah. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, spoilers for the 1993 movie Jurassic Park. If you haven't seen it by now, what the fuck are you doing, Zoomer? Okay, listen. They set up multiple times. 
you know, that when T-Rex about to appear, T-Rex, boom, 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 audio echo, whatever, or like whatever the fuck Jeff Goldblum says, like when he's looking sexy on the car. And and then at the end, it's like, oh, stealth T-Rex activated ma maximum stealth mode. Like stealth T-Rex just appears in the fucking foyer of the museum to save them from fucking Velociraptor. Ding, cinema sin. Like, like, like seriously, I, I think, I think that Jurassic Park benefited from two things, okay? Number one, number one, it looked amazing when it came out, so we just overlooked all the, all these problems. Don't get me started on the best scene in the movie, which is one of the best scenes of all of cinema. It's so good, it, it survives these two of these problems. Two kids holding back a T-Rex's head with a little piece of fucking plexiglass that you can't even say is like bulletproof or whatever because the T-Rex just broke it to get into the car. And number two, what is with this like, like yo-yo bouncing of the fucking like fucking ground level on the other side of that fucking fence? man and one oh, there's a goat and the t-rex is like oh i'm a fucking t-rex here i go and then the next one suddenly it's there's like a fucking like 20 200 foot cliff drop on the other end what the hell is that all about and that scene's still great don't get me wrong that's a great that's a great fucking scene still 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 but like man like i think that jurassic park is such a classic because one it just looked amazing when it came out and two that was a simpler time before youtube made us all cynics about everything and i know that that is partly my fault but you know what like like that guy that published the fucking alpha wolf book and then spent his whole rest of his life debunking his own book when he realized it was wrong i've realized the error of my ways i think that if jurassic park came out today People would be like, oh, fucking cinema is dying, you know, this is fucking fucking stupid, and I'm giving this an 8 out of 10. No, he, that's a good score from him, shit. Um, <laughs> chair is so fucking squeaky. Joe laughing in love with that. Oh, yeah, I did. I did. Oh, my God. When when Laura Dern drives back with the hunter guy to the to the T-Rex compound and the car is gone and she just yells out, Alan, I lost my shit and I couldn't tell the kids why. I just lost. <laughs> just, just, <laughs> Lily was watching too from the kitchen. And I just started laughing and laughing. I was so proud of my boy. Leo kept kept saying, why are they doing these dumb things? Like, whenever whenever the kids were left alone, he was like, well, that's stupid. Why don't they just stay together? Like, oh, why is she going there by herself? And why don't they just get a gun? And like, it's just like, he's just like completely just like <laughs> understands. And then he, when uh, when the guy got killed by the raptor and he said, clever girl. And, and then this was really good. And then later on when it's like, oh, raptors can't open doors, right? And then the, then the raptor opened the door and Leo said, clever girl. And I was like, God damn kid well done you get it he was he was he had a good time the beginning of the movie was kind of boring for them like and you gotta be fair it's it's a while until a dinosaur shows up in jurassic park which admittedly i don't think is a flaw actually but i feel like the first third of jurassic park is kind of a cool uh what sci-fi speculative is it thriller would it count as thrill i don't know and then after that it becomes like adventure slash horror movie it just comes out of nowhere it's like i get the setup and everything it felt a lot older than i remember being man do you think it would have been different if they saw it like one year earlier for leo definitely yeah like finn finn would have been fine yeah did you ever read i haven't no i want to i think i think that the uh the um the book is good i've heard the book is good joe the t-rex appears out of nowhere at the end purely because it's cool as fuck yo you know what we, oh you know what it's so cool as fuck and you know what it's it's that the characters aren't noticing the sound because they're too busy running away from the fucking terrifying velociraptors you know what would make that even better though steven spielberg if you put the sound of the t-rex stomping to the scene in in the background and we as as viewers are so in tune and worried about the characters being killed by the raptors that we don't notice it either and it's only on watching it back carefully that we're like, oh shit, we could have heard the T-Rex if you're paying attention, but we were too busy caught up in the moment to realize it. That would be detail, Steven Spielberg. But no, instead it's just fucking stealth mode, puts on his T-Rex fucking slippers and just walks into the fucking compound and just like ready to just catch a raptor in midair. Like, holy shit. I, I, I did not like the movie as much as I did when I was a kid. It's still good. First half was good. First half was good. Also, I did not, I did not realize 
on on as watching as a kid. This is the first time I've seen it since I, since becoming an adult. I think okay, like I, I did not realize how like disrespectful and creepy Jeff Goldblum comes across to Laura Dern's character in all the car and the helicopter scenes. As an adult, I was like, "Yo, dude, you're thirsty. Back the fuck off, man!" Like. Who the hell? Like, as a kid, I didn't realize that. It, now, now, to his credit, as soon as Sam Neill says, "Yo, that's my girl, dog," like Jeff Goldblum's like, "Whoa, okay, sorry, I'll back off." Like, like res the respect is given as soon as he realizes. But like before that, it's like, "Whoa, what the hell?" Like he's going hard, man. Like putting his hands on her hands, like running his hands through her, down her down her skin on her the hairs on her hand with the water bit or whatever. Yeah. Anyway, are we gonna read Umineko? Like we're in, we're 23 minutes into this. You know what? That's not usually as long as we need to start. <laughs> I'd like to officially submit that I went 10,000 messages on Jads without bringing a persona verified by independent chat auditors. I'd like the marble and 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 self-respect. Thank you. Okay, but is Bcoy circumcised, Balder? Is Bcoy circumcised? I need an answer before I give you your marble. Absolutely not. I'm seeing a lot of answers from people who are not Balder. He's got a little hat. He's a hooded hero. You know what? You know what? That's an answer. I, 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 I am picking up what you're putting down. Yep. Okay. So he's not. He's not. All right. Okay. All right. What is your marble, Balder? Although I will admit, if, if I get some independent auditors of my own, and we find out that you're a liar, then I'm, I'm taking this marble away, and now you'll be negative marbles. You'll be in marble debt. So what is your choice? Occult 9 certified by Caps as a banger for the first six episodes. Is Caps a weeb? Occult 9. Is this a semicolon one? If I put occult semicolon 9? It is! <laughs> Alright. A blog disproving the supernatural, co-run by neat teenager Yuta Gamon. He likes his scotch neat, which is just water. And his enthusiastic best friend Ryoka Narusawa become the catalyst that would bring together a group of people who supposedly have nothing to do with each other. <laughs> what are you doing? It's <laughs> just a nothing sentence. What do you mean? That does not. They would, they would become a catalyst of a group forming of people that know nothing of you. And what? And what do they do? Sentence. What the, what the fuck? This is just nothing. This is. He, they, they, so because of the site, and they're the catalyst of so, of a group of friends forming. All right, cool. These individuals include high school fortune teller Miyu Akiyawa, who joins Yuta to work on the blog. What? Why is the blog so important? Realist Sa Sarai Hashigami, who is stunned when tragedy strikes his family. Dojin artist Ririkia Nishizono, who has an uncanny ability to predict the future with her art. Thus disproving the fucking whole point of the website and blog that they care about so much. Nah, nah, every single episode, you know, she just got lucky. We're just interpreting her art as the future. Like, no, 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 no. Black magic practitioner and local curse expert, Arya, whatever. I, I, you know what? I'm seeing a trend. And her ghostly friend it, is the friend literally a ghost. Shun Moritsuka, a seemingly childish otaku detective. Oh, for fuck's sake. Okay, until then, it might have been okay. Oh my god, Balder, what the fuck? Oh my god. Look at the cover art. They're all in like a building and he's wearing a yellow coat. Oh no, this isn't the one with the with the big titted girl that is she hits her own face with her tits. Is it sorry, sorry to say tits. I know that's slightly misogynist, but once they get that big in cartoon form, they're tits now. Like is, is that what oh my god. Like that that's actually ridiculous. Like, oh holy shit. Check the gifts and I've seen them. I've I that's been posted a lot. I know what that is. I just didn't know it was from this. I saw her picture in the bottom. Oh my god. Okay, and, and, and at the end, and reporter Toku Sumikaze. All right. As this unlikely group, bound only by the strings of Fate, find their way to each other, they are confronted with murder and other events that are shrouded by the presence of the supernatural. But, but, but the blog! But the, every, every episode at the end, but you know what? We encountered a lot of supernatural things this week. But you know, I'm sure they all have rational and reasonable explanations. And we just have to get to the bottom of it. And the next episode just never brought back up again. <laughs> they, 
They must band together to solve the mysteries interlacing the city and their lives. Okay. All right. That sounds so terrible, but maybe it's even among this is doesn't even get a seven out of ten even among weebs. It's six point nine. Nice out of out of ten. What the hell? <sighs> even among weebs. Actually, that might be a good score. I don't know how weebs uh, rate things. What is this on it? Umi Neko. It's got to be on my anime list, right? Umi Neko. When they cry. Uh, unbelievably, it's not here. Legend of the Golden Witch. It's a manga? VNDB? Oh yeah, I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong website. You know what? I've I've lost interest. Alright, let's let's actually get the game going. Alright, so not a game. Alright, so um I want the text to be as fast as possible. How do I do that? I apparently I've done it. Oh I haven't. Alright. Uh oh I, I hit the button. I hit the key. Okay, uh toggle volume. Oh my god, that's so much better. Oh, holy shit. Toggle full screen mode. No, I don't think I will. You know what? We need to have the we need to have volume on, right? There's no slider. It's it's just volume on or muted. That's it. Okay. Th was Todd Howard involved in this? Start. Is there more being in this game? Remove the lock for this episode. Okay, so I'm guessing we have to do episode one because there's nothing else here. Episode one, Legend of the Golden Witch. All right, you have my attention. Welcome to Rockin' Jima. The Golden Witch extends her heartfelt greetings. Please take it easy and relax for the time being. There's no need to think overly hard about any of this. Quietly accept all that is about to happen. That is all that's being asked of you. The difficulty level is standard. What, what, what do you mean difficulty? What? We might as well start by taking the easy road. All right, I'm getting some actual, like, no joke, some deadly premonition vibes right now. Like, seriously. Also, I need to turn the air conditioning on. Because it's hot in here. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So I have... I have Dragon's Den open. I can see Dragon's Den. I have the game open. I can see chat. I can see how many... How many are there over 2,000 people here for Umi who gives a fucko? Difficulty refers how easy it's hard to figure out what the fuck is going on. D does it does it dynamically change the clues? Because that would actually be cool. Or is it just like they're just telling you just just relax and enjoy it right now. We are here for you, not for the VN. That is not true. That is not true. Do, 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 do. All right, so we're now going to enter the boring part of the stream where I stop talking about things that are going on. Oh, I, I, I met... I'm, I met, uh, I encountered a group of, like, aliens disguised as humans, or time travelers that came from a period of time where society is, like, like, unrecognizable. Like, and this is, this is a very, this is a very small interaction, okay? This isn't a big story, but it happened, and it, it has not left my mind since it happened, okay? So, a couple weeks ago... I was taking the dogs out. I have to take the dogs out one at a time now because because I went dog sledding for the first time unintentionally. The next door neighbor's dog uh, like started barking up at my dogs from the fence, which has happened a bunch of times. But this time, Yoshi and Gatsby had apparently had enough of it, okay? And they they pulled me across the yard, like, I don't know, 30 feet across the yard. And I was heels dug into the snow, holding the leashes taut the whole time. Like, I, I never stopped trying to pull them back. And I never gave them enough friction to slow them down. <laughs> I went, like, I <laughs> sledding right across the backyard so, so they can see this dog, okay? And then that was that was the end of it. They had a fight. It was really bad. Gatsby has, has evolved into having hypervigilance after this encounter, and if there's anyone anywhere nearby, he won't poop. He's like, nope, I have to make sure that they're gone before I'm pooping. Like, he, he has become a different dog since this encounter. Anyway, so if you don't know, uh, they've gone to the vet recently. Gatsby is 126 pounds, 126 pounds, something like that. And Yoshi is 84 pounds. So um, they weigh more than I do combined. So I have been fine with them for up until then. But like after that happened, I decided that it's not safe for me to walk them both at the same time anymore. So I just don't do it. So I take them out one at a time. And we have three dogs because uh, Lily's dog is still somehow trucking along. I, uh, so I have to walk those dogs one at a time, three times. So that's what we're doing. So um, anyway, so that so this is the context for why I was taking only one dog out. Okay, so I 
I'm taking the dog out. It's afternoon. It's the second walk of the day. I get Gatsby on the leash, okay? I open the door to look outside before we go out to make sure that there's no other dog walking by to rip my arm off, okay? I look over, and there is a... Someone, I see them walking the dog often around the area. There's a, a, there's someone with a golden retriever that lives in the area. So, they're standing across the street, on, in front of the house across from ours, with the golden retriever, and there are four, I want to say boys, I'm going to guess they were like 14, 15 years old, okay? There was four, four boys around this dog walker and the dog, okay? And they are like, interacting with the dog, okay? I open the door, I see them, I'm like, that's fine, I have a good handle on Gatsby. I step out with Gatsby onto the front porch. All four of them look over, and because they heard it, look over at me, and one of them says, I swear to God, wow, they're everywhere. <sighs> Man, a dog, what the fuck? What the fuck? He was talking about humans. Yeah, maybe. Maybe it's so alien talking about humans. Anyway, like I said, very, very short story, but I, I have not stopped thinking about it since it happened. I don't, I don't understand. What the fuck? They're talking about you because weebs permeate mo our modern society. How, how could they tell I was a weeb? They hadn't seen the back of my, um, of my hoodie yet. My Steinsgate hoodie. Uh, the, the front just has it just has a tasteful clock on it. The back is is, is where you could know. I haven't shown my back yet. The smell. I do not smell. I am very clean. I am the cleanest one here. I am very 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 clean. You don't know me. Super clean. Anyway, let's 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 play. Let's play. Let's read. Let's read. All right. Legend of the Golden Witch. All right. Is it time for break yet? No. Please switch sprites when you're in game. Nah. I don't think I will. Nah. Do you have any expectations going into this? Oh, so negative. So negative. Oh my god. Tips mode? What do you mean tips mode? Can I have just the tips mode? In the middle of the game, at any time, a right click with the mouse will open up the tips mode. I know it said it was the options menu earlier. Here, besides the save and load functions, you can view character profiles and more. Additional information will be added as you progress through the story. Probably a good idea to take a peek here every once in a while. Left click to start the game. Ushi Romia Bat... Battler, battler, or battler, battler. The son. Oh, you know what? Let's we'll read that when we get in. All right. This is two JP two original. Okay. This story is very obviously fictional and fantastic in nature. What is the sound? I feel like I know the sound. Any resemblance to existing? Oh, I can't read it. Okay, that's great. You, it's a reading game. You've already fucked up. Again. Not. Not again. It's so loud. It is so loud. All right, do I need to turn it down? Change the character sprites, please. You... <laughs> uh, hey, don't get me wrong, it doesn't look bad. It just looks so different. I was expecting it to be a lot like... Like, more advanced or something, because people were saying to switch, but no, we, we want this one? Switch to Japanese... Uh, 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 this is way better. Alright, okay, oh, you know what? Kasoro, you know what? Maybe you were right. Kasoro, when you're right, you're right. Alright. <sighs> Clear. Oh, in case you just want to look at it. All right. Switch to English. All right, let's go back. Any resemblance to existing individuals, organizations, locations, or incidents is entirely coincidental. I feel like I know the sound effect from something. Some some, some video on YouTube somewhere. Did you get the fixed bugs pad? It's it's a VN. What bugs? Kusoro told me I didn't need it. Again. So you still haven't overcome your love of alcohol. The old physician let out a sigh as he removed the stethoscope. For alcohol, to all elderly men could be seen in the dimly lit study, which was filled with dust and a sickly sweet stench. In the corner of this room, which was much larger than what most people would call a study, <laughs> was an expensive looking bed, a man undergoing a medical examination and the physician conducting it. All right, how is the sound, really? Like, like, like really, how is the sound? Kasaro literally lied. Oh, did he really? Oh, well done. Well done. It's still, it's still loud, really? 
Okay, it's down to minus 29. I have never had to turn anything down to minus 29 ever. Switch switch to the older spot. Okay, this is this is novel mode versus adventure mode all over again. Alright, look, it, it's no different, chat. It's no different. There is also what appeared to be a servant watching over the whole scene. Okay, what what's what's the speed like? If we put it down to one, the bottle is my friend. What two? It is no less of a friend than you, and it only it has stood by my, my side even longer than you have. All right, three. You know what? I actually like two better. Three is almost too fast. As the man, I'd, I'd rather have it instant than than that fast. You know what I mean? As the man burying his chest with a stethoscope rearranged his clothes, he spoke unapologetically. Oh, we're, we're, uh, we're not a person that's having the stethoscope done to them. I thought we were. Okay, original images. That is very different. That is so different. This is Count Dooku, and this is Anime Dooku. Holy shit, that is so different. Kinzo-san, how, how are they together? <laughs> Kinzo-san, your body only appears to be well thanks to the effects of the medicine. However, if you continue to drink the strong spirits, the treatment will become meaningless. Is, is the medicine vampire blood? Trust my judgment. Refrain from drinking. I thank you, though only for the sentiment, my friends. Genji, another glass. Water it down slightly. That way, Nanjo can save face. Are you quite sure? After I am both the master who demanded the alcohol and the family doctor who forbade it, Genji, the older butler, silently gave a slight nod and carried out his master's orders faithfully. Okay, what does this guy look like? Be strong, Joe. Be strong for chat. All right. The family doctor, Nanjo, let out a deep sigh once again as he watched the butler busy himself alongside the liquor cabinet. There was a smell filling up the room. This sweet poisonous aroma felt as though it melted the heart, if not the soul itself. It was the smell of that venomous green drink that the man couldn't bear to part with. Nanjo, you are my close friend and we have known each other for quite a long time. I am deeply grateful for all that you have done to keep me alive this long. I have done nothing. After all, you never listen to my advice as your physician. Ha 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 cackle e cackle e you never listen when I warn you about a mistake a mistaken chess move you're about to make. It seems only fair, does it not? No, a master. Thank you. I wouldn't die if I ran out of your medicine, but I would if I ran out of this. Okay, what is it? It's not it's not alcohol at all. Disregarding Nanjo, who had his face set in a resigned expression, Kinzo took the glass that Genji was holding out to him. Very few Oh only three dots this time! Nice. Very few people would associate that venomous color with an alcoholic beverage. Okay, I'm not really feeling the let's just put the text at the top of the screen and just cover the whole image, but I I guess there's gonna be some pages that are just absolutely just brimming with text. Nanjo, be honest with me. How much time do I have left? Well now, you're how short must I make it to convince you to set the bottle aside? Nanjo once again let out a sigh of resignation. Then he finally spoke to Kinzo as the latter swirled his glass. Yeah, I hate this this mind game stuff that, that doctors have to play. Like, you know what? Like say, oh, what number do I have to say for you to for you to stop drinking? Therefore, like I'll tell you that number, and then you'll stop it. Like, is it is it really? When dentists say that it's more important to floss than brush your teeth, is that them just playing a mind game? Because who the fuck is just going to go into the bathroom and floss and then not be like, you know what, I'll brush my teeth while I'm here, right? There's no way that flossing is more important than brushing. It, it can't be. I'm not saying that flossing isn't important. Now, obviously it is. Both are important. But how? If you're only going to do one, then we want you to floss, not brush your teeth. Ooh, that's fucking horseshit. Brushing is less effective. I don't- I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Cleanest person here, but hey, I'm not talking about my habits. I'm just talking about how the dentists and doctors play mind games with us. Death creeps up through the gums. I'm brushing helps with the gums, I think, more than flossing. Flossing's still really good. I think- I think brushing is 60%, flossing is 40%, but those hacks at the dentist offices around the world will tell you that flossing is 80%, when really it's not, because they know that if you floss, you're gonna brush. And now they've got you to do both. And that's exactly where they want you. That's exactly where you want. Speaking of dentists, speaking of dentists, I have to tell you how absolutely deranged insane I got in the past two months, okay? This this happened to me. I told Lily and she didn't laugh. She was actually worried when I told her this story. Okay, so I watched a while ago, um, 
Northern Lion do a story and he was saying that he likes to drink a Coke Zero. And I was like, mm, okay, you know, like Coke Zero, you know, like that, that's pretty good. And then I was watching a, a highlight um, of uh, a streamer who's, who's a little bit controversial, so sorry to say this name. I was watching a clip of Destiny and Destiny said Coke Zero is the bomb or something like that, okay? And I heard that and I'm like, huh. And then my brain went, that's three streamers now that we've heard sing the praises of Coke Zero. What's going on? They must be in the pocket of Coke Zero because it's Northern Lion and, and Destiny. And then Joseph Anderson has said that Coke Zero is really good too. And then my brain went, but Joe, we're Joseph Anderson. And then I said back to my brain, exactly how deep does this go? <laughs> He's like, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> what the fuck? It's, it's, it's a beverage? I, I don't know. I didn't see the rest of the message. Sorry. I don't know. It's Coke Zero is great. I'm still, I'm still like, I don't know how many, how many months I haven't had a, a proper Coke now. Is it, is it eight months? Maybe it's not eight months. It's, it's a lot of months though. I'm, I'm really happy with it. Completely off of it. Finally kicked that. That's the only like addiction habit I had. So, um, pretty good. Oh my God. My arm. Oh, sorry. Hurt my arm. What is this? It's not a bit. It happened to me. Coke Zero is great. It is, isn't it? It's so much better than Diet Coke. I don't know. They can. They should just discontinue Diet Coke. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. I know a lot of people like that. I'm sorry. All right. Then he finally spoke. What, what are we doing again? What's going on? Oh yeah, the doctor's visit. All right. All right. I only have. I only have nine more streams to, to finish this before I die. Hold on. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. You don't have that. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I don't have long. You're right. Thank you. What what precisely do you mean by that? Let us illustrate it with the ch with the chess game here. You have very nearly achieved checkmate, but you have not yet cornered my king. Not Joe's gaze was directed at a side table with a massive chess set placed on top of it. All right. How on earth did we get into this position? What the fuck happened? How did this pawn get here? What is this? It went here. It took a... Nah, okay, that's actually possible. What is this a valid position of the board? I guess so. I'd have to go through it. That, that looks so weird. On passant. Chess, chess per enthusiast that knows about on passant thinking that they're going to seem cultured and look like I'm so intelligent because I know on passant posting in the chat after hearing someone mention chess. Do you know about on passant? Yeah, everyone knows about on passant. Who the fuck doesn't at this point? Fuck off with your own passant. I've known about own passant until I was 12. I've, I've own passant with your mom. <laughs> Nando's gaze is, I'm sorry. I'm nervous. I'm going to the old habits. Nando's gaze was directed at a side table with a massive chess set placed on top of it. Judging by the positioning of the pieces, the game seemed to be entering its final stage. Black's rook and bishop were um, cutting deeply into enemy lines. No. Black doesn't even have a rook. Where's the rook? They're called castles, by the way. But, you know, we'll accept Rook. White's king had already been castled and cornered, so that even an amateur could see that the match would reach its conclusion before too long. <laughs> what the fuck does that have to do with? And every time Nancho came to give a medical examination, both of them make a few moves. Yes, castling. No better sign that a game is about to come to its end. Nanjo was hinting that Kinzo would most likely fall into his eternal sleep before this game could be concluded. These were less the words of a physician than they were the words of an old friend. Were you a normal patient, I would recommend that you write a will at this point. And what is a will, Nanjo? Handwritten instructions to the vultures on how to devour and scatter my corpse? Literally? No, not at all. As the word suggests, it is a way for you to record your will for later generations. Oh, that's why it's called a will. Okay. It is far more than just a means to divide up your inheritance. Ho. Oh. And apart from the division of the inheritance, what might I write of? You might write of your regrets, or matters you have left unfinished. Things you want to pass down to others, or merely matters you wish to communicate. My only regret is I didn't hear the seagulls cry more. Anything you want. Humph. Things I want to pass down to others, or matters I wish to communicate. Ridiculous. I, Ushiro Mia Kinzo, have not one thing I want to tell or leave behind. I was born with nothing. I will die with nothing. There is nothing I wish to leave my foolish children. Even if the end were to come today, even if it were to come right now, I would accept that fate of death without a trace of fear. Oh, double question marks all over the shop. I created everything. My fortune, my prestige, everything. Those were built up by me and they will be lost along with me. There is nothing I wish to leave behind. There is a lot of text on the screen right now. Nothing. After I'm gone, I care not if it all goes to waste. Is it lagging? 
I desire no tomb, no coffin. Those were the terms of the contract I made with the witch. When I die, everything will be lost. Oh yeah, the witch! That has to be part of the promise since... Has to be part of the pro Sorry, that has been part of the promise since the beginning, and that's why nothing will be left behind. There's nothing I can leave behind. So can you not die until you just burn it all down? After reaching a furious crescendo, Kinzo suddenly slumped over. His expression was limp and feeble, as though an evil spirit has possessed him and then left. He's deed. However, I do have one regret. I have nothing to leave behind, but there is one thing I cannot leave undone. You would do well to write it down, in a will. Of course, it would be best if you could finish it before your time comes. However, even if the- Oh, this is someone else talking! Even if the worst happens, those who come after you will carry it to completion. You must leave behind your regrets so they can be resolved, even if you are unable to do so yourself. That is the purpose of a will. When Nanjo tried to gently pat Kinzo's shoulder, the dying man flew into a sudden rage and batted away Nanjo's hand. It's useless, useless, useless! Wait, wait, wait! It must be done while I still live. At the moment of my death, my soul will be devoured by the demons of the contract and wiped out of existence. For me, there will be no peace or another or another world after death. That's why everything must be completed before I go. That's why a will has no meaning for me, even if I had a chance to write such a thing, even if I did have such a chance. Kasoro thinks this is one of the best mysteries ever written. I'd like to I'd want to see it. I want to see one more time. What does Balder think? I want to see Beatrice's smiling face one last time. Oh, Beatrice, why have you resisted me for so long? In Kasoro's defense, I remember him bitching hardcore about how much it sucked until he got to the part where it gets good a hundred hours in. So even Kasoro of the past would agree that this is pretty bad, I think. Oh, Beatrice, why have you resisted me for so long? I'll return everything you have given me. I am prepared to lose everything, so please show me your smile just one more time. Beatrice, I beg of you. You must be able to hear my plea. That's the kind of woman you are. I beg of you, show yourself to me. You're here, aren't you? You're standing there invisible, listening to every word I say. Am I Beatrice? And even now, you're mocking me from somewhere in this room, aren't you? Please appear before me once more and smile. Feel free to scold me. Even snatch away my life by your own hands if you so desire. Asking a woman to smile? That's a yikes from me, chief. I don't want to die alone like this. I cannot let myself die until I've seen your smile just one more time. Ah, Beatrice, Beatrice. I offer this life of mine. I offer it up to you. I'm begging you, Beatrice. No. It crashed? Oh, oh, there's... Devil may cry. Oh, there's a clock! El Sai Kongru! Welcome to Rockin' Jima. The music was pretty rockin', I gotta say that. That wasn't a bad intro, I like that. Kinda gave me a little Chrono Cross vibes. It's my first live, live stream, Joe. Very amusing to watch you at one time speed, says the Witcher 3 video. It, it was your first live stream, yeah, Witcher 3 video. Yeah, you were you were here earlier. It's so loud, again. All right, back down to minus 29. I just, I just honestly might have just sent like 400 viewers to Vodland. <laughs> 400 people might have just fucking stopped watching live to go back through the VOD to see what the fuck you mean the Witcher 3 video was here earlier. Just, just <laughs> and they're never coming back. It's, I just, life is strange to myself. Oh, and who's here lolling? Yeah, 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 yeah. Loll it up. Loll it up. All right. Whoa. All right. How's the sound? We good? Things sure move with the times. I can't believe we'll be able to make the trip in just 20 minutes. I couldn't help but scratch my head and marvel at how far things have come in recent years. We used to go by boat. Back then, we were all forced to endure nearly half a day of swaying back and forth over the sea before we reached Nijima. 
Things have gotten much more convenient these days. It's a bit quiet, says Zorgrox. I trust Zorgrox judgment. I'll turn it up a little bit. I'll turn it up to minus 25. There we go. I feel like I had something to say and now I've forgotten it. Still, I've never been on a plane this small. I've flown in a huge jumbo jet before, but this will be my first experience in such a tiny one. It's going to shake, isn't it? They say smaller boats shake more than big ones, so I guess the same rule probably applies to planes. Ah, just spare me. Ha 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 ha, don't worry, bat, bat lurkun. It shakes much less than the than the boat that boat did. <laughs> I gotta say though, I do have to say, yeah, someone just said in chat too. This does look so soulless compared to this, doesn't it? Like it's it obviously it's not AI generated, but it gives like an AI generated kind of vibe to it. It's like it's like oh I'll update it, but I don't give a shit about these characters. I don't know what the fuck they're supposed to look like, you know? It's just whatever this design is, and I'll just make it look better. And I'm adding nothing to myself. It does look better though, I have to say. They, oh my god, it's just hard to take this seriously. Merrick said it earlier. It feels like a new grounds game when it's like this. Oh. <laughs> anyway, let's keep going. <laughs> Don't worry about. Oh, are we battler? Battler? This, this this is us. Yeah, is that you, George Anaki? Aniki? Uh, <laughs> Don't scare me like that. You just shaved three years off my life. All right, let's see. I'm sorry, man. It just it makes the whole thing have like a different vibe like like some like like baby's first online project and here's here's my main character Sona who's actually me with who's super cool and wears a suit and tie who's going on this great adventure with my friend. You know, that's just that's what I'm, That's the point. Mary, you Mary Mayo, you've done this? You've read this? That's the point. I'm so. Oh, why am I disappointed? Why am I surprised? Biggest Gravity Rush fan, really? Is this a step up or down from Gravity Rush? Oh my god. <laughs> red instead of it. Shit, it's red. Yeah. <laughs> up. Oh my god. Not only did I read it, I read it when it came out with the fan patch. Okay. Not only are you watching me stream, are you angry that I don't have the fan patch on? Wait. It it launched with a fan patch. You, like, fan translated? Is that what you mean? What do you mean? Download the patch? No, an English fan patch was- Okay, yeah, 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 that makes sense, okay, alright. Do you, do you, don't you ever worry that the, the translator has taken some liberties with what's going on and has added their own, like, slant? I told this story before a long, 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 long time ago during a Q&A, and it was it was like a Game Boy Advance game or it was like a Super Nintendo game. I can't remember. It was a very pretty sprite game from that era. It was an RPG that had kind of side scrolling, kind of almost action real time combat. And and um, I can't remember what it was called. Um, and yeah, someone knows what it is as, as, as burn. Thank you. Easy burn. Yeah, 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 yeah. People know it. Right. So like I played this game. What game was that? Can you tell me what the name of the game was? Tales of Fantasia. Is that what it was? Was it Tales of Fantasia? I can't remember. Okay. So I, I played that game. I downloaded a ROM. I played it on an emulator. It was translated and I, and it seemed like a normal game to me. Okay. And then I don't know how long I was in like five, 10, 12, 15 hours in. And then there was a scene on a boat where one of the characters who's completely normal up until that point turned to one of the other characters and said, hey, don't you think Archie fucks like a tiger or something? Like, just like, 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 and I'm, and I'm just sitting there reading it going, where the fuck is this coming from? There was no sexualization before this moment. There was no talk about any of the characters apart from this. Like, where, where, what the, what the fuck is, is any of it real? Is, is any, is any of this like actual legit translation or is the fucking like translator just riffing on every scene that, that sounds good for the scene? And here I just wanted to be fucking perverted for a little bit. Like, like, I, I cannot, I, like, I stopped playing the game like like a couple hours after that because I kept second guessing every single interaction that the characters were having. Apparently, other people had this experience. <laughs> pulling it? What are we pulling? OG sprites best, new sprites best. Oh no, OG is when. But we like. Isn't it fun to see the, like the the new ones and then we go like like boom. <laughs> I'm the creator of the group and one of the devs who made said PS3 patch and to be honest I think you should avoid it for a first playthrough unless you care about the voices. I think the original edits uh, art is where it's at. 
voices? Is there voice acting, or is, are you talking about the voice of the uh, of the characters? Oka, are you here just because the streamer is 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 doing Umineko? Oh no, your name kind of looks familiar to me, but maybe it's someone else. Oh, I hope to God you're not. Oh no. Oh honey. Oh honey. Oh, I hit the microphone. Oh honey. <laughs> no man, I like it. Okay, phew. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It was a fucking disaster. All right, OG sprites are apparently the best. Okay, I want to see a few more characters with the new ones, and then we do original image jump scare, and then we will switch over to original and continue, I guess. The people have spoken. All right. Anyway, what's shaking got to do with anything? Oh, right, the boat shaking. E he he he. I thought his name was Battler. You don't think I'm actually scared of the plane shaking or maybe falling out of the sky or something, right? Oh, of course not. My Mistake, I see you've changed a lot since we last saw you. After all, it's been six years since then. You're not a kid anymore. Ha 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 ha. Sheesh, and here you are, old enough to smoke and drink. I've got no interest in smoking, but I've always wanted to try some booze. <laughs> well, if you've got your dad's genes, I'll bet you can hold your own when it comes to drinking, right? Well, I usually drink for business rather than pleasure. It's pretty hard to do business in Japan without it. Eehehe. <laughs> That's exactly right. That's why I never miss a chance to get in some practice. Oh, okay, that, that that's an updated sprite. Is it an updated one here? Oh, he's upset. Oh. Huh. The patch adds voice acting and will not cover the screen with text. Okay, is, is oh, hey, Iron Wrath, how's it going? Is, is the voice acting fan done? Like, fa fans provided voices for the, for the game? Because, oh my god, like, this is long. No? What do you mean? It's, it's official. Oh, so there was another release, and that release had voice acting, and they they patched it over to this release if you want it. Is that what it is? Okay. It's only in Japanese. It's official and real good. Okay. Huh. They did the anime after episode four, and they got all those guys to do the voice acting for this 200-hour novel. Oh, my God. I hope, I hope they paid them well. Holy shit. That is a... Uh... As, as someone who hates doing voice work for my own stuff, imagine doing it for someone else. Holy fuck. All right, let's, let's, uh, <laughs> let's keep going. Uh, that's no good, Battler Cun. You're still a minor. Don't you know alcohol can stunt the growth of, um, never mind. Oh, first sexual joke. Come on, I'm tall enough already. In fact, it'd be easier to find clothes if I shrunk a little. I puffed my chest out proudly. Until I hit my growth spurt, my height was below average in my class, but then I grew and grew, and before I knew it, I'd, I'd passed 180 centimeters. Editor's note, 5 foot 11. Respectable. I guess I have all that muscle training and those shady mail order performance enhancing drugs to thank for that. All right, I'm getting some Ocarina vibes. I'm a little worried. Before then, I never dreamed that I'd shoot 10 centimeters above George Anaki, who'd reach his peak height early on. Damn, I'll bet my relatives all say, look how big you've grown, Bat Battler Chan or something. It's all so embarrassing. I wish they'd just give me a break. Anyway, my name, Battler. Well, it's pretty damn weird, don't you think? I've got to wonder... Who are you talking to, bud? I've got to wonder what my parents were thinking when they named me that. Oh, that's your first name! Oh god, I've never met anyone who'd read it right the first time. I usually get called Sentokun. Sorry, but that's not even close. I mean, it's not even spelled correctly. My name is written... Can you read it? No. The first part is my family name, Ushiromiya. That's a fairly plausible Japanese pronunciation so far. <laughs> Thank you, I, I try. The problem is my given name is made up of characters for fight and person, and it's pronounced battler. Oh, so it is battler. Okay. Pokemon name. Put it all together, and you've got Ushiro, your Ushiro Mia battler. I'm not doing well today. I'm sorry, chat. Pretty crazy, right? It's crazy enough that my parents decided to call me that, but it's even more crazy that some government worker let them make it official. Both groups are at the top of my, of my must-kill list. Good thing you're a battler. Anyway, this is one of my cousins. His name is pronounced Ushiromiya George, or George. He's five years older than me, so he must be turning 23 this year. Okay, so we're 18. Since the Ushi, Ushiro, I can't say this, Ushi, Ushiromiya, I, I said it right earlier, didn't I? Just go Ushi. Ushi cousin, uh, cousins consist of two boys and two girls. I end up playing with George all the time. And because I've always thought of him as a big brother, I still call him Aniki today. Okay. Woo, Battler Kun, look how big you've gotten. You know what they say, leave a boy for three days and you'll hardly recognize him. It must be in his blood. All right, we got two on the screen. Here we go. That is very different. 
What is this facial expression? It's so different. Look at this. Look how, like, like, I don't know, friendly she looks here. And here it's like, don't talk to me. Where's the bathroom? What, what, what the fuck? These are very alike. These two are very, very similar. Was this an attempt to make her look older than she looks here? Like, because I don't know how old she is here, but maybe she's she's meant to be a bit older. I like her tattoo. It is a nice tattoo. I like the tattoo. I want to get a tattoo still. I haven't gotten one yet. Rudolph wasn't that tall either until his high school years. Perhaps people end up taller if their growth spurt comes late. Nah, it's nothing special. A real man needs to be tough on the inside too. Exactly. All right, his eyes are open now. Is his eyes open in the original? Oh, they are. Okay, that's nice. Okay, unbelievably, this version is growing on me more than this version. <laughs> I'm not sold on the other ones right, but th this this is starting to look better to me than this for some reason. <laughs> exactly, Bad Badler Kun knows how it works. Real men win or lose based on what they've got on the inside. Can't ever forget to keep up your, your training and discipline. You gotta do that. Wait very alertly for the perfect moment and strike. Now I've... I never even imagined that I'd become the company president I am today, master of my own domain. Yep, to think I've come this far after starting out penniless and ruined. This stout, plump old guy is George Eniki's dad, Uncle Hideyoshi. Someone is knocking on the door, let's hope it's Lily. It's not. Hello, Kate, what's up? It's snowing outside, yes, it's snowing outside. See you later, Kate. All right, sorry, it was Kate. Interrupting Umineko Wednesdays on Elite. I know, right? We have, this this time is precious, and we're just losing it to to my kids knocking on the door all the time. How many times has this happened? Is it break time yet? God damn it, it's not. All right, he's the husband of Dad's older sister. In other words, we're not blood related. Go on. He's he's nice to children, sociable all the time, and even quick to give out some spending money to us kids. Simply put, he's an awesome uncle. He speaks in an odd and <laughs> very noticeable Kansai dialect, but he's actually a natural born Kansai. <laughs> Apparently, impressions are everything in the business world, so speaking in a different style than other people is an act that makes him stick out more. However, I hear he gets embarrassed when talking with an earshot of a real Kansai person, so he switches back to standard Japanese. I don't really get it, but he's definitely an interesting person. If only you weren't so quick to brag about your life story. That's enough for now, I think. I'm sure Battler is getting tired of it, aren't you? Nope, not at all. He he he. Nothing wrong with it. Where's the choice for me to say yes or no? I'm not getting tired of it. Nothing wrong with that. I think it's pretty cool for a man to have some stories he can brag about. I don't have anything like that at all. Oh, really? I, I'd imagine with your looks... Sorry, I imagine a man with your looks would leave girls crying left and right. Not only seagulls. I can't believe you have nothing at all to brag about. What? You're joking, right? Of course nothing weird like that's ever happened to me. Heck, I wish it would. Come on, you aren't fooling anyone. Giggle. You must you must tell your aunt all about it later. Giggle e, giggle e. After all, nothing of the sort ever happens to George. Hehehehe. <laughs> this is George and Nikki's mother, Aunt Eva. Also not blood related. She's my dad's oldest. Ah, oh, damn it. She and Uncle Hideyoshi are a pair of jokers, and they've always teased me back as far as I can remember. This sometimes made, made them a bit hard to get along with when I was small. Well, I guess the events of the last 30 seconds prove that they can still be hard to get along with, but you're telling us anyway. Even so, jo who, who is this this blonde, green-eyed with, with angel wings for her hair in, in Dragon's Den? I'm sorry, I got distracted. Okay, you know what? Maybe I should close Dragon's Den. Okay, sheesh, that's pretty much the total opposite of my family. Just getting people to join Discord. But what? The, okay, you know what? Maybe we're going to OG art the whole time. What the fuck is this? <laughs> it's so different. Are, are these holes, love? How big are the moths in your closet? What the fuck is going on? Red Cross? Battler Kun. <laughs> Okay, I was gonna make fun of the original, but but sorry, I was gonna make fun of the new one, but both of them have it. Okay, I'm gonna time to put on my tie. All right, time to put it taut around my boobs, real like there. All right, real good. All right, now clip it underneath so it follows my fucking boob curve, and then loose after that. Here I go. I'm all done. Who is is this a style? I don't know. <laughs> what the fuck is this? Have you seen Rudolph's son? Huh? 
He headed off to the bathroom a while ago. Is he not back yet? Heh, maybe the poor geezer dropped dead. Namu, namu, namu. That's no way to talk about your own father. Still, is this isn't the first time he's taken so long in the bathroom. It's shit. Yeah, that guy's always been that way. Does he really have to take a magazine with him every time he needs to take a dump? And what on earth is he doing in, in there with uh, those particular magazines? Hi, hi, hi. Oh, you don't need to worry about that at all. Since we've been together, I haven't let him do that on his own. Hi, hi, hi. Oh, I have to get the juicy details later. Sounds like Dad's got his balls in an iron grip. You know exactly what would happen with that man if he didn't. If I didn't keep a tight grip, don't you? No kidding. I don't know who's talking. You're the only one capable of reining in that old bastard. As his son, I'm more than happy. Okay, now I do. As his son, I'm more than happy to take to let you take over. Yes, leave it all to me. After all, that's my specialty. This woman is my father's wife. Her name, her name is Ushi Kairi. So we really are Devil May Cry. As you can probably tell from our conversation, she's not my real mother. She's basically my stepmother. My real mom died six years ago, and Kairi san is the woman dad married afterwards. It's understandable for someone my age. I could never bring myself to call his new wife mom. How about mommy? And I <laughs> I'm sorry, chat, and I don't- she feels like using the word son on this massive kid who's no relation to her at all. We aren't little kids. We know there's nothing to be gained by fighting, so we decided we wouldn't force ourselves to pretend that we were family. I decided to act a bit more frank with her, acting as though she's a friendly neighbor instead. Friendly neighbor! Alright. Alchemist? Okay, someone in Dragons- Okay, Kasoro, you fucking own me well. I accept my ownage. Okay, four years from now, we are switching to the PS3 sprites. That is so much better. Okay, I'm putting that up on the screen. That's- it's so much better. What's her name? Kyrie. Alright, Kyrie. Look, we got so owned, chat. I can't believe how bad we got owned. Alright, Kyrie. Look how much better. It's not even close. Holy shit. So owned. So owned. I, I need to remember, for four years from now, on the next Umine Umineko Wednesday on a leap day, that we need to use the Alchemist PS3 sprites. Let's just, just give it, clap it out for Kusuro, who owned us all. Well done. Well, I hit the microphone again. It's in a new spot. Holy shit. I'm upset. Is there still time? There's probably not. There's probably not. It's much easier if we keep a little distance instead of forcing ourselves to act all close and making each other uncomfortable. I'm I'm uncomfortable. Kairi san has always been very open about all this. And thanks to that, we've been able to get along pretty well. I formally challenged Kasara for the Umineko expert position. I have seen the live stage adaptation three times. Kasara, I think I think you just lost the title unless unless like you have something to counter that, because I, I just don't think I don't think it's possible to outdo that. There's there's no way. The owner has become the owned. Good night. Sad I couldn't watch it all. Oh, you're sad you're gonna miss this? Then, just when we were about to- when we were badmouthing Dad about being in the bathroom, the man himself came back, wiping his hands with a handkerchief. Oh, our dad's not the kind of vampire guy from the beginning. Okay, hmm? Alright, what's this gonna look like? <laughs> okay, I feel like this might be the best one so far for capturing the essence of the character. I think they got this one right. Hmm. Battler. Hey, what's up, Dad? Ow, 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 ow. Don't pinch my ear, gah. So you've been talking trash about me with Mom again, haven't you? What makes it so hard to show a little respect for your father, hmm? Ow, 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 ow. Damn it, that hurts. You can stretch my ear all you want, but I'm not going to be able to fly. That hurts. Is that a Dumbo reference? Come on now. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, A, B, start now. Father, now say, Father, please forgive me for being so rude. Like hell I will. Go find yourself some members only store if you want it that much. Is this some weeb joke I'm too normie to understand? Gah, let go. This old bastard is my dad. I think I'm pretty tall myself, but dad's just about as tall as I am. It's no surprise Aunt Ava started talking about dad's blood when she saw my height. By the way, my height isn't the only thing I got from him. It seems having weird names runs in the family. Dad's full name is written... You can't read it, can you? And You're right. Come on, it's just... Anyway, this guy's name is pronounced Rudolph. Haha, <laughs> he must hate grandfather for giving him that name. I actually like the name Rudolph, that's a badass name. Still, there's no reason to pass that weird naming tradition on to me. As the old bastard twisted my ear all over the place, Aunt Eva snuck up behind him and grabbed his ear. Hey Rudolph, you should know better than to physically abuse your son. Yeah, that hurts. And Neki. 
Wasn't it with an I earlier, or is this a different word? This scene perfectly illustrated the relationship between the prankster younger brother and the older sister who could deal out punishment to him despite his- Yeah, I know! You don't need to tell me! This is- we don't- we didn't- oh my fucking god. Oh, uh, sorry, I forgot what I was playing for a second because of all the interruptions. Yeah, we know! We did- uh, Oh! Later on! He's- this is the killer! Oh. This scene perfectly illustrates who the killer is. By calling them the killer, I am making an accusation, and that accusation is now going to have to stand. They're either going to have to refute it or accept it, and I have evidence to follow this up. Here we go. We don't need this. I think that's good enough for now, Eva Nissan. Make sure to stretch out his other ear later on, so they match. Oh, my apologies. I must leave some pulling for you to do, Kiri-san. Rudolph, make sure Kiri-san gives you lots, of, lots and lots of punishment later on, okay? You're the one to talk, Aneki, abusing your little brother like that. Hideyoshi Nissan, I'd like to thank you very much for picking her up. If you hadn't been so generous, she'd still be unsold in the store. You have my gratitude and apologies. What? Who are you calling unsold? After taking two, three steps back, Aunt Eva unleashed one of her beautiful high reverse roundhouse kicks, which stopped just a centimeter away from the tip of my dad's nose. After starting out with Tai Chi Tron for her figure, did I say that wrong? I'm sorry for a figure. Aunt Eva then developed an interest in the in the Chinese martial arts based. After that, she went through karate, 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 taekwondo. I have heard of these two, obviously, but not this one. Ka Kapo Yura? I don't know what that is. And what is it she's learning now again? Well, anyway, they say a woman's weapons are her lower body, and that's literally true for Eva. Rudolph? Did you know that a single direct blow to the side of the head like that would knock you unconscious? Not so long, accident. Not so long ago, I accidentally connected in a practice match and my opponent was out cold. Sheesh! What a pain! What a pain! I'm so sorry she can't help walking like a freak. Dad, completely unfazed, shrugged and smiled. Un smiled ironically at Uncle uh, Hideyoshi. If this is your first stream, I'm sorry, but also if it's your first stream, sometimes I will just say things differently or will make a reference back to a previous stream without acknowledging it whatsoever. So you're just gonna have to learn what those are. And if I ever say something that sounds insane or out of place, or why the hell did you do a voice there? It's almost always gonna be that I'm referencing a part of the stream that. You know, only five people in the chat at this point have seen all of them. You know, like, it's probably more than five, actually. But yeah, sorry. That's just how it is. Joe Iceberg. Yeah, there's an iceberg. Wahaha! Never had a brother or sister myself. So when I see you two bickering with each other, it makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. It sure is nice to have a big family. Oh, then why not consider making a little brother for George Kun? He's already a fine adult who's about to go off on his own, so it might be a good time to have another child. Hey, have a little sympathy for the new kid and all the pain and suffering he'd have to live through. I'm surprised even George Kun turned out as well as he did after being born from this sinister sister of mine. And what an awesome kid he is. Please share some of that with our blockhead of a son someday, will you? That's not at all how it happened. It's thanks to Eva Nissan's proper rearing that George Kun became the kind, gentle kid he is now. Isn't that right, Nissan? Oh, come now. Hey, <laughs> you think so? Our George still has a long way to go. Uh, by the way, how's your little Anchan doing? I heard she was vomiting. Oh, that's right. And I was hoping to finally see her face after such a long time. Is she okay? Like, recreationally or in the bathroom right now? What do you mean? She often catches a cold when the seasons change. She's very frail. Oh, she's sick. Okay. I did want to bring her along, but we decided to have my family look over, look after her this time. I think that's a wise move. She'll heal a lot better if she stays away from the Venomous Head Family household. Okay. Does, does the patch tell you who's talking? Because... It's not happening a lot, but it's happening enough that it's annoying me. Like, I, like, who the fuck is talking sometimes? A child's health is... It does? Oh, for fuck... Kasoro! You know what? I respect the commitment to sabotaging this. Oh! Kasoro's gonna, like, review, like, fling the mask off. Throw the cape around from himself and say, Mwahaha, I actually hate Umineko. Eat shit. <laughs> <laughs> The long con! <laughs> a child's health is always more important than an adult's convenience, don't you think? <sighs> I know some great medicine for vomiting colds like that. When we get home, I'll send you some right away, so please let her try some. That's what makes it a game- Oh, trying to figure out who's talking is the difficulty? Okay, you know what? You got me. That's true. Thank you very much, uh, Hideyoshi Nissan. I'm always in your debt. And once the conversation suddenly veered off in that direction, we kids didn't have any chance of butting in. For now, I'm just happy Aunt Eva gave Dad his just desserts for tugging on my ear. Are we still waiting for the weather report? George pointed at the counter. The checking weather sign was still stuck to next to the departure times for the flight we were scheduled to board. Okay, another thing about Jurassic Park. 
How is it that the tropical storm is like, oh, there's a tropical storm. Oh, it might be coming. It might not be coming. And within like 10 minutes, suddenly the tropical storm is like, it's here. Apocalypse now. I don't understand how like the park is full of scientists and they're doing all this fucking like hatching it, raptor egg bullshit in the, in the fucking lab. And then like Samuel Jackson, who I forgot was in the movie, picks up this microphone at some point and is like, hey, there's a storm coming. You have five minutes to get off the island or else you're not getting off. And then everyone just fucking leaves. How did- where'd everyone go? Like, it's just fucking like dozens of people, the, the chef, and every, everyone's just gone! Cinema Sins tear joke? Ding! Joe, will you read the spin-off VN? Of Jurassic Park? If there is one, sure, yeah. Such a weird part of the movie. How could you forget Samuel Jackson? He says, hold on to your butts. I said that when he was in the movie. When I saw him, I'm like, oh yeah, Samuel Jackson's in the movie. And then I said, hold on to your butts out loud. And the kids laughed a little bit. Oh, who? Anu. Oh, Anu. Oh, damn. Hey, Tsumineko. Wants to derail. Oh, damn. This is relevant to my interest. You know what? Could be a, a little bigger down south. Do we agree? Like, that's, that's a bit of a lost opportunity. Maybe it's the angle. I'd be willing to see more. Sorry, you gotta you got join Dragon's Den. You gotta join Dragon's Den. Anyway, smaller planes are more subject to winds to winds and other effects of the weather, and it's not at all uncommon for, for flights to be delayed because of that. Join Dragon's Den, where I don't go for three months at a time. Wait a second, we are, we are totally sure it's not gonna shake, right? From down here on the ground, it just looks cloudy, not windy. Well, I guess it's different up where the planes fly. The weather's a bit uncertain today. Aunt Eva looked at my t at my at TV in the lounge. The weather forecast was being broadcasted, informing us that a typhoon was approaching the Kanto region. I had to log in the other day to, to check some DMs a couple times uh, in a days in a row. And every single time I logged in, while I was like waiting for uh, replies in my DMs, I would just like lurk in Dragon's Den a little bit. And it was just nonstop, Joe's online, Joe's online, Joe's online, don't bother, oh my shit, Joe's online, holy fuck. And it's just like, don't bother him. Like, imagine how bad it would feel if you logged in and everyone's like, holy shit, he's online. And like, and I was like, yes, I am online. <laughs> I'm, I'm reading all your messages. But no, I was just on to check my DMs. I had, I had, I had some business to, uh, to take care of. The weather forecast was being broadcasted, informing us that a typhoon was approaching the Kanto region. Pokemon? A typhoon again? Guess there's no helping it with the annual, can't be helped, annual family conference being held in October. Couldn't he have chosen a better season? I agree. I've always hoped we could have it sometime around the Obon Festival in mid-August. Okay, so is the guy at the beginning our grandfather? Your dad? In that case, why don't you suggest that to father and Nissan during the conference? Very funny. Nissan's a car, isn't it? Why don't you do it yourself? Our brother would never listen to anything I suggested. No way. It doesn't really bother me that much to have it in October. I was just saying you might want to propose it uh, since you said you hate Typhoon so much. I only said that Typhoons always come around this time of year. You're the one who said you wanted to move it to the Obon Festival, right? Well, you said it said it too last year. Didn't you, didn't you say that it would be easier to fit into your schedule if we had it during the Obon Festival? I never said anything like that. Oh my god, who cares? Oh yes, we, you did. I certainly wouldn't forget something like that. No, I didn't. You're the one who's saying that all the time. Didn't you know? Stopping a kick just a hair's breadth away from the impact is a very high-level technique. Ooh. Okay, that was actually a pretty good line. She swim in your Asian, spread their legs like that. What the f- Okay, that's not a good line. What? This is a fucking roller coaster right now. What the- f Dad and Aunt Eva's argument look no different from a couple of brats quarreling. Okay. Even though they usually behave like normal parents, they turn right back into kids again when they meet their siblings at these family conferences. You're the only one who looks like a real adult, analyzing it all calmly. I hope I never turn out like like that old bastard. I'd r much rather end up as an intellectual adult like you, Aniki. Like me? Like me? <laughs> I still have, still have a long way to go. I still have a very little experience out there in the real world. I need to be able to work on becoming more confident and sociable. I think you far surpassed your health. Those counts, Battler Gun. I'm having fun. I'm sure you'll outshirt me fast enough when you become an adult. George Niki scratched his head and laughed as though trying to hide his embarrassment. Of course, he was just being humble. Aniki entered a university and became an apprentice at Uncle uh, Hideyoshi's company at the same time, studying both academics and how to become a business emperor in parallel. Then, right after graduating, he got into Uncle Hideyoshi's company as, a, as his father's aide, piling up a lot of real-life experience as he devoted himself zealous, zealously to his work. Also nepotism? It's a lot of nepotism. His great dream is to one day stand on his own and build up his own kingdom. Well, he's not going to be able to ever do that because of the start he got. You, you can't have, like, all the success and, and help at the beginning and then be like, I made it on my own. Like, like no, it's already done. 
and that's fine. Just let it go. It's already over. Oh my god, why do you guys keep posting shit in Dragon's Den? What the f- And Iniki is a real paragon of a man sparing no effort as he strives toward his goal. Spared no expense. It's no exaggeration this, to say that I really respected him. And then there's me. I'm nothing at all like Iniki. I'm living my happy-go-lucky idle high school life to the max. I've got no dreams for the future. I like I just like to sit back, stay cool, and let the money flow in. But of course, that could never happen. When Iniki was my age, he had already formed an impressive objective and had started devoting himself towards studying for that goal. So I guess I can't compare at all. My dad just says, "Sure, you can study at my company, like if you like cleaning toilets." Damn it! I'm not gonna be a, gonna be in debt in the debt of that old bastard. I'll find my way myself. Ha ha ha! If only willpower was all it took to become an adult. It does, though. Should I go on one of those self-searching journeys that are all the rage these days? Well, it's not not just like... It's not like I could mooch off my parents for that kind of money. Right then, Uncle Hideyoshi shouted out loudly, Oh, I didn't do my disclaimer! I'm sorry. If you're new, or if it's if you're not new to the to streams, period, and maybe you're just new to VNs, um, I am undiagnosed, but I'm pretty sure ever so slightly dyslexic. So sometimes I have trouble reading, especially as the stream goes on. Uh, my, my, I will like jumble sentences together or, or skip lines unintentionally sometimes. So, you know, you'll just have to bear with me. I am slightly dyslexic, pretty sure. He's a really nice person on the whole, but he does have a problem controlling the volume of his voice. When I looked over, I saw that he was greeting Aunt Rosa who had come late. Oh, if it isn't Rosa-san, Maria-chan, long time no see. Long time no see. Ooh. Maria. Oh, two, two and one. All right. Oh, God. Uh, oh. Uh. Is that a chess hat? Uh, this. Okay. Like, obviously, obviously very young child. And now it's like, what the fuck is going on? Which is incorrect. I think this one might be better with the new one. Maria, shouldn't that be, it's good to see you again? Greet your uncle properly. Uh, it's good to see you again. There you go. Well said. How about some candy as a reward? Oh, huh? Where'd I put it? Rosa-san, it's good to see you again. It's good to see you too, Maria-chan. It's been too long, Kairi Nissan. Hideyoshi Nissan. And... Okay. Um, are these... Why are these different? Is it just a different name, or is it a different honorific, or am I not understanding it? What, what's the difference between N-E-E -E and N-I-I? Ni equals... N-E-E -E is sister, N-I-I -I is brother? Okay, thank you. Alright, that makes sense. Oh, and my... And oh my, battler con, look how big you've gotten. Ah, uh, come on, haha, it's embarrassing hearing that from every person I meet. <laughs> Taller? Same height! Taller? Same height! There we go. Hey, Rosa. You're late. If the plane was on time, you barely have made it. I fucking hated that when I was a teenager, and every single time I saw anybody, they would be like, oh, you've gotten so much taller. Like, it was nice a few first couple times, but it just got so annoying hearing it from every single fucking person. So I feel this guy. I'm sorry. We had some trouble making our train connection. So are we waiting on the weather again? Hi, whore. Are you enjoying it so far? I added the whore. There is no whore in that message. Um, I'm not hating it. It's a bit slow, but it's okay. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Oh, don't complain. I much prefer the 30 minute plane trip to spending six hours bouncing about on a boat. Oh, we didn't have the high whore conversation. Okay, Umineko is probably not the time to have the high whore conversation, but I will say it very quickly because there was a post on, on, on Loreddit about it and I agree with the post on Loreddit. Um, so I will do it again when we do a, um, when we do a, uh, a, a fucking like an award stream. Um, we really need to stop doing the high whore thing when it's real people. Like, cause I, I know it's a joke. I know it's, I know it's well intended and everything and everyone's just having fun. You do it a lot, but like you don't understand how it comes across as when it's actually real people on the screen. We need to stop doing, we need to stop doing the high whore thing. Okay. We'll talk about it more. Um, when we actually do a, um, when we do a, a real people stream, like, like an award stream or whatever. Um, but I'm just like planting some seeds right now. Okay. Like we, we, we cannot do, we need to back off the high horror, especially for those streams. Cause usually we have some people that are there for only those streams and they don't understand. We look fucking deranged. Don't get me wrong. I did it too. Like remember during final fantasy fucking <laughs> was it 16 or whatever. Can, can you define a, a, an anime or whatever? And I'll be like, not until you define a slur. And then just fucking, like, no explanation for like 10 seconds. <laughs> About what that's referencing. 
as it does right now. No one knows what I'm talking about right now. Let's just keep going. Oh, don't complain. I much prefer the 30 minute plane trip to spending six hours bouncing about on a boat. Even if we, we were kept uh, waiting for an hour, it's still much faster overall. Maria Chan's gotten huge too. So how tall are you now? Uh, so how tall am I now? Maria Chan parroted Uncle Hideyoshi's question, looking up at her mother. I guess she doesn't remember her own height. She's probably right in the middle of a growth spurt, so her height must change every month. Give it a few more years and she'll suddenly start looking feminine. Uh, why would you th think that? Um, just how tall were you the last time you got measured? You keep getting bigger and bigger, don't you? Right? I think she's grown a lot since last year. Let's see, she turned nine years old this year, didn't she? Nine years old, ooh. That's right, you're nine years old now. Glad to see you're doing well, Maria Chan. Up you go. Nuh. I guess you've gotten a bit too heavy to play airplane with. George and Nikki, what a rude thing to say to a lady. Here, I'll do it. Up you go. When I went to lift her up in Nikki's place, Maria stiffened defensively, staring suspiciously at my feet. Yeah, what are you doing? This is too old to do this. Ah, oh, that's right. Last time I met Maria, it was six years ago, and she was only three years old. Okay, someone's knocking on the door, and and you know, it better it better be Lily. I'm hearing steps walking away from the door as I've said that. Oh my god, it is Lily. Not for long. Not for long. Not for long. Do I have Sundari pills? Oh, I still have them. Okay, thank you. What? Can you help? I can't, I can't help you in Super Mario Wonder. You need to do it yourself, okay? You can figure it out. You're really good. Yeah, no, you can do it. I believe in you. <clears throat> so the uh, the brand of Sundari pills I have is called, um, I'll type it in chat. It's called L-A-C-T-E-E-Z-E, -E -E, okay? That's what it's called, okay? So I bought these uh, about, I don't know, two weeks ago, brought them home, showed them to Lily, and she started giggling. Yep, chat got it. And she started giggling, and I said, why? And I'm really disappointed that I didn't say it. And she, she turned to me and said, lactease these nuts. <laughs> I said to you, lactease nuts? But no, lactease these nuts. <laughs> Alright. Last time I met Maria, it was six years ago, and she was she was only three years old. So she doesn't remember you, bruv. Of course she doesn't remember my face. Mira Chan, don't you remember? Sorry, you have to chew them. For some insane reason, they made them mint flavor. Because that's what you want to have in your mouth before you consume any dairy. And I shot a fucking mint. Maria Chan. Okay, this this sprite is just a disaster. I'm sorry, chat. I hate this. This is so awful. No, do you remember? It's Battler Con. We used to play together, remember? No surprise, I guess. Last time she met Battler, she was only three. You don't keep memories of that age. I don't think I'm lactose intolerant, by the way. I'm just trying to rule it out. Oh, it's hot. Holy crap. She must know everyone's face apart from mine because she meets them every year, but I haven't had contact with the Ushiromiya family for about six years now. Uh, why not? So it's not surprised. It's no surprise that this nine-year-old girl doesn't have any memories of me. Okay, so my read on the situation is that there's a family meeting that happens every single year in October during typhoon season on some island, and they used to have to take a boat, but now they can go by plane, so that's great. And, um... For, and for some reason, we haven't gone for six years? Why not? Were we at boarding school or something? Is it going to explain it right now, actually? Maybe it is. You're actually paying attention? I'm always paying attention. Even I can only just barely remember her being a three-year-old crybaby. Maria. This is Battler Oni Chan. Okay, how does she look with her eyes open? Okay, about standard. Rudolf Ni Sun's son. Understand? The brother's son is... The brother is the son. Uh... The ooh sound was probably her brain going into overload at that complicated explanation. I guess the phrasing of that was a bit confusing. Ni or Oni, the title you'd use to refer to an actual older brother, can also be a friendly honorific for a boy who's only a bit older than you. It's just like Ni or Oni, the word for big sister. Like with Purple Chan, Maria Chan, this is Battler Kun, he's your cousin, like me. Like George Oni Chan, Battler, cousin, under the... That's right, you got it. This part of Aniki is what makes me really look up to him. Th that he knows how to talk plainly? For someone who isn't married, he's just great at dealing with kids. I'm sure he'll be an indulgent father in the future. Is it, uh, ba Battler Onichan? Maria looked straight at me with a questioning expression as though asking whether it was okay to call me that. Yep, that's me, Battler. Nice to meet you, Maria. Ooh, Battler. Maria, you mustn't talk to him like that. Call him Battler Onichan. Okay, Finn, Finn is almost nine. He's like eight and a half. 
is there something wrong with this kid? I, Kate is is five and is more advanced than this kid. Oh, there is. Oh shit. Well, don't I look like an asshole now? Thank you. That's all right, Aunt Rosa. I don't I don't sweat the small stuff. Thanks. Hey, Maria. We're close enough now <laughs> so that we don't need all horrifics, right? Battler, battler, battler. Ooh. That's right, Maria, Maria. We horsed around for a while to make up for the six year gap in our friendship. She probably still thinks of me as nothing more than a big new friend, but things will probably work out as we get to know each other again. But I'm surprised. She's just the way I remembered her being six years ago. Seems that people just don't just don't change that much after all. Uh, in 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 the six most like most formative years of your life i'm a bit happy that she's still the pure innocent girl i remember her name is written of course it, oh she's important that's fucking fantastic it's pronounced maria the third character looks like a cross which is pretty cool her feelings don't usually show up on her face so it can be difficult to know just what she's thinking but that's just how she looks on the outside on the inside she's just a sweet normal girl then there's maria's mother aunt rosa she's my dad's younger sister rosa is written Here's a name that that's totally not Japanese. Sorry to say it, but her name's almost as ridiculous as Dad's. Uh, but I've got to respect her for not ending up as screwed up as he is. When I think about it, all the names in my family sound foreign. Would, oh, isn't there like a... Where, where's the tips? Is it system? Can I save it? Aha! Here it is. Aha! All right, we saved it. All right, now we can stop. All right, so system. All right, so like you have... You are married to her, who is your stepmother. And you have two sisters, Rosa, and I've already forgotten. Eva? Yeah, I did it. All right, Eva, and you're George. Oh, God. George, Uncle something? Oh, hi, Yoshi. Okay, yeah, because Gatsby's coming. All right, uh, Rosa, Maria. All right, I, got, I had everyone except for you. Oh, no, I don't know your name. What's your name, stepmom? Oh, shit. What's the stepmother's name? I'm not getting it. Kyrie! Of course, the devil may cry. Kyrie. God damn it, Kyrie. All right, Kyrie. Okay, and there's uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten more. Okay, so this is going to be the parents of this one, these. Oh, so there's another sibling. What the fuck is this line? Is it going to be another sister or a brother? Hmm. Why is grandfather so obsessed with that? Because of him, even we grandchildren have to put up with this weird naming sense. It's even more annoying since grandfather's own name is perfectly normal. Anyway, there's one thing about Aunt Rosa that's a relief compared to the other family members. She doesn't know karate. The old bastard and Aunt Eva have this annoying urge to tease and mock people all the time, but even though she shares their blood, Aunt Rosa isn't like that at all. She has the most common sense among all the siblings. Like Uncle Hideyoshi, she's a kind aunt who will always be on the kid's side. However, possibly because she's more strict as a parent, she's not liberal with handing out spending money like Uncle Uncle Hideyoshi and that makes her cringe we are still at the airport okay now we have the entire group of family members who are going to board the plane at that moment as though we have waited for us all to arrive an announcement rang out through the lobby our apologies for the delay boarding will now commence for flight 201 to Nijima we ask that the passengers please form two lines in front of the counter behind the white line Rosa you still haven't gone through boarding procedures right hurry up oh no Maria come on Ooh, we have to go through a metal detector before going out on the runway. Our small plane wasn't as massive as an international flight, but it was still a plane. A staff member holding a metal detector checked this in. A lot of metal detecting going on. Is someone going to die on the plane with a metal object? Is this a photograph that has been altered to... That looks like a photograph. Is it? I think it is. Once all of us cleared the check, we followed the staff member out onto the runway. All the Oh, they're all... All of them are? I thought some of the other ones earlier were, were drawn. Huh. I didn't know all of them were. Come to think of it, everyone here is is in the Ushiromiya family. It's like this... Uh, it's it's like this... It's like this is a reserve charter flight or something. There we go. I got there. Our group stepped in front of the entrance to the airplane. Then our guide turned around and spoke, looking down at the passenger list as he did. Boarding will now commence. As I call out the names on the passenger list, please take your seats in order, starting from the front row on the right side and going right to left, then onto the next row. I will now begin reading the passenger list. Ushiro Mia Hideyoshi-sama. Oh, I'm first, right here. By the way, do you have some candy, Eva? I've been looking all over for some, but I can't find any. Ushiro Mia Eva-sama. Okay, is this just like reminding us of all the names on the characters? Is this what this is all about? They're in my handbag. I'll get one once we're in the plane. Let's let's go original for a while. 
I've heard that candies are a good way to protect your ears from hurting because of variations in atmospheric pressure when landing or taking off. You're supposed to, um, you're supposed to like have a mint or a hard candy and you're supposed to suck on it a little bit, aren't you? You're not supposed to chew it. You're supposed to like um, make, it, make it salivate and um, it, uh, it makes your ears pop or something. Does chewing do it too? I'm not sure, but we always had candies for, um, for like, like sucking a little bit to, to normalize the pressure. When, um, when we were moving to Moncton, I had to fly here a couple times back and forth to Toronto. It was a short flight. It was like two, two hours one way, two and a half hours the other way. And I remember, I, I don't know if I was streaming back then. I probably was. And I remember, I don't know if I streamed during it, but I remember making a post about it somewhere that, um, like my ear, normal, the pressure in my, in my right ear didn't normalize when I landed and it stayed like that for, I don't know, at least a week. And my God, I was miserable. Like, like, like I was so fucked off that it, I couldn't normalize. Like, I don't know. I don't know if that's a normal reaction, but like whenever, um, uh, like I, I like body autonomy is very important to me. Like if, if I have like a burp stuck in my stomach and I can't get it out, anything like that, like I'm, I'm absolutely just like fucked. I, I'm so angry. Like if there's something about my body that I lost control over or something like that. And like that, that ear problem really, 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 really fucked with me for so long um eventually i got so frustrated with it that i tried baths i tried all the things that you can um like baths putting your head under the water and trying like the water to help normalize it or whatever um i tried the candy stuff um going upside down uh, eventually i just got so fucked off with it that i as i was walking out one day we we're taking one of the kids to the doctor i pinched my nose um at the bottom and i tried to blow through my nose as hard as i possibly could and i just blew out the pressure in my ear which apparently you're not supposed to do because it can hurt your ears. You're supposed to do it gently, but I did it and it worked. I was so fucking angry when that happened. That does work. Yeah, it, it definitely works, but it can hurt your ears. Oh shit, you're back. No, just for today. And then I'll be back four years later for the next U Umineko Wednesday on a leap day. I've heard that candies are good. Oh yeah, we did this already. That's probably what they're talking about. The relief though. Yeah, it's nice. There's, there's no greater pleasure in getting something out of your body that you know was stuck in some way like you have you ever like unclogged your nose when it's seriously clogged oh my god or like if you have like a bunch of earwax clogged in your ear and you get it out and you make like a shrek candle holy shit like there's no i honestly i'm not even kidding I, unironically there's there is no greater pleasure i think in the world than than getting like that that a moment like body relief that you get just like like oh man it's so good why are you all being perverted don't put this evil on me. Don't put this evil on me. Better than sex? I would know I've had sex four times. I hope I get a window seat. Haha. <laughs> oh yeah, we're on the original. Haha, <laughs> don't worry. There aren't any other kinds of seats. As George and Nikki said, there were apparently only two lines of seats. So this is what a small plane is like. So this is the power of a small plane. We are totally sure it's not going to shake, right? We show me a George Sama. Right here. Don't worry, Battler Kun. I won't shake too much. We show me a Battler Sama. Eniki, what do you mean not too much? You can just swim if you fall from a boat, but if a plane crashes, you're screwed, right? We all get our own parachutes in our seats, don't we? Wait, we don't? Ushiro Mia Rudolph Sama. Come on, Battler, stop standing there, slack jawed, and get in. Ow, Dad, don't push me. We don't get parachutes. Ushi Kairi Sama. Okay, you two, stop fooling around. <laughs> it's just such different energy. What? <laughs> That's just so different. What the? F <laughs> it's like a completely different character in my head. It changes so much context. Oh, uh, let's move on in. Ow, Kyrie, don't push me. This blockhead isn't moving. Ushi Maria Sama. Ooh, let's move on in. It like actually makes them come across as more normal instead of like anime bullshit caricature caricatures. I can't say that word very well. Does that make sense? You feeling that or no? Am I off there? Hmm. Less like Xenoblade characters. For no reason at all, how's K? I think I have DMs from K, fuck. Ushi, oh, K, I accepted your friend request today after you asked so long ago. Rosa on Steam, Maria, be quiet. Enjoy, enjoy my, um, uh, what do you call it times? Uh, neon white times, enjoy. This is your pilot, Ka Kawa Kawabata. We'd like to thank you for taking New Tokyo Aviation Flight 201 today. We estimate that the flight to Najima Airport will take about 20 minutes. We are receiving our reports of atmospheric turbulence. There may be some shaking of the aircraft, so we ask if you, you do not unfasten your seatbelts after takeoff. Uh-oh, turbulence, shaking. And Nikki, did, did that guy just say we needed to wear a seatbelt? I'm so, you can see the pilot? Okay, nah, mm -mm. 
I don't ever want to be in a plane where I can see the pilot. I don't want to be able to see the pilot. Nope. No, thank you. Unless it's an even smaller plane. Like it's just me and the pilot and my friend is the pilot and, and they know how to fly. That I'm okay with. That's, I don't know why that's okay, but I'm okay with that. But if it's like a commercial flight, I don't want to be able to see the pilot. No, thank you. Why? I don't know. I don't, it's like it's like seeing your food be made at the restaurant. I don't want to see that either. I'd rather stay in ignorance, please. I order, the food gets done behind a wall, and then it just comes out and I don't know how it was made. I just get to enjoy. Not that I would know because I haven't gone to a restaurant to eat in fucking like six years, but that's how I would like it to be. There may be some exceptions. You'd rather they hide there and spit in your burger? What, compared to like seeing them spit my burger and then I have to eat it out of politeness? No, I'd rather live in ignorance, please. Did that guy just say we need to wear seatbelts? In a jumbo jet, they let you undo them after takeoff, right? So it's gonna shake so much we can't take them off? Damn it, you tricked me. It is going to shake after all. Where are the parachutes? I knew I should have taken the boat. Legend of the Golden Witch. This was the prologue. Ushiromiya Battler. Okay, how many of these are we gonna have? these i don't know these people oh i do know these people genji i remember genji i don't know the other ones though chio when do we parachute out on the virtuous mission Should have taken the boat. The boat. Fall. Fall. Ooh, 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 ooh. Maria, that's enough. But what a surprise. I thought there was nothing that could scare a battler cun. What? This guy can't handle vehicles for some reason. Always yells about falling and sinking and stuff. You're a disgrace of a man, you are. Thanks, Dad. Ah, shut up. That thing was seriously shaking way too much. I just got a little stressed since it was my first time on a small plane like that. You call that a little stressed? <laughs> Sounds like it'd be fun to take an overseas vacation with you, Batlerkun. Would you like to go to Egypt with your aunt? Nah, it's in Persona. You get a ride, get a ride a plane for a full 14 hours. Ah ha ha ha! That's a good plan, Batlerkun. You should go let Eva and Nissan toughen you up some. Still, it's so hilarious. Ah ha ha ha! Is it? Whoa ha ha! Now now, everyone's got their strong and weak points. It's bad to laugh at them. Whoa ha ha! Haha, <laughs> Dad, you're laughing too. Hey, Maria Chan, you shouldn't laugh anymore. Shouldn't laugh anymore. Ooh, god damn it. Is being scared of planes really such a big deal? Everyone obviously thinks I'm a big oaf now. Tch. Oh no, a car, even worse. Oh, that we skip over. Oh, okay. We split up and took separate taxis from the airport to the harbor. Why are we. So we, we're taking a plane to go on a boat? From there on, we'll be taking a boat to the island. Let's go back to the island. The islands are right next to each other, so the distance of the trip wasn't that great. By boat, it was allegedly 30 minutes to the island. When we reached the pier, where the boat to the island was anchored, we saw a figure waving at us. George Nissan! Oh, we missed it. Oh, that is... very different. Holy shit! It's been so freaking long. Ah, Jessica Chan, it's been a, a year since I saw you. You've gotten taller again, haven't you? Kiaha, don't give me that. It's embarrassing when you say it every year. Hey, Aniki, you've got to be kidding me. Is that really Jessica? Wait a sec, George? Is this big guy Battler? We both stared at each other. Oh, is this the Kakali person? She definitely didn't look like that in my memories, but I do remember her crazy way of talking. Yo, Jessica, what's this now? <laughs> Sorry, I was drawing on the phone for a second. You're kidding me, you look like a woman now. What are these, boobs? 
he said, gesturing. What are these boobs? Even you managed to get a chest. I hit the microphone, sorry. Let me rub him to- Oh, for fuck's sake! What the fuck? Mayo! Why? Notice from Mouse. Joe, as the new official resident Umineko expert, I need you to stay strong during this part, even though you're going to want to turn the VN off. I promise you it's okay. Oh, you knew! You knew! Umineko fans in, in, the secret, in the secret lab where Crude Oil made that website, combing through all thousand hours of this experience for the parts that are going to be the lowest low. We need, we need to ease him into this. We need to tell him that it's not always going to be this bad. Oh no, the worst part, the turbulence of the plot is coming up. Quick, quick, quick. Throw the disclaimers, quick. Damage control. Hey, don't drag me into this. You know what I meant. He meant, you know. Don't screw around with me. I'm a blushing flower of 18. That was your response. That was your... Who, what is... Is this a uniform? What does this mean? Why do they all have it? Of course my hair grew longer and I got these. What? You think I got boobs just to get fondled by you, loser? <laughs> I don't mind getting fondled. It's I just don't want to get fondled by you. If you were more of a chat, I'd be on board. But no, not you. And speaking of you, sure, you got all rickiously huge, but did you get a bit stronger too? Don't screw with me, I'll show you how much training I've done since back then. You're pissing me off, or is there a winking one? Oh, there is. Wrong eye though. Wrong eye. I'll beat you at your own game. This headstrong girl's name is Jessica. She was born under the same unlucky star as me, sharing the same kind of weird name. Anyway, something is pronounced Jessica. She's dad's older, older brother's daughter. What? So she's your cousin and you wanted to feel her up. Is it still feeling up if it's if it's boobs? I haven't used that term in like God knows how long. That older brother happens to be the oldest son of the Ushi Ramira family. So for now, it means Jessica is the direct family. OK, are you trying to make me feel like Maria? Because the it's the common. Just say it plainly, cousin. Or am I misunderstanding? Maybe I'm misunderstanding. Since Jessica and I are the same age and sometimes had little boy girl squabbles with each other. We've always been used to fighting and joking around together whenever rel rel relatives gather, gather. She is a fighter in the official Umineko fighting game. That's not a thing. I don't believe you. I don't believe you. Jessica grew more quickly, so she always had me beat in terms of size and physical strength. When we scuffed in a contest of strength, it usually went Jessica's way. So even though I realized I'd grown bigger, part of my mind was still convinced that I could, couldn't beat Jessica. Whoa. What, what are you getting all serious for? Ow, ow, ow. Hey, this is nothing. Jessica, you've gotten weak. Shut up. I'm a girl. So of course I couldn't beat a guy with physical strength forever, right? Well, you've got a point there. The meat I put on my arms all went to your chest. It looks like it'd be a pretty even test of strength between my arms and your boobs, don't you think? You know what? For no reason at all, we're at two hours. Let's take a break. Bear right back. I'm gonna go pee. All right, I'm back. <laughs> Bumblebee 851 with the message, hi whore, open parentheses, formal, close parentheses. <laughs> oh. Nice message. Oh, speaking of nice messages, please remember that um, if you want, if we want to have the category this year for Jadsea 2024 of funniest chat message or anything like that, that um, if you want to nominate, you're you're gonna have to keep track of those messages, you know. So um, just keep that in mind. If you want that to be a category, the community has to work for it. Best one guy moment. Yeah, that sort of thing. There's gonna be another stream this year. Not only will it be this another stream this year, I'll stream it. Why do you think the kids said? Wow, they're everywhere upon seeing another dog. How do you get to that age without encountering dogs? Whenever I get up to pee, my cat would, would be like, all right, where are we going? Where are we going? You're welcome for the, uh, for the mind worm or whatever it would be. All right, let's continue. I told you my boobs aren't for you to feel up. Besides, how about you? Did your cute little elephant son get a bit bigger to go with the rest of you? Nice, reversing it on, yeah. My bulge isn't for you to feel up. Stop it, idiot. No, you perv. I'll be ruined for marriage. Don't touch my don't touch my craw crotch. Don't say stuff people are gonna misinterpret. Honestly, I was so surprised at how feminine Jessica had become that I had to joke around like an idiot to hide it. Yes. Joke. Well, considering what a bossy brat she was six years ago, anyone would be surprised. And I guess she's just as surprised. 
I'm surprised too. She probably wasn't expecting me to, to, to lose to me in a test of strength. After losing that easily, she must be shocked at how much I've grown in the past six years. Six years. Once again, I'm being shown just what a huge gap of time that was. Yeah, where were you? In stasis with Goku? C crap. Total defeat. It's like I'm no match for you anymore. That's not true. Even, even Battler Kun must have his weaknesses. Right, Maria-chan? Someone in the spoiler chat said that they hate it that I'm pronouncing it that way, so I will now lock that in and say it for the rest of the playthrough. I went to spoiler chat to say your VN sucks, by the way. That's why I went in there. That's not true. Even even Battler Kun must have his weakness, right, Maria Chan? I said it again. Fall, fall. Shh, cut it out, Maria. Let's keep that a secret, okay? What? Fall? The hell are you talking about? Heh <laughs> Sorry, but there's no chance you'll see that weakness of mine now. After all, the nightmare plane trip that is already over and done with. Only thing left is the nice, quiet splashing of the boat ride. I never thought I'd start loving that piece of junk boat this much. Hi, hi, hi. Huh? George, George Nissan, is there something wrong with his head? Can I skip these? Can I just say George? Am I gonna remember? Maybe I'm not gonna remember. You'll understand soon, very soon. At the time, I didn't get what Eniki meant by that big smile. What have we here? Oh. Actually, that's pretty close. Pretty close. Battler son, how big you've grown. Who is it this time? It's an old lady with an apron. Oh yeah, that takes me back. I remember now. You remember her, right? It's Kumasawa-san, the servant. I could never forget you, Kumasawa-ba-chan. After all, you haven't aged a bit in these past six years. If anything, I'd say you're looking younger than ever. Oh. <laughs> Lately, my skin's became quite smooth and silky. And look, hasn't my chest gotten bigger as well? Alright, <laughs> what the fuck are we doing, Umineko? <laughs> How'd you like a little feel? You're, you're kidding, right? My breast fondling is strictly limited to bouncy girls. Oh, I was quite bouncy in my youth. Don't be shy. Fondle to your heart's content. Gah, give me a break. It's girls I'm looking for, not grannies. The jokes I'd crack about Jessica are being turned against me. Come to think of it, Kumasawa has always been the type to tease people. When did the cliff stop? Mouse? Mouse? When did? The, when is? The, when are we at the bottom? Kumasawa-san, stop that now. People with one foot in the coffin shouldn't jump around. The sport with the young is the most rejuvenating medicine. Ho ho ho. It's rare for you to come pick us up, Kumasama-san. I wonder what's gotten into you. Usually your lumbago kicks in whenever whenever someone gives you a job to do. Giggle? Lumbago. Outdated medical term that describes pain in the lower back region. This region centers around the lumbar. Okay, that makes sense. Lumbar area of the spine, which reaches from the lowest rib down to the buttocks. Okay. Why are you saying a yaya? Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I need to build more base camps and ports. Phew. Alright, there we go. Ho ho, Iwasama, you're as harsh as ever. I found myself with some urgent purchases to make, and while I was out, I thought I would come welcome you all. Although, it does give, give a bad impression if the one waiting to greet you is a decrepit old woman. Ho ho ho. Good thing there isn't one. <laughs> and he was... He spoke sarcastically, but Kumasawa Bachan's years of experience were nothing to sneeze at. She was more than capable of smoothly and coolly deflecting that comment. Well, it feels bad to say it, but old Kumasawa Bachan may be past her prime as a servant. She might act as though she's in good health, but between the headaches and her lum lum is it lumbago? Lumbargo? Like a trade in a lumbargo? L it's l if it's lumbar region, it would be lumbago, right? Lumbago? Lumbago. Where she go? Lum lumbago, really? Lumbago. Her body is wearing out. To tell the truth, the very fact that she's still working is impressive. How old is she this year again? She must be pushing 80 at least. It's incredible that she. Oh, how many Umi Neko Leap Days has she gone through? It's incredible that she's able to act so cheerily. You just seem to get. Who the fuck is this? Right, Rosa, okay. You <laughs> seem to get more, more lively. Oh, that's right, here you are. It's the tea I told you about before. Look, I brought you. I bought you some. Please do try it later on. Aunt Rosa took a souvenir bag from her suitcase. <laughs> to think she remembered a promise that she'd apparently made last year and faithfully bought it. 
This sort of thoughtfulness was just like Aunt Rosa. She wasn't the kind of person who would forget to break a promise or kill someone. Kumasama Bachan seemed deeply touched, not only that Aunt Rosa had remembered this year old promise, but that she would bring a gift to a simple servant like her. This woman is Kumas Kumasawa Chiyo-san. Oh, she was in the credits. She's a senior servant who's been working at the Ushi Head family household for many years. As you'd expect from someone her age, manual labor isn't her strong point, but she's kind of a super servant who can handle just about anything else from kitchen work to cleaning and laundry. It seems like her only flaw is a tendency to slack off. I hear she tries to get away from heavy or troublesome work by playing up her chronic Ill chronic diseases. In Komasama ba ba chans case, this was probably a sign of craftiness rather than laziness, though it probably doesn't impress those paying her salary. Ah well, well she's still employed. Even if she's pretty flaky when it comes to work, I could never dislike her. I guess that's probably because of her cheerfulness and her constant smile and that she lets me, lets me fondle her boobs. Hey, glad to see you're still in fine spirits. How's your back doing then? Even with the medicine, it's not going one whit better. According to the doctor, nothing can be done for this one. Right, this doctor sucks. It's what you might call an incurable disease. Ho, ho, ho. Anyway, Jessica Chan just keeps getting prettier. Good thing she takes after Natsushi... Su Sui? Nat Natsuhi? Natsuhi. Natsuhi, right? It's Natsuhi, right? Natsuhi? Nis Natsuhi Nisa. Oh, that's hard to say. Really? Personally, I don't think we look alike at all. I mean, I don't even want to be like my parents because I got zero respect for them. Oh, is your mom the cackle e girl? Now, you shouldn't say such things. Why is it lagging again? Giggle, though, there are quite a few people who don't want to be like their parents in our family. Ah, uh, that's me. You sure as hell not, better not take after me. What, what the fuck are you talking about, woman that just married into this a couple years ago? You're a baby to this group. Wait, isn't it six years? So after your mom died, you just went away somewhere or something? Hmm. Isn't it six years, six years? No, 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 no. It's after... Well, when did the mom die? Remarried? I can't remember. Who cares? Let's keep going. Maybe they'll bring it back up again. Boom. You sure as hell better not take after me. Your nose is... Your nose looking like mine already pisses me off. What are you talking about? You're surprisingly like you and father. Come on, you can't be serious. Just how am I like... Am I like dad? You're a lot like him, especially in how arrogant and prideful you are. Father's blood is especially strong in you and Nissan, wouldn't you say, Rosa? Oh, absolutely. Cross Nissan and Rudolph Nissan are almost unbelievably like that. Alright, alright. Already. Why am I the only one under fire from the girls? Hide Yoshi Nissan, give me a hand, please. My, my, Rudolph Kun, you're always so popular with the ladies. I'm jealous. Wahaha! They're his sisters, bro! Uh, as usual, you're popular enough to make me jealous. Well then, every everyone, shall we head over to the boat? Come on, come now, Maria-san. Let's get on the boat together, okay? Get on the boat together. Ooh. Everyone gets on together. Ooh. Oh, we're, no, we're not even on the boat! I thought, oh, silly me, I thought we had gotten on the boat and we had arrived at the island. And she had met us at the... So she went down, got on a boat to meet us at the other part to get on the boat with us back there. Okay, all right. Hell yeah, this time around, I'm not going to be scared. You have ruined the word together for me. I added it to the to the video. So, enjoy. Yeah, it's pretty ruined, huh? I'm used to being shaken by the waves. With that piece of junk fishing boat, I'm less afraid of shaking than the engine breaking down and the boat drifting off. Oh yes, Battler Kun, I forgot to tell you. You're welcome for the right pronunciation. That fishing boat was completely worn out, so it was taken out of commission a few years back. Now we get taken to the island in a different boat. Oh, right. Why is the boat important? It's Battler's first time in the new boat. It's super comfy and freaking fast. Man, a boat. It can go cr crazy high speeds. Is this important? Probably. Oh, that means less travel time, right? That sounds great. Having to worry about sinking is less scary than, than being on a plane, but it'd still be awesome to get get it over with as quick as possible. Ooh, is, is Battler going to fall, fall again? That's only on airplanes. Everything's fine now. Anyway, it's the captain's pride and joy, a kind of modded high-speed boat. Seems he's got pretty souped up. Would I rather be in a plane crash, or would I rather be in a boat crash? If a plane goes down, I'm dead. If a boat goes down, depending on where I am, I'm almost... Like, if I'm if I'm going across, like, like, oceans, and I'm in the middle of the ocean, and the boat sinks or a plane crash, I'd rather be in a plane crash, because now it's the choice between dying instantly or dying slowly. I think I'd rather die instantly. Obviously though, if I'm somewhat close to the shore, I think I'd rather be like a boat would sink because there's a high chance I'm gonna get back, right? Insurance pays more for a plane crash. Base fight club reference, plus two you chatter. Boat has more chance of survival. I don't know if I wanna survive a vehicle destruction in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Hmm. Hmm. 
If there was a knock on your door, which one would you be more surprised about finding behind it? A walrus or a fairy? Definitely a fairy, because they're not real. There, there's a non-zero chance that there could be a walrus knocking on my door. But there is an actual zero chance of a fairy knocking on the door. You're playing Umineko, of course you don't want to survive. Actually, I'm reading it. Lawyered. Anyway, it's the Captain's Pride and Joy, a kind of modded high-speed boat. Seems he's got it pretty souped up. Alright, this better be plot important. There better be someone who dies at some point, and it's like, the only way they could have gotten away in time was if they were in a really fast boat. What's with the insignias? He was bragging about how attached four base high-efficiency propellers make it break 40 knots or something like that. He talks about it all the time, so I sort of memorized the spiel. Yeah, I've got it memorized too, since we hear about it every year. The captain says he's been obsessed with modding ever since he lost the speed contest with a foreign boat ages ago. According to him, that opponent managed to break 30 knots with just a fishing boat. And his thirst for a revenge match for a revenge match got him to build an awesome, all-new, all super high-speed modded boat. I'm sure you'll just love it, battler. Super high-speed modded boat. Four strength, four stam, leather belt. Is it five? five? Five strength or is it four? My first thought was that this would be a much better than some beat up boat that might sink at any moment. But for some reason, I got this feeling feeling of foreboding. Probably just overthinking it. Damn, I'm glad the manga cuts out this boring shit. Oh, does it? It's, so it's like Steins Gate all over again, huh? All right. Hey, Battler, maybe you should just swim to the island. Ha ha ha, Battler Khan, you shouldn't lean over the railing too much. You might fall. Ooh, ooh, fall, fall. Damn it. So this is why you were all gritting back there. So this is the super high speed boat that the captain started mod modding. My legs are moving on their own. Oh, yes. That piece of junk fishing boat from six years ago doesn't hold the candle to this guy. Whoa, it's shaking, it's shaking, it's shaking. Gonna fall, fall, fall. Ooh, ooh, ooh. gonna fall, fall, fall. If I fall, I'll land in the ocean and drown. Where's the parachute? I mean, where's the boy? Give me a life jacket. Wahaha! Battler, what the heck are you doing that for? Wahaha! Jessica Chan, Maria Chan, it's not it's not nice to tease. Who the fuck is talking? Battler Khan, if you're scared, then just don't come out on the deck. I think you'll be able to calm down a bit if you go inside the boat. Hehe, <laughs> that's a no thank you, Aniki. Shipwreck victims are always the ones inside the boat. You can't get me! The survivors are usually those on the deck during the accident. So I'm staying right there. Axe dupe, but it's shaking. I'm gonna fall. Whoa. Shake, gonna fall. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Maria, I told you to behave yourself. But Battler Cun, it looks like you you really can't handle it. I'll go tell the captain to slow down for you. Whoa, Aunt Rosa, thank you. I can tell you now that safe, slow driving is definitely the way to go, even on the sea. <laughs> Don't do that, Rosa. Trials and tribulations, good game, are important for young men. Isn't that right, Battler Khan? You better be o be able to overcome a little scare like this. Otherwise, you'll never be able to go to Egypt with your aunt. Whoa, Aunt Eva, you're so mean. Oh, oh I'm going to fall. Life jacket, parachute. Whoa. Wait, got to spin it around and think that way. What's the enemy aiming for? Is he doing this to scare me? If that's what he's aiming for, too bad. Like, how I'll be scared. Okay, like, I don't know. Is this, is this worse pacing than Science Gate? It's in the same area. We're comparing turds. <laughs> sorry, we're comparing turds of pacing. Maybe the story overall is better. Sorry, I needed to clarify that. <laughs> like, it's just... Is this worse than, than Steins Gate's pacing? It's better. It maybe is better. I can't really remember Steins Gate's pacing all that much. Has anything happened at all? We met a bunch of the characters. There's a lot of setup. I'm okay with that to some extent. But no, I'm gonna fall. So after I made a huge fool of myself for a while, Aunt Rosa had a talk with the boat captain. He slowed down to a more manageable speed for me. Ha, that's a bit better. Thought I was going to die earlier. Apparently the max speed I can tolerate is extremely slow, but, that's just, but that just now was completely insane. The whole boat was shaking, sliding and leaping on the ocean surface. It felt like I was riding on the back of a flying fish. Jessica was still guffawing at me as I leaned against the railing, tired and disheartened. Alright, is the wink going to match this time? Nope! I lost in that strength contest earlier, but I'm glad to know that... No, I'm no worse off than... No worse off where it really counts. But seriously, ha 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 ha! Damn it, go ahead and laugh. One of these days, I'm going to find your weakness and get back at you, and then your booze will be mine to squish. <sighs> ah ha ha, yeah, sure, good luck with that. Wah ha ha. Ugh, battler all week. Yeah, battler all week. I want to die on land, not in the ocean or the sky. Maria was patting my back, so I patted her head in return. Her expression was blank, as usual, but I realized that she wanted to console me. 
Badler Cun, the captain's throwing in drinks to make up for this. Would you like one to calm yourself down? George and Kumasawa brought us all ice cold cans of soft drinks covered with beads of, of water. Coke Zero? Judging from Kumasawa, Kumasawa's big grin, our parents inside the boat were probably all rolling around laughing at my moment of pure terror. God, I hope so. Damn it, I'm so embarrassed I can't bear to face any of them. If I didn't change the subject somehow, I had the feeling I'd be the butt of everyone's jokes for the whole trip, so I tried to think of something harmless to talk about. Hey, Jessica, your boobs. How are Uncle Cross and Aunt Natsuki doing? Nat Nat Natsu I can't say this name. My old man and mom, unfortunately, they're fine. Though every other word out of their mouths is study study, which pisses me off. I'm so jealous since it doesn't look like Uncle Hideyoshi or Uncle Rudolph would say stuff like that. Haha, <laughs> oh no. Before I had my exams, my parents kept pressing me about it over and over. I thought it was annoying then, but now I'm grateful. Ha, <laughs> I knew it. You really are awesome, Aniki. Nerd! Anyway, I have to look after myself. No one tells me what to do. Well, it's not like I'd listen if they did. Hi, hi, hi. Badler son, have you have you still not returned to your parents' home? Well, I kind of go back now and then. I've got lots of clothes and stuff left at the house I was living in until recently. Uh, Battler has two houses? Uh, hmm. Something like that. Yeah, what's going on here? This is kind of weird. Why? Why do you have two houses? Ooh, ooh. Only Maria, who couldn't really grasp the situation, voiced this naive question. However, the others just shot nervous glances at me, choosing not to respond, even though they knew the answer. Maria, look, you can see the harbor now. What's the answer? Datapon wants to know the answer? I, I, that's interesting. Can we talk about that? No? More fucking sh boat shaking. Oh my god. Ooh, let me fucking touch your boobs. Squish, squish. No? L look over there. Can you see it? Saw the harbor. Saw the harbor. Apparently, Jessica was trying to be nice by changing the subject. Ah, oh, well, I'd rather not talk about it if I can help it, but it's uncomfortable to have it, have, to be, have it be treated like some kind of weird taboo. I don't mind it that much myself anymore. I may be a member of the Ushi family, but the truth is that for these last six years, I've been living with my grandparents on my late mother's side, and I've been even been using her family name. When those grandparents passed away after one, one, one after the other, I basically had no choice but to go back and live with the old bastard. Don't get me wrong, I didn't just run away from home. I didn't just run away from home or anything like that. The only one at fault here is my dad. I don't really blame Kairi san being able to hold that old bastard's reins and ride him out is no mean feat. Still, the way that old bastard betrayed my mom. Well, unfortunately, I still haven't still fully still haven't fully gotten over it, or that. Sorry, ahem. We'll be getting there soon. George and Nikki cleared his throat, trying to change the subject. Please forgive my indiscretion. And you're letting him like pull your ears and shit, and joking about him taking long dumps in the bathroom. That's kind of weird, huh? It seems this old woman has said too much already. If I hurt. If I've hurt your feelings, heh <laughs> I don't mind it, and no one's feel no one's feelings are hurt. Don't worry, Kumasawa Bachan. Kumasawa san seemed to oh now it's San seemed to regret speaking out of turn. But I was more concerned about being worried over for some being worried over for something like that, so I stood up and passed it off lightly. After that I had a sip of my drink and headed over to Maria and Jessica, who were gazing at the silhouette of the island. Ooh. Battler, I saw the island, saw the island. There, there, there. Ooh ooh ooh. Where is it? Oh, I see it now. Even after six years, the island hasn't changed a bit. I mean, yeah, it's an island. The small, <laughs> the small island silhouette in front of us had gotten pretty close. This island's name is Rokinjima. It's a small island about 10 kilometers around, located in the Izu Archipelago. Since they call this archipelago the Izu 7... Izu? Izu or Izu? I'm going to say Izu until someone in chat corrects me. Izu 7, lots of people think there are only seven islands, but that's not true. There are actually several more, but and Rakanjima is one of the minor islands that don't get counted. So it's like Pluto. Okay, even if that weren't the case, I doubt you'd find many people who knew about this island. Only people connected to the Ushi family ever go there. In other words, outsiders and tourists have never have any reason to care about it. So there's no grocery store? All right. I, okay, can I go back? I hit the button. Okay, we can. So you'll never find this island's name in a travel brochure. Okay, after all, all of Rakanjima is an estate possessed by the Ushi head family. Only the Ushi family lives there, and only people connected to the Ushi family come and go to and from there. I'm getting the impression that maybe we were expelled. I'm not sure. There's nothing there except the harbor and a mansion for the Yushi family to use, because the Yushi family mansion is the only mansion on the island. It is the only house that's on the island, and the harbor is used only by the Yushi family. The vast majority of the island is still just uncultivated forests that are owned by the Yushi family. Such a waste when it could be made into a nice golf course or something. What? No? It's better like this? However, when you realize that the entire coastline is a private beach for the Yushi family, it starts to sound pretty magnificent. 
You've probably guessed by now, but to put it simply, well, the Yushi family is just rolling in dough. The head family apparently possesses a vast fortune, and Dad and the others who make up the branch families have built up plenty of wealth for themselves, finding success in their respective businesses. I've been living a commoner's life at my grandparents' home these, these six years, so I'd completely forgotten. But the old bastard's house really is elegant, and everything about it is tuned to match the snobbish tastes of the annoyingly rich. Come to think of it, I guess that makes George, Nikki, Jessica, Maria, and me wealthy, high-class gentlemen and ladies. Needless to say, none of us think of ourselves that way at all. Uh, speak for yourself, bud. I don't think I don't see myself as being rich, and George and Nikki, who takes self-discipline very seriously, doesn't let himself get too comfortable. <laughs> yeah, okay, all right. <laughs> Jessica's always complaining that she'd rather move to the city than be rich, and Maria is still a kid who is isn't even interested in money at all. Does that attitude really make us less snobbish? From the perspective of people in poverty who can't pay the bills, we really have been blessed with a lot. This isn't the place to explain any further, so I won't. Anyway, it's the same as not being able to choose the parents you're born from. I didn't ask to be born into a rich family, and I don't think it's really something to be envied. It can be pretty trying when people are prejudiced against you just because you're rich and refuse to judge you by your men. Yeah, it's true. That's true. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's so hard. As I pondered these sentimental thoughts, Maria started shouting and, and leaned over the railing. I too failed to shoot my wife. Ooh. Gone. What's wrong, Maria? Did you drop something? Ooh, ooh. Gone, gone. Ooh. Maria kept yelling, gone, gone. At first it sounded as though she dropped something, but while she shouted, she also pointed out over the ocean. What's wrong? What's gone? I'll look for it too if you want. What is it? If she dropped something, she would probably have looked down on the, at the floor, but Maria was pointing out over the ocean. One would assume that by that gesture that she had spotted something, but she kept saying that something wasn't there. Okay, so there's something like on the coastline that, that's gone? Strange. Some building or something? However, since my last memories of this place came from six years ago, I was able to spot it before Nikki, who, who comes here every year. Huh? If I remember correctly, wasn't there a tori or something on top of a small crag around here? What's a tori? That's right, it was definitely there. I remember it, it well, since as we got closer to, we get closer to the island, it's the first thing to greet us, like a landmark. Wow, you're amazing, Battler. Even though it's been six years, you remembered. It was here, wasn't it? I remember too. The tutelary... Did I say that right? Tutelary God Shrine and that Tory-like thing were standing all alone on that crag. Is it like a shrine or something? A red wooden arch. Thank you, al aluminium. Al aluminum. And now that you mention it, they are gone, aren't they? Uh-oh, I'm pretty sure they were still there last year. How could Beatrice do this? Gone. Gone. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Maybe they were washed away by the waves or something. It was a small crag, so it probably got worn away over time. Well, that's my theory, too, but it's just a theory. It was last summer that it disappeared, but th they say... They say an enormous lightning bolt came crashing down one evening and smashed the shrine. The fisherman whispered that having a thunderbolt fall upon a, our honored tutelary god must be a port portent of approaching misfortune. Kuabara, Kuabara. Kumasawa smiled impishly as if teasing us, rubbing her hands together while intoning a Japanese phrase meant to ward off lightning. However, Maria apparently took this seriously and stared fixedly over the ocean to where the crag housing the shrine god was supposed to be. A portent of misfortune. Am I saying that word right? Enough, Kumasawa san. Portent. 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 Tents? Like, like a tent? Like, that hard of a tent? Really? Portent. Portents? Really? Anyway, one for the road. Queer ass. <laughs> Queer ass. Portents. I don't think that's right. Enough, Kumasawa-san. Maria isn't old enough to get that kind of joke. Okay, neither am I, apparently. It's okay, Maria Chan, it's just a coincidence. Nothing scary is gonna happen. George and Nikki put a hand on Maria's shoulder to calm her down, but Maria's sharp-eyed expression didn't waver. Misfortune. Misfortune. Maria muttered that word over and over, apparently repeating a single word over and over is a habit that Maria's had a long, for a long time. However, since the word she was saying was literally an ill omen, it was a bit creepy. Hey now, Maria. If you say it over and over like that, misfortune will really end up happening, you know? I tapped Maria's sh sh other shoulder. Maria whipped her head around, stared into my face, and spoke unblinkingly. Ooh, misfortune is coming. Huh? And just where is it coming from? I answered lightheartedly, trying to break the tension in the air. At that moment, Maria held up a finger, raised her arm high, and pointed up to the heavens. When I looked up, I saw that the sky was still just as, clou still just as cloudy, but it had grown a great deal more leaden than it had been that morning. That's right. That's right. They were saying that a typhoon was approaching. We had planned to spend one night on the island, but if this, this storm doesn't pass quickly, I won't be able to make it to school on Monday. Oh no! Well, I guess it makes her a pretty good excuse to be absent. 
Ooh, she apparently sent some kind of misfortune in the cloudy sky. When are the seagulls gonna cry? I was told there would be crying seagulls. Or do they only cry when someone's been murdered? She's been muttering that nonstop for a while now. Girls at Maria's age tend to be very impressionable. She's just about the that the age that many girls start to get excited about six senses and whether they have any psychic potential and stuff. What? For all we know, this might be due to her childish, sensitive nature. It's okay, Maria Chan. The weather might get worse tonight, but tomorrow it'll clear up and become a, a pretty blue sky. Ooh, pretty blue sky. Ooh. That's right. Yeah, that's right. But tomorrow it'll be a pretty blue sky. There's no rain that doesn't end and no clouds that never clear. Uh, rain that doesn't end. Clouds that never clear. I don't like this character. I know the typhoon's coming, but soon it'll go away. It'll be okay, Maria. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. Maria started yelling, ooh. Yeah, we know! We did, she did it twice! It looked as though she was having a tantrum because no one could understand what she was trying to say because all she was saying was, ooh, ooh. What in the world is Maria trying so desperately to warn us about? Unable to understand her because she was just saying, ooh, 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 we couldn't help but feel a vague sense of misfortune. I've heard that everyone can feel the supernatural, but that it weakens as you age. That might mean that Maria, the youngest one of us all, still possessed some kind of sense that the rest of us had lost. I wonder if that sense is sending her a warning. At that moment, Kumasawa-san quietly opened her mouth. Rumor has it that long ago, Rockin' Jima was less rockin'. Kumasawa-san, let's not talk about that now. Haunted? Just as Kumasawa-san was about to tell some kind of story, Jessica sharply interrupted her. Yeah, God forbid we have something creepy and interesting, Jessica! Jessica's tone was extremely firm for her, and speaking of fur- <laughs> I want- I wanted to push her further just out of simple curiosity, but judging from the look on Jessica's face, whatever Kumasawa's Bachan was likely to say would probably make Maria even more, even more uneasy. If I did try to press her for this story, the odds were pretty good that it wouldn't be anything bright and cheery. Ho ho, I do apologize about that. The wind here is hard to bear for the elderly, so if you would excuse me for now. Gossipers have no reason to hang around after they've been told to stop chatting. When Kumasawa-san finally realized that she'd, been over, that she'd overstepped her bounds, she went back inside the boat. After she left, Uncle Hideyoshi showed up in her place. Since he'd arrived mid-conversation, he completely failed to notice the complicated atmosphere that hung about the scene, so he refreshingly and unwittingly swept the atmosphere aside. So in the end, it was his lack of tact that brightened the mood. Just let him talk! It looks like we're almost there. Okay, just a bit more. Took forever at the speed we went today, didn't it? Wonder whose fault that was. Wahahaha. Aw, uh, Uncle Hideyoshi, give me a break already. Tahaha. Aha, come on, don't stop there. Seriously, thanks to Battler here, it's taking forever. Ooh, I also hate you. <laughs> Maria probably thought that everyone was refusing to listen to her. She hung her head, wearing a fretful expression. Go bother your mom! As she did, what was the lag there? George and Nikki crouched down to meet her eyes and spoke to her kindly. Maria Chan, there's nothing to be afraid of. Because we're all to we're all together together. When's George gonna die? Just just go. There's nothing to be afraid. Of. Okay, is there a memory leak? Do we need to restart it? You know what? I can't believe it. I'm gonna save it just in case it crashes. Oh my god, the portraits. All right. Oh wait, we haven't we haven't seen the full portraits. What the fuck are these mint shoes? <laughs> Why is this making me feel like a SpongeBob SquarePants character? I don't know what the what, what is this pose? They're just <laughs> What the fuck? What? Okay. Oh. Every time? Nice. There's nothing to be afraid of because we're all, all together. Okay, we read this. Go ahead and say it. Ooh. There's nothing to be afraid of if we're all together. Yes, there's nothing to be afraid of if we're with each other. Ooh. Mouse movement pauses text. That's right, exactly what George and Nikki said. Oh! <gasps> if we stick... Together, there'll never be anything at all to be afraid of. Right, Jessica? Yeah, no doubt about that. What George Nissan says is always true, Maria. Uh, 
George Onichan, always true. Yes, I don't lie. He lied. So trust me, there's nothing to be afraid of if we're all together. Together. George Oni Onichan doesn't lie. I trust you. There's nothing to be afraid of if we're all together. Yeah, together. Not afraid. Maria jumped into George and Nikki's arms and hugged him tightly. After Nikki patted her head, she jumped away again. Her facial expression had undergone a 180 degree change, turning back to normal. She was once again the ordinary Maria. There's nothing to be afraid of anymore because we're together. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, that's it. You look all better now. You're strong and that's awesome. Ooh, I'm awesome. Hey now, what's going on here? Maria Chan didn't get seasick, did she? Hmm? Haha, -ha, well, someone like that. <laughs> we'll be arriving soon. The harbor was already drawing near. Are we actually going to get to the island? Uh-oh. When they cry three. Welcome to Rockin' Jima. We do hope you enjoy your stay in this experience of a lifetime. It's going to take a lifetime to do it. Yep, that's true. Thank you, Achievement. We hope you enjoy your stay. The boat gave a big shudder. Seems we've docked at the harbor. The boat driver came out and jumped to the pier with the, moor with the, with the mooring rope. Why is there a helicopter? A large man in a tuxedo was waiting there for us with a warm smile. I didn't recognize his face, but judging by his clothes, I guessed he was a servant of the Ush Ushi head household. Oh. Welcome home, milady. Oh, God, Redditor. Pretty close, actually. I think maybe I prefer the new one for this one. You were so late in returning that I began to worry. Ah, thanks for caring. Thanks for messaging me. This moron got so scared we had to slow down. It was seriously annoying. Sh shut up. Someday, when the shoe's on the other foot, you'll remember this. Ugh. At this rate, word will spread to the whole family and I'll be the big conversation piece during dinner. Even without this, everyone would be talking about me because of that six-year gap, but now I've given them an even juicier topic. Damn it, why does the Ushi head family have to live on this isolated island? In the meantime, the boat had finished its mooring. A small plank was lowered so that we could we could get down. One by one, our parents came up from inside the boat. You must all be quite tired from your long trip. Madam, please allow me to assist you. Thank you. It's been a while. Goda? Gouda? Gada? Gooda? How are you? I thank you for your concern. It is always my pleasure to serve. Battler Kun, isn't this your first time meeting Goda-san? If I'm not mistaken, you weren't working here six years ago, right? Indeed. So please allow me to greet him for the first time. It is an honor to meet you, battler sama I'm pretty confident about my height, but you're huge. 5'11", bruv? What? Oh, you have the insignia, insignia too. This is definitely our first meeting. I'd never forget meeting a big guy like you. It's a pleasure. I'm Battler. I was looking forward to meeting you. I am Gouda, your servant, and I have been working for the Ushi head family since the year before last. It is a pleasure to make your acquaintance. If there's anything you need, please feel free to, re to rely on me at any time. Goda-san, it's been some time. It's been too long, George-sama. Please allow me to assist you. Are we going to do this with every character? As usual, you're a pro at welcoming guests. If you ever need a job, just let me know, okay? I'd hire you anytime. You do me too much honor. I already have a job. Please allow me to assist you, Hideyoshi-sama. Goda-san then lent a hand to everyone as they disembarked, greeting them as they passed. His speech and mannerisms had the refined polish of a professional. Yep, we just saw. He was very graceful in contrast with his initially tough-looking appearance. His large size made him seem a bit scary at first, but he was much more polite than my first impression had led me to believe. He claimed to have served on the island for two years, but he had, he had doubtless worked at a similar job somewhere before. I'm starting to think that this could almost quite literally be half as long. If you say everything twice, you could cut it in half. 12 hour video by the way oh maybe let's be generous and say that there's some extra stuff in here so you could take it down by a third a third after everybody disembarked the mooring rope was untied and the boat started to steer away from the harbor it was probably returning to its home port on najima the captain waved his hand in farewell maria conscientiously waved her hand back he doesn't get a sprite so he's not important hmm now i think about it that must be why i felt something out of place for a while now can't hear the cries of the seagulls <gasps> Oh, it's happening. Chat, chat, it's happening. Seagulls? The birds? There are no birds here. If I remember correctly, whenever we came to this island in the past, seagulls always greeted us with their lively nya nya cries. Because of that, whenever I hear the cries of seagulls anywhere else, I get the feeling that I'm coming to a family conference. Except for the small part of the island where those where, where those of the Ushihad family live. 
Rock in Jima has been left un uncultivated, which apparently makes it a paradise for wild birds. Supposedly, supposedly there was a cliff somewhere that housed a huge seagull colony, so this island was always full of seagulls. Not having those seagulls here to greet us made me feel a bit lonely. Joe didn't thank my subscription. I'm so sad. I'm sorry, Trix, Strix. I'm not doing that today. No thank yous today. I'm not reading them. It's, it's a, you know, it's an exceptional stream. Just out of nowhere. Read your message. Still not saying thank you. What's wrong, Battler Khan? Oh, Aunt Rosa. Nah, it's nothing really. I was just thinking a bit. it's a bit lonely without the cries of the seagulls. My, that's true. Now that you mention it. Even though they're always so noisy, today there isn't one to be seen. Ooh, why no seagulls? Maybe it's because the seagulls are having a get-together somewhere too. Maria, did you want to see the seagulls? Did anyone else hear, hear the bullshit that if you fed a seagull or a pigeon toothpaste, that it would make their stomach explode? Was that a, was that a, like a, an urban legend that was unique to the area I grew up in? Or is that something that other people have heard of in, you know, is that a UK thing? Rice? It wasn't rice, it was toothpaste. In other places it's rice? How would you even do that? What the fuck? Well, just, just hypothetically, I wouldn't know anything. If you got some bread and put toothpaste all over the bread and then threw it up in the air. Joe, are you insane? What do you mean am I insane? It was just something kids said when I was growing up. If you ate toothpaste, would you explode? I don't know. I've never eaten toothpaste. I'm a flosser. Dentist told me that flossing is more important than, than brushing. So I just floss. I don't brush. I'm, I'm figuring it out. I'm going to call them on their bullshit. Flossing only. You're supposed to do both. But my dentist and every other dentist said that if I have to choose one or the other, and I do, I'm a very busy man. I I only floss because that's what they said. Avarisi is in fucking Dragon Center right now, just salivating, rubbing hands together, going, yes, yes, the dentist discourse continues. I can make a video of this of clips. Here I go. More dentist talk. Yes, yes. This is not a UK thing. Joe just knew crazy people. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe Cardiff was kind of wild, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of which, if you don't have an electric toothbrush, you gotta switch. It's a world of difference. I had an electric toothbrush for a while, and it was better, yeah. Now I just use a manual toothbrush. I want to switch back. I also want to get a water pick. Those are good, right? I think flossing is better, but a water pick is probably better than no flossing at all. And I'm not really that consistent with flossing, let's be real. Um, I am good about brushing my teeth. Um, I'd like to get a water pick. There's just, like, we don't have a lot of bathroom space, unfortunately. And I don't like fucking around with batteries. You mean an acoustic toothbrush? I appreciate it, but I'm also mad. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. Where are the seagulls? It's a mystery. Maria, did you want to see the seagulls? Ooh, wanted to see them. Still, it's a bit strange. There isn't even a single one around. Maybe Jessica grilled them all and ate them. And that's how her boobs got so big. Ooh, the hell, don't say disturbing stuff like that. You'll get Maria believing it. Ooh, 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 Jessica Oni-chan grilled them. Jessica Oni-chan grilled them. Ooh. I did not. I did not. I did not. Why the hell would I do something like that? That's right. That's right. Jessica grilled them. Skin and meatballs. Liver and onion. Ugh. Swim in, swim in meat dolls. Liver and onion. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Ha, 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 As I made fun of Jessica, Maria tagged along, looking like she was having fun. Yeah, we know. Ooh, I never guessed she was such a good sport. Alrighty then, for today on I'll make you my number one follower. As I smiled at her, she beamed, looking overjoyed, possibly because she was happy about this little connection we'd made with each other. That's not it, Maria Chan. I've heard wild birds are attuned to changes in the weather and atmospheric pressure. The weather will probably get worse tonight. The seagulls might have returned to their nests early. Ooh, not grilled? Jessica Oni Chan didn't grill him? No, no. I wouldn't do something like that. Battler, you admit right now that you lied. Battler Kun, Maria Chan is a naive girl, so she takes even joke. She takes even jokes seriously. What about odd jokes? You should ch choose your jokes more carefully. George and Nikki gently scolded me, and because it was George, because it was George, who I respect and I love so much, heart of the family, I I bowed down and said, you know what, George, you're right. Even though I outstripped Nikki in height, and Nikki was Nikki, of course, there was no choice but to obediently apologize. Sure, my bad, my bad, Maria, that was a joke. The seagulls are all taking it easy in their nests today, that's all. Battler lied? George Oni-chan told the truth? Yeah, he always does! Had she actually been tricked despite all the fun she was having? Her pure eyes made me feel guilty. Maybe I went a little overboard with her after all. Yeah, that's right, that's right. 
what George and Nikki said is true. The weather's bad, so they probably went home for the day. This reminds me of the time that I told the kids that if they wash their hair with dog shampoo, they turn into dogs. Went too far with that one. Went way too far. It doesn't mean they're gone. They were not happy. Right, Aunt Rosa? That's right. Tomorrow, when the weather gets better, I'm sure they'll come back so we can hear them cry. Meow, 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 like they always do. Ooh, I'll wait until the weather gets better and they come back. Gonna wait until tomorrow. Gonna wait until the weather's better. Ooh, ooh. Gonna catch a killer. Maria was in a lighter mood and was looking forward to tomorrow when the seagulls would come back and fill the skies. Still, George and Nikki really was amazing at taking care of kids. I think I remember Nikki taking good care of me as well when I was a brat six years ago. And Nikki, that's probably your gift. George Cun is amazing at taking care of young kids. If you wanted to, I'll bet you'll do a great job with, with childcare, don't you think? Yeah, it's almost like George Nissan was born to do something like that. Personally, I think they'd suit you better than doing business in some company president's office. Oh no, childcare is a fine career path, but it's not a job where merely liking children is enough. You really are modest, George Cun. But Battler Cun is quite good with children too. Just a second ago, even though it didn't last long, Maria seemed to be having a lot of fun. Please keep on playing with her like you did just now. Just use your jokes more carefully, okay? Giggle. Aunt Rosa winked at me, giggling a little. We're in. She's a real mother, I thought to myself, who's happy to see Maria having fun. Stayed in the boat the whole trip, by the way. Didn't give a shit. Come on. Come on, Rosa! And you brats too. What the hell are you doing? Let's get going. Okay, okay, we're coming. The old bastard was waving for us to hurry up. Yeah, we need to get moving. We might as well have this conversation after setting our luggage down in our rooms. Now then, everyone, allow me to lead you to the guest house where you'll be spending the night. Please, this way. Go to San, call to everyone and led the way. Kumasawa-san brought up the rear. A serpentine? Is it serpentine or serpentine? Is it ser it's serpentine, right? Turpentine, serpentine? Serpentine? It's not coming up on Google. Twisting path led through a dim forest. It ran a bit uphill. I guess the path was made all twisty so the slope wouldn't seem too, sle too steep. But personally, I'd have been happier if they had the guts to make some stairs in a straight line. Okay, can we have the characters repeat this information now, please? No doubt they made the path twist on purpose to put on airs of distance and importance. Before oh, we're not! Oh, okay, before long. We saw garden-style stone steps. Ah, from here on, I do have some memories. Go up these and... At the top of the stone steps, we saw a beautiful guest house. So far, I'm liking the music and voice acting. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Its facade was lovely, of course, but more importantly, we couldn't enter its doors without having our hearts stolen away by the splendor of the beautiful rose garden spreading before it. Ah, it's as beautiful as ever this year. A real delight for the eyes. After climbing the stone steps, the people greeted by this rose garden gave voice to their impressions one by one. And we're gonna hear it. Is it just me or are the flowers a little less lively this year? It's probably because it wasn't that hot this summer. I also believe that was a factor. Sadly, this year's blooming is a tad inferior when compared to last year's. Decay. Even so, it was a delightful rose garden. I remember that even six years ago, huge numbers of roses had greeted us every year. This rose garden was the first thing that greeted the people who came to Rock and Jima. Even our parents, who came every year, couldn't help but give voice to their admiration. In fact, it seemed to have undergone a power-up from the garden in my memories of six years ago. This place is always so amazing. It would be wonderful to have a rose garden like this at home. Give it up. Who do you think would take care of it? Roses are a real pain, with bugs and diseases to worry about. Well, from what I've heard, Kyrie Nissan takes care of her rose every day and makes sure no bugs get anywhere near it, right? What? Huh? What are you talking about? That's right. Though in this person's case, the rose goes after the insects like some nasty carnivorous, carnivorous plant. Oh, so that's what you mean. Come on, Rosa. Can't you give that a rest just for today? I put that sort of thing completely behind me. What the fuck are you guys talking about? I wonder. After all, you're a womanizer on an almost genetic level. No need to worry, Rosa-san. When a rose gives you too much trouble, it'll always it's always best to snip it at the root. Snip, snip. Snip, snap, snip, snap. Ho, 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 such frightening talk this is. Guys who are popular with the ladies are always forced to live dangerously. I sure hope I turn out a bit prettier in my next life. Hideyoshi Nissan, like I keep saying, it isn't like that at all. And Kiri, stop it, you're freaking me out. You've made my rose wilt. Oh, they're talking about his penis. All right, my bad, sorry. A little slow on the uptake today, I'm sorry. Hey, Maria-chan, look over here. These roses are especially magnificent. Magnificent roses. Ooh. Hmm, smells pretty sweet. Look, this suits my elegance perfectly. Hey, cut it out. 
Maria's gonna imitate you and get hurt by the thorns. She yelled at me as I leaned in to smell the rose's scent with an ex exaggerated ge gesture. I thought she was overreacting, but when I turned around, I saw Maria imitating my every gesture and George and Nikki smiling broadly at us. Hey now, Maria-chan, be careful. Rose thorns can, can hurt. Ooh. George Onichan. Only this rose is strange. Ooh. Strange? What's wrong? Maria pointed at a single rose. I immediately understood why she found it odd. In the midst of all these magnificent roses, one single rose was starting to wilt. There wasn't any particular reason. Some roses flourish and others wilt. That's all there was to it, but Maria seemed very concerned about the uh, about the only unhealthy one in the group. I am so bored. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Let's just fucking go, please. It must have made her feel lonely. Holy shit, so you feel sad for this rose because it's the only one that isn't healthy? Ooh, the others are all healthy, but this one's sad. Well, they all bloom and wither at their own paces. I'll bet this one's just starting to wilt early because it got to bloom before any of the others. Well, oh, I read that already. Yeah, that's right. It probably just bloomed like crazy, fulfilled its duty, and went to sleep. The symbolism. You shouldn't get so worked up about it. It seemed that Maria's pure, sensitive nature was making her feel some emotional pain for that rose that wilted alone. Even though she understood the logic of it, it still felt lonely to her. Then, Maria-chan, why don't you look after this rose until we leave? Ooh? George and Nikki straightened up and felt around in his pocket. Then he took out the wrapper from the candy he had been sucking on in the plane. He twisted it into a thin string, then gently tied it to the rose as a sort of marker. Hey, that's pretty cute. Let's mark it with this. Later on, you can come and give it some water. I'm sure Mr. Rose will be happy. Ooh! Come give it water. I think you should give Mr. Rose here a name. I'm sure it'll, it'll, that'll make it happy and you'll get to know it a little better. A name? A name? Ooh, ooh. Though she still wore her, her usual sullen face, Maria crossed her arms and began to consider this intently. At the very least, she appeared to have been completely pulled out of her slump. Nice going, Aniki. Wow, he's so good with kids. George Nissan has always been really understanding. I can't, can we stop sucking this guy's dick? Oh my god, every scene is just like how great George is. What the fuck? Can't help but respect them. Yeah, I guess he was just born that way. We've got to start picking up tips. Was this garden just as mag magnificent when you all were kids? It was only after I stopped living here that it grew so, so big. Before that, the garden was simpler, though I'm still attached to that one. George, George should always be on screen. If he's not, all the rest of the characters should be saying, Hey, where's George? Which is how the boys were watching Jurassic Park last night, by the way. Whenever there wasn't a dinosaur on the screen, it was like, Hey, where's the dinosaurs? <laughs> I don't blame them. So many long stretches of time without a dinosaur in Jurassic Park. I forgot part of the movie too. So like when they went through the gates at the beginning in the car, I clapped my hands and said, all right, boys, here we go. Movie's starting now. Time to see some dinosaurs. And then T-Rex pen, no show, just a goat. Fucking Dilophosaurus pen, no show, nothing at all. And then get out of the car and go see the fucking comatose Triceratops. I was like, oh, God damn it. What? Like, <laughs> this is not going well, but it picked up. They really liked the movie after that. Oh. <sighs> Joe, if you think this is boring, you should try reading Higurashi. I'm not exaggerating when I say it takes six hours for anything, anything interesting to happen. Then even then after some interesting stuff happens, it's back to five hours of absolutely nothing happening. What is it about the weebs just always having a worse game? The grass is always browner on the other anime. What the fuck? Every single time, Steins Gate, oh, this is fucking nothing compared to Umineko. And now we're playing Umineko and it's like, oh, this is nothing next to fucking Higurashi. And then we're going to play fucking Higurashi. And it's going to be, oh, this is nothing next to fucking Angel Doku fucking meh, 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 meh. Like, oh, what the fuck? It's fucking 10 hours and nothing happens, but I still got through it because I wanted to be on my fucking anime list. Here we go. What the shit? Man, this is nothing compared to the fate visual novel. Fucking hell. Fucking hell. Umi Neko, we're already with the Nekos. Here they are. <sighs> what were, where were we? It was only after I stopped living here that it grew so big. Before that, the garden was simpler, though I'm still attached to that one. Nissan fiddled with it too much with that vaguely bad taste of his. Are we? What are we talking about? I liked it much better before. Uh, Eva, you've got to think positive. Setting aside... <laughs> Setting aside how it used to look, its beauty now is something to be admired. You'll be able to relax a lot, a lot better if you look at it that way. I didn't mean it like that. I was just saying I wanted you to see this garden the way it was before too. I need to calm down. Sorry. Hold on. Let me take a swig of water. Oh. Everyone, if you please, I shall guide you to your rooms now. 
Gorasan called to everyone to ask if we were ready, but our hearts had been completely stolen away by the Rose Garden that none of us had seen for a year, so we didn't pay much attention to him. Since we since we weren't a travel group, it wasn't like we had a strict schedule to follow. Besides, our, our since our parents were visiting their old home full of nostalgia, it wasn't like they had to let themselves be urged on by anyone or anything. Understanding the situation, Gorasan continued to wait, smiling widely until our parents got tired of the roses and told them to guide us to our, to our rooms. All right, so hold on, is are they all here? Yeah, so this this is the people that work here. So it's gonna be doctor um i can't remember his name gideon or something and there's going to be two more and then there's a sibling that's missing oh the, her parents okay so her mom and dad and then grandfather and then like the witch beatrice are beatrice and the witch the same people i don't know oh shit oh hey if it isn't canon kun it's been so long how are you doing uncle hideyoshi suddenly shouted uh, in the direction he was waving was a slender boy. What, 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 what is, what is, okay, like, oh god. What, what's this? Are you looking for someone and they're this tall? In the direction he was waving was a slender boy. Meeting him right after a huge man like Goto probably emphasized his small stature. The boy was in the middle of transporting piled up gardening tools and the like in a, in a wheelbarrow. When he realized he was being called to stop, he set down his, set down the wheelbarrow, took his hat off and bowed his head. Good afternoon. I figured he was probably younger than me, and I realized by the general atmosphere surrounding him that he was another servant. Why does he have the insignia then? You don't have the insignia. You don't have the insignia. It's only it's only fam family members that have the insignia. Oh, you don't have the insignia. You do. You do. You don't. You do. You. So is it only blood relatives that have it? Because you're not blood relative. Oh, wait, hold on. Is it with the... How do we get to the new ones? You don't have it. Oh, you do. It's down here. Okay. It's hiding. Okay. Maybe they have... Maybe he has it on his back then. He greets us in response to Uncle Hideyoshi's call, but he seemed like he might be pretty unsociable most of the time. It was a greeting that lacked feeling. When Godasan noticed that our interest had shifted toward him, towards him, he went to the boy's side and introduced him to us. Battler-sama, allow me to introduce you. This is one of the servants of the Ushi head household. Canon san greet our guest. Be our guest. Greet our guest. I'm pleased to meet you. I am the servant. Canon. Yep, my first impression wasn't wrong. He seemed to be unsociable, or at least not so good at talking. Compared to Godasan, who was extraordinarily polished as a servant, you couldn't help but feel an inexperience typical of his age. When Godasan urged him in a whisper to give a bit uh, more of an introduction, the boy named Canon only to cast his eyes downwards. Canon san could you perhaps give them a little more of a greeting? No. <laughs> because we are furniture. What? What kind of mansion is this? He didn't seem to be refusing to greet us out of spite. Rather, he seemed to have fallen silent because he didn't know what else to say to us in greeting. Well, Canon Kun is shy and, he, and doesn't tend to talk much. He might not be that sociable, but deep down he's a really good person. Don't get him wrong. Don't get it twisted. You've been working here for three years, haven't you? Pretty sure you started a year before Godasan, right? Even though he wasn't exactly giving a terrible first impression, Jessica hurriedly backed him up. I see, apparently his unsociable nature causes him trouble a lot. Okay then, nice to meet you. I'm Battler. I'm 18. <laughs> How old are you? He fell silent as though wondering whether or not it was a question he'd have to answer. But here again, Jessica plowed ahead. Um, uh, if I remember correctly, Cannon's two years younger than us, so 16, right? Yes, that is correct. Okay, what are you hiding? The only thing you would prefer not to tell us his age if given the choice. This was probably because he thought we'd look down on him for it. I remember that when I was around his age, I hated being asked how old I was by adults. I see, 16, huh? That's gotta be a delicate time. Ah, uh, 16, I remember being 16, yes. Uh, now that I'm a man and mature at 18, yes, which means I probably asked something I shouldn't have. <laughs> I'm glad I'm I'm glad you're about our age. Just be cool and call me battler and I'll call you canon Thank you very much, but the sentiment alone is sufficient battler sama Jessica looked panicky for some reason She seemed to think my impression of canon was getting worse because of his refusal Well as a girl Jessica probably couldn't understand the fretful male heart at his age at this age as his elder given by just two years I took it upon myself to be understanding of that. What the fuck are we doing battler? Canon Sen, could you perhaps be a little more courteous? A smiling face is also part of a servant's duty. My apologies. I shall make an effort. 
Ho ho ho! Goda-san, Canon Kun is trying his best, yes? It looked like he was often warned about being unsociable, and apparently he hadn't improved one bit. Goda-san kept his business smile, but let a small sigh of resignation escape. Well then, I still have work to do. If you'll excuse me, my curfew approaches. It looked like Canon himself was uncomfortable with... with remaining silent here any longer. After another perfunctory bow, he turned around and started pushing the wheelbarrow again. Just then, the wheelbarrow suddenly wobbled and fell, scattering the load. I guess the wheelbarrow's single wheel got caught on a pebble and lost its balance. What do you think you're doing? Now, now, clean it up quickly. Gudasan urged, urged him to hurry in a quiet voice, as though hinting uh, it was a shameful for a servant to appear clumsy in front of a guy. Doesn't he have to go to school? He's 16! Cannon Kun wordlessly reloaded the wheelbarrow with uh, the fallen objects as if to say that he understood quite well without being told. What kind of anime doesn't have school? He seemed to be fine with the light looking gardening tools, shovels and such, but he looked like he was having trouble getting his arms around and lifting up, up some sacks of fertilizer. Are you okay? You're so careless. Here. Milady, you will dirty your garments. Please, leave this to us. With a smooth motion, Gudasan took the shovel that Jessica had picked up. Behind him, Cannon Kun was having trouble with the sacks of fertilizer. Uh, you'll dirty your garments. I miss 13 Sentinels. Don't worry, the ones I'm wearing aren't that expensive. Besides, I hate guys who just sit there and make the waitress pick up the fork they dropped at the restaurant. Who the fuck does that? What? I lift up the other bags that had fallen. Of course, they weren't light, but for me, it was a piece of cake. Or some say kake. Canon Kun looked at me surprised. It was the face of someone who never would have expected to receive help from a guest. Batlosama, I've misjudged you. Don't worry about it. I will take care of everything, so... Don't you worry, I may not look it, but I've got got it where it counts. <laughs> Since Cannon Kun looked like he hadn't yet gone through his growth spurt, he was stuck with a sort of weak body. That kind of weight might have been too much for him. It's quite heavy. Oh, here, George is here to save the day. Oh, man, George is so strong. Man, he really picked all that stuff up. You'd be great at loading things and pushing wheelbarrows. <laughs> but liking pushing things isn't enough. I'd rather stay in business. Yeah, you're right. It's natural that it would be difficult for you. Don't worry about it, Cannon Kun. Okay, my time to shine. This makes up for the boat stuff from before, right? Nope. Ha. As if this can make up for freaking out like that. Ha ha ha. Later, I'll tell you about it too, Cannon Kun. Battler was totally hilarious. Gonna fall, fall. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, we don't have a, a, a George bit. Oh, well. As they did this, I piled all the stuff back into the wheelbarrow. I beg your forgiveness for letting you witness such unsightliness. This is going on for a while, huh? Come on. Come now. That's quite enough. Please go. Letting the guests who were supposed to feel welcome see such a disgraceful thing. Ralph, please go. Must have been hideously embarrassing for a servant. Pressed by Goda to hurry up and go, Canon Kun left. You're too harsh on him, Goda-san. Shouldn't you have helped him instead of being a bully? That was wrong of me. I deeply implore your forgiveness. Without even a twitch of it in his smile, Goda-san apologized elegantly. Canon Kun has a ton of things he's good at too. <laughs> <laughs> like paintballing and snowboarding. It's just being young that works against him all the time. It's a cry in shame. A seagull cry in shame. Well, it's a prickly age. Let's just leave him be. After all, closed-mouthed servants are the best kind. Isn't that right, Kumasawa-san? Ho ho ho, Rudolf-sama, you truly are harsh. There is no servant as silent as me, of course. Everyone smiled wryly at that obvious lie. Everyone, even she herself, didn't believe that, not in her wildest dreams. So she must have said it's light in the moon. Yeah, no shit! Yeah, that's the kind of the kind of character that could fucking hell! That's the kind of character Kumasawa used to be! The one stiff atmosphere cleared up at once, thanks to your shield for smile. I'd like to set down our luggage soon. Go to San, what rooms are we all going to take? Knowing that one of the people that worked on the mod for this game is sitting in chat while I relentlessly shit on it, it really fills me with fucking cringy determination. It shall be the same as the previous year. Allow me to guide you. Please, this way. We headed toward a trim, elegantly simple guest house. This was going to be our temporary quarters for the night. Cannon washed over a hedge. <laughs> as the guests all enter the guest house. Must have been a pretty short hedge, I thought, as he hadn't had his growth spurt yet, whereas I, Battler, had had a growth spurt, and I was now a towering 5'11". Then he let his eyes fall on those heavy stacks of fertilizer piled up in the wheelbarrow. They're not fertilizer. In his mind, he kept going over the pre his previous mistake. Battler, big and strong, had picked up the sacks in front of him. The sacks cannon couldn't lift himself as if they were feathers. Why are we with him now? Or is this Battler thinking of what he would think? It would be extremely difficult for an outsider, outside observer to guess what emotions that favor had stirred up in canon. But as far as you could tell by watching him hang his head, there was something that he couldn't, 
could, just couldn't let go of. 99 is genuinely good, says any for Prez. Yeah, I wonder, I wonder if it would be a fun experiment. It would take too much time, so I wouldn't do it. It would be a fun experiment to do all, to, to measure all the anime games that we've played and see where they are in the plot at the three hour mark. Because I'm pretty sure 999 had, you know, had some bullshit and we had some cliff, but you know, interesting stuff had happened. There had been some bowel movement at least. You know, it's still in the bowels, but it, there's moving, you know, so, but here is like, this is fucking glacial. Holy shit. I would guess that 999, I would guess all the Zero Escape games would probably be pretty decent, except for VLR. VLR is probably the slowest of the three. Um, still not bad compared to this, I think. 13 Sentinels is actually pretty fast. Steins Gate is as bad as this, if not worse. What about Al Somnium Files? Probably we're decently into that at that point, right? We're at least having the dynamic between Date and Aiba, which is just fantastic. So we have that, it has that going for it. Dangan wasn't too bad. Yo. Dangan has, has kind of like the same kind of, here's the cast, talk to them, talk to them, talk to them, talk to them. But it was a bit faster and didn't say everything twice, right? You're not even a slow reader. You just keep going on side 10 just because I'm fucking bored, my weeb. That's part of the parcel. Yeah. Although you are right, yeah. You'd have to remove the tangents. <laughs> anyway, sorry. <laughs> Can you put on adventure mode? This is adventure mode. Muttered words escaped his lips. El Saikon grew, but those words he murmured were so soft that they didn't reach even his own ears. What? Even I... Cannon hung his head, slightly biting his lower lip. How are you such a weeb that you can't even hear yourself whisper? Holy shit. Weeb among weebs. I remember the Rose Garden, but I don't remember this guest house at all. Was it built recently? Yes, yeah, six years ago. Torian Visitor's Retreat was written on a gatepost-like thing, but since everyone called it the guest house, I followed their lead. The brand new Western-style guest house, which stood overlooking the roses, had a magnificent... Love, love this word. Love this word. It's like incorrigible in the Witcher stuff. Designed carefully done in harmony with the with the garden. Correct. It was built the year before last. Ever since then, they've had a sleep over here. Hehe, <laughs> this place is more fun than the junky old mansion you knew. I wish my room was over here. Ooh, I want a room here too. I want one. I guess you could say my own house was upper class, but to me, it felt completely ordinary compared to the head family. Oh, so your commoner fucking lifestyle slumming it suddenly is kind of upper class compared, even compared to this. All right. Leave it to the rich kid to not know that they're rich. The display of wealth was shocking, as was the fact that they had built this kind of awesome guest house for guests who came all over only a few times a year. Eva-sama, Hideyoshi-sama, please do make use of this room. Rudolf-sama, Kairi-sama, please take this room here. I really do love how beautiful and elegant this place is. Western style architecture truly is wonderful. Who knew? I can handle Western design for a few days, but any longer than that and you need the good old Japanese look. Japanese people just relax best on tatami mats. Haha, <laughs> they've been fighting over whether to make our new house Japanese style or Western style. Mom still holds a grudge about Dad having the construction started with a Japanese layout and they bicker all the time about it. Ha, <laughs> parents. I'm really jealous, George Nissan. Your parents get along well, don't they? Mine are so frosty. Then again, they, they're always in sync when it comes to my grades. All the rooms seem to be for two people. I was grateful since I wasn't going to be forced to share the same room with the old bastard under the pretext that we were family. And anyway, I figured those two wouldn't 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 be able to enjoy themselves with some someone like me around. Hi, hi, hi. Yep. What's with that creepy smile? I'm sorry. Are you thinking about your dad fucking your stepmom right now, bro? Like, uh, like, are we, we just went there? What's with the creepy smile? You're thinking about something dirty, aren't you? Hi, hi, hi. Something dirty? Of course not. Please enjoy your stay. Ow, 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 ow. That hurts you, old bastard. Once again, dad pulled my ears from behind. Cut the crap. I'm getting a stomach ache and I'm not in the mood for this. You deserve this, bud. You're the guest of honor this time around. So play as nice as possible with dad and Aniki and the rest. Are you? At the very least, be careful of what you say in front of Dad, got it? Because wisecracks don't get go too well with him. Jessica Chan, what's the head's, head's mood been like lately? Hmm, same as last year, I guess. Considering they say he's got three months left to live, he's as lively, grumpy, and irritable as ever. Meaning this year he's in his usual bad mood. And as usual, the only one who's able to look after him is Gen- Oh, it's Genji, not Gideon. Genji, Genji-san. Alright. It seems the Master will open his heart to no one else. Lately, us small people have not been 
even been granted an audience with him. He shut himself up in his study again, probably doing nothing but that weird black magic of his. What he does for a hobby is his own damn business, but when he starts stinking up the house, it really gets on my nerves. I wish he'd never come out of that study again. He he he. You shouldn't talk like that about the elderly. We're all indebted to him since he rebuilt the Ushi family. We should be more grateful. You know what, George? You're right. Yep, George, as usual. Hmm, well, sorry. After being rooted by George himself, Jessica had no choice but to take back her thoughtless remark. And George, being the Chad that he was, didn't gloat. The Ushi family was wealthy beyond belief, but of course that meant all its members were a bit strange and completely out of touch with the world at large. And at the top of the chain, yourself included, and at the top of the chain the family had, our grandfather, seemed especially strange and terrify, terrifying even for our family. That said, he was getting a stomachache earlier, and I imagine that reflected the honest feelings of all the adult, adults here today. No doubt they were jealous of, of us grandchildren who could just play around and laugh without a care. From the stories Dad told me, the family head was a violent man who ruled with his fists, beating his children, even with even his daughters, mercilessly with a wooden sword. What? If he was so strict and uptight about that, why couldn't he have been, could he have been a little more cons conservative with his kids' names? Because of that, even his grandkids ha have had to suffer. Anyway, I can't say I have any trouble believing those terrifying stories about him. Oh, by the way, I didn't fucking bitch about the fact that you have to buy this game twice? Questions and answers arc? What if I want the answers before the questions? What if I eat dessert before dinner? What if I brush and not floss? What's that about? What? Yeah, you have to buy it twice. It's It comes in two parts. Did you buy the answers yet? No. I, I don't have to buy the answers for at least 12 more years. What the fuck are you talking about? When They Cry 3 and 4? Oh. It's a series of 8 books? What about the other ones before it? I guess maybe I don't understand the format that it was released in originally, so maybe that's why. Those are Higurashi. Oh, so so the weeb earlier was talking about the stuff before this. <laughs> so you're, what you're trying to say is that the pacing has gotten better as it's gone along. <laughs> oh, okay, sorry, I didn't understand. <laughs> This is an improvement. All right. Anyway, I can't say I have any trouble believing those terrifying stories about him. I don't remember meeting him very often, but I think I recall him looking extremely grumpy all the time, always making people cower with that sharp gaze of his. I remember that the room's atmosphere got so tense whenever he was around, you couldn't even breathe. What my, what my dad said about me being the guest of honor now carries a little more oomph for me. Six years ago, I was in, in elementary school, but I'm a high schooler now. If I act up, things could get serious. Ooh, scary. He does look frightening, but he's not so terrifying that you need to tense up like that. Nothing of what he says is truly unreasonable. He may be clumsy at talking, but he's a very logical person. But George, you've been the family darling since, like, forever because of your awesome grades, right? Still am, bud. Grandfather treats us completely different. I've even got slapped with a wooden sword. On my ass. My ass. On my maidenly innocent ass. Well, you're the heiress of the head family, Jessica Chan. Grandfather is giving you special attention. You've got to realize that his strictness reflects his high hopes for you. You should be grateful for those smacks on the ass with the wooden sword. You know what, George? When you're right, you're right. Oh, come on. Seriously, I could just turn the succession over to you, George. It's a bit of a heavy burden for me to carry. I think I already said it before, but Jessica, Jessica's the girl heir to the head family. Yep, you did. You did say it before, I remember. We're only cousins in... Bra oh, so now we're cousins in branch family, so she probably feels a totally different sort of pressure than we do. Ooh, Jessica Oni-chan, is that heavy? If I help hold it, will it get lighter? Hmm? Ah, thanks. It's okay, I'm not gonna push it on you, Maria. I'm gonna bear this cross until my grave, don't worry. She was grateful for Maria's innocent concern, but Jessica's fa face still seemed to contain some of the uneasiness she felt toward the future. Maybe we were in the same boat. Hopefully it doesn't shake. Any high, any high schooler with exams approaching would have trouble hiding their anxiety for the future. Maria, come here. You and I will be in this room. Battler Khan, I heard you're going to be with me in this room here. Oh, we get to room with George? Nice. Oh, now there's a surprise. It's bigger than our parents' rooms. Dang. Well, I figured we cousins would all want to hang out together, so I told them to get a bigger room ready. Ooh, I like it. I like it here more, too. I'd rather be here than with Mama. Ooh, ooh. Oh, you like it better here, too, Maria? Okay, this room is George. George's and mine, but we'll give you special permission to come in. Better keep it a secret from your mom, okay? Ooh, it's a secret. Aunt Rosa was right behind us, but Maria still answered, striking the air with her fists with her fists clenched tight. Wait, what? Okay. After setting down their luggage in their rooms, our parents had gathered again in the corridor. 
hey, what are you brats planning to do? Are you cousins just gonna gonna stay here and chat? It seemed they were heading to the mansion to announce their arrival. Normally, they would make us follow them and greet everyone together. together. But if that had been the case, Dad would have just told us to come and that be the end of it. He's saying it's okay if we don't come, so what will we do? Well, it's gonna be lunchtime before long anyway. Better let the kids unwind here. Besides, if the worst if worst comes to worst, this might be their last chance to play outdoors. Ooh, I'll go too. Maria, you house sit for Mama, okay? Behave yourself and wait here. Ooh. Since Maria was being told to house sit, we certainly couldn't leave her on her own. George noticed this immediately and gave a clear reply for all of us cousins. Well then, we'll accept your offer and house sit. We've got lots of stories to tell each other after being away for a year. That sounds wonderful. And Battler kind of has six years worth of stories to tell, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. I'll take care of the house like a good boy. Kumasawa-san, I'm going to stay here too. We'll break rank and leave the rest of the adults. Hee 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 hee. Perhaps that would be best. Ho 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 ho. I'll report it to, to Madame. Madame? Then allow me to guide you all to the mansion. This way, please. The other children are one thing, but George is getting to be an adult. Wouldn't it be better if he came with us? If we make him come, then poor George will be the only one out of place. Interacting with his cousins is also important. You know what? Let's let George decide. Okay, see y'all later. The adults left one after the other. They left in the same formation as our trip from the harbor, with Gudasan leading and Komasawa-san taking up the rear. As we gathered in the room assigned to his cousins, George and Nikki asked us to excuse him for a second. He rushed over to Komasawa-san, who was falling behind the disappearing, disappearing adults, and seemed to ask her something. He soon finished his business and came back. What's up, Nikki? Ah, nothing. I just wanted to ask her something. Mysterious! Tell me too! Tell me too! Hmm? Hee 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 hee. What could George Nisan be asking Kumasama-san and not me, I wonder? Ah, uh, I don't have a clue. No, it's a misunderstanding. Not that I know not that I know what you're misunderstanding. Nikki was getting pretty tongue-tied. It was almost as though he felt guilty about something and Jessica knew exactly what he was worried about. At any rate, it's no fun if Jessica gets to know about it and not me. Yeah, it's true. Hey Maria, it looks like we're the only two out of the loop, right? Don't you want to know what they're talking about? Ooh, we want to know too. We want to know too. Ooh, 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 ooh. I fooled around while ooing together to Maria. No, I'm telling you, it's no big deal. Ah ha ha ha. Then just tell us then, liar. I'm surprised you'd be such a terrible. You, you tell such a terrible lie, Nikki. I thought you'd be better at lying. George, who's good at everything, confess. Maria, you you tickle his right side. I'll tickle his left. Ooh, I've got his right side. Battler's got his left. Ooh. Wait a second. Wait, you two. Ah ha ha. Stop. Ah ha ha. Maria and I played around, chasing George as he tried to escape, rolling on the bed. I realize high schoolers aren't supposed to bounce around like kittens, but I still miss this kind of fun. A warm, cozy kind of fun. Ha ha ha. George, what, what were you asking Kumasawa-san? Hmm? Well, I've got a good guess. It's been a year since the last time he visited the head family. Who knows what servants might have come and gone during that time. Either way, it looks like he'd like to go and say hi. Ooh? Say hi? I want to say hi too. What the hell is something to feel guilty about, Aniki? Hmm? I'm not buying it. Maria, don't be fooled. The Nikki's still hiding something. More torture. What's going on right now? Stop it, seriously. Ah, ha, ha. I'm just on autopilot waiting for this to resolve. Holy shit, Maria Chan, you too. Stop already. Ah, ha, 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 ha. She's probably busy cleaning or getting lunch ready. Don't worry, she'll drop by to say soon, say hi sooner or later. Ha, I bet you'd rather be welcomed in by Shannon instead of that nosy Goda. Who the fuck's Shannon? Ha, ha, ha. Shannon? Shannon. Ah, yeah, I remember a girl with that name. Is she still a servant? How's she doing? Oh, George has a, has a crush on, on Shannon. If this was a Madoka watch along, we would already be done by now. Yeah, because we would have got banned for the upskirt shots. Yeah, I know, yeah. I would rather be in that reality. By the way, Natsuhi Nissan, how's your headache been lately? It seemed pretty serious before. I've been much better late. Oh, new character! Babe, wake up! Oh, that is very different. Holy shit. Actually, you know what? It isn't. Why did I say that? Oh, because I couldn't see the boobs before. That's why my brain's decided that. Oh, this is blocking a little bit. Maybe that's why. Okay. I've been much better lately. Thank you for your concern. Oh, right. Here. A present for you, Nat, Nat, Natsu. I'm just going to call her Natsu or Nats. Nats. Thank you very much. I'm always receiving gifts from you. Is this black tea? It's herb tea with peppermint and lemon balm. Oh, that sounds good. It's a blend from a well-known store and it's supposed to be good for headaches. I thought it might help you too. Rosa was always a conscientious woman. How are we seeing this? 
Who are we right now? Probably because she was the youngest of four and much younger than the other three. She managed to grow up without gaining the venomous nature of her siblings. Her kind words got gnats to soften her expression for just a moment, but it wasn't enough to melt her stony gaze, hardened as it was by long years of mental stress. Come to think of it, you're always complaining about those headaches. Pull yourself together. Jessica Chan has her exams this year, right? That's going to be a turning point in her life. Will she really be able to rely on you as a mother if you're like that? Besides, Nats, you're three years younger than me. You should get your act together. I apologize. I've had a tendency for headaches all my life. Even under normal circumstances, Eva sometimes failed to choose her words carefully, but her comments aimed at Nats contained shards of obvious malice, though she hid it with a smile. Of course, that didn't escape Nats. She frantically continued her urge to grimace. Sorry, continued, contained her urge to grimace and pretended to ignore Eva. Our battler will have his exams this year too. Our, our stepmom. Okay, yeah, our. Mm -hmm. Okay, Rudolph's son. Shouldn't you be a little concerned as well? For the sake of your own son, you'd better get serious to the point of having headaches like Nat's Nissan. If I say anything, he automatically rebels. So what should I say? Should I say the opposite, that it's okay for him to mess around? That's probably the only way I could get him to listen to me. Hideyoshi. George did really well in his exams, right? Please, you gotta teach me the trick of handling children. Well, you care about them, that's what you do. Fuck, out of luck then. It's probably because I got him to understand why he should study. Study isn't worth anything on its own. Is the music okay, by the way? It's getting kind of louder for me. Study isn't worth anything on its own, that's right. The real point of studying is to practice researching stuff on your own whenever you bump into something you don't know. It's fine? Okay, good. If you can't do that, you can't be useful to society. I'm not talking about math or writing, you gotta learn how to learn. This is true? That's splendid. I wish our Jessica could understand that as well. If she is to be the heiress of the Ushi family, then at this rate, do you really have to force her into becoming the successor? After all, a woman has to find a woman's happiness. Parents shouldn't force such things on their children, don't you think? I think you should get her to give it up and give it to our son George instead. He'd be way better suited. Hold your horses, Eva. Each family has its own way of raising their kids. You shouldn't be pushy. I'm sorry. Nats, don't take it the wrong way. Though the light shining in through the window was quite warm despite the cloudy weather, there was a dark mood about the room, which was probably causing headaches for more than just gnats. As if to sweep away that mood, Kyrie brightly made a suggestion to all present. Still, this black tea has a really lovely aroma. Let's drink it right away. In Japan, surely you couldn't find something like Leopold's black tea anywhere but Ginza, right? I see you know a lot, of, uh, know a lot about it, Kyrie. You know your tea. I guess it was worth going to the trouble of buying it. Kyrie and Rosa stood up from their seats and, and made as if to prepare the black tea, but Nats forestalled them. I thank you both, but we can try that later. One of our people will be will be will soon be coming to bring some tea, so please relax. Why was that hard to read? Leave it f leave it for later, you two. Let's enjoy our welcome drink. Rudolph gave a subtle signal with his eyes for them to sit down again. Kyrie and Rosa understood instantly and obediently returned to their seats. The initial greeting of the guests was complete, so it was time for them to be served some tea. It was embarrassing for the host that the tea was late, especially now that the guests were talking about making tea themselves. Nats bit her lower lip, frustrated by the ineptitude of the servants who were late bringing, bringing the tea. Alright, I am a little confused right now. Who are we? So we're just, right now we're just a floating, like disembodied narrator perspective, but sometimes we're a battler. Sometimes we'll be a different character. Do we switch between them? Because we already were the disembodied uh, narrator with, um, with the beginning. Or were we? Maybe there was a character we were in that scene with uh, with the grandfather, and we saw the um, uh, cannon. That's not something that we should be able to have seen. And now this as well. So I guess we switch sometimes. Seeing her face, Eva immediately started to giggle. Of course, Shannon, Shannon, and Cannon had no way of knowing what was taking place in the parlor. She came pushing a, a serving cart piled with teacups. For no apparent reason, Nats gave her a pained look, and Shannon couldn't help but flinch without knowing what she had done wrong. Excuse me, your tea is ready. Oh, Shannon Chan, it's been a while. Oh, this is why Kasoro likes it. Okay. Oh, you have uh, the insignia. Is that a tattoo? Oh, Shannon Chan, it's been a while. You keep getting prettier every time I see you. Oh, um, thanks. Blushy crushy, save the chatting for after you've set the table. The tea will get cold. I apologize, madame. Madam. She apologized like a small frightened animal bumped against the serving cart and made a jarring racket as she dropped several teaspoons. Her clumsiness made Nat's expression turn even darker, which made Shannon quail even more. Come on, Nats. There's nothing 
Wrong with their exchanging a few words in greeting. The tea must be pr plenty cold already, considering how long we've, we've been kept waiting. Hehehehe. <laughs> There's no need to worry. It's not cold yet. Shannon, finish setting the table quickly. I'm sorry, madame. Nat's irritation was obvious by now. The ineptitude that delayed the tea, the clumsiness of the servant, everything pointed to the incompetence of Nat's everyday leadership, making her lose face. My god. Good thing George isn't here to see this, is what I'm thinking right now. Good thing, as the person in charge of the Ushi Head family's kitchen, allowing that clumsiness to be exposed, today of all days, was surely nothing less than total humiliation. Lay off, Nats. Lay off, Nats. Don't you think it's a little harsh to bully Shannon Chan when she's trying her best? And on her birthday? <laughs> I'm not bullying anyone. What a nice aroma. May I ask what brand this is? Um, I, I'm terribly sorry. I'll find out for you later. Kyra was trying to be nice, hoping to cut through the tense mood. However, Shannon had embarrassed herself instead, darkening Nats's face and the room's mood. By this point, Eva was audibly gi giggling. Eva's kind of nuts! What's this? Shannon Chan, don't you even know what you're pouring us? Come now, you mustn't serve something so suspicious to guests. We'll need a, s a silver spoon at the very least before we can drink this. I'm sorry, I'll go get one immediately. Shannon Chan, do you know what silver spoons are used for? Stirring? They have to be silver. Do you know why? No. Um, a teasing smile rose to Eva's face as she stared at Shannon getting, setting the table. By itself, Eva's expression was sweet in, in an impish sort of way. However, the words being spun from her lips held the keenness of a razor within them. Shannon tried with all her might to avoid Eva's continuing gaze. Realizing that Shannon was hard pressed for an answer, Rosa gave some timely help. They say that if silver is touched by poison, it darkens. Giggle. Guess you've learned something today, Shannon Chan. They were acting as though this tea- So someone's gonna get poisoned, okay. They were acting as though this tea needed to be tested for poison before it could be drunk. In Nats's eyes, this was an insult to both the tea and to herself for serving it. Alright, so everyone hates Nats! Alright, damn, what did she do to deserve this? Rudolph laughed flippantly, flippantly and patted Eva's so shoulder. Haha, <laughs> silver cutlery wouldn't do you any good for you, and Neki? Just one lick of your poisonous tongue and even a silver plate would turn pitch black. Wahahaha! <laughs> Since I get to hear that poison tongue every day, I must be poison proof myself by now. Eva, I don't mind when you use it on me, but you better hold back when talking to people who haven't built up resistance. Wahahaha! <laughs> My, how cruel! All I did was teach Shannon Shan a bit of, about tea, didn't I? Giggle. Everyone follow. Okay, they're tactfully telling you that you're being really rude. Respond, please respond. Everyone followed the lead set by Hideyoshi's horse laugh and chuckled, though not easily. Only Nats didn't join in, but for the time being, the conversation inside the parlor could now be mistaken for a lively and friendly chat. Can we see it? No. As Shannon finally finished setting the, t the tea table and tried to leave, Kyrie apologized to her in a low voice for not being able to help. Shannon gave a light bow and made a hasty retreat. Shannon cast her eyes downwards as, sh as, as she pushed the cart down the corridor. Anyone seeing the pitiful way she looked might easily conclude that she'd been bullied in some way. Don't be sad. You didn't do anything wrong, Nissan. You were watching. That is my role. I watch. Oh, were we you? So sometimes we're you. Hmm. Madam and Eva Sa Sama can go to hell. Oh, but the worst coward is that guy. Cannon glared hatefully in the opposite direction of the parlor. Who? Me? The preparations for the tea had been delayed by some trifling problems in the kitchen. These problems were not Shannon's fault. In fact, it had been Goda's mistake. Oh. After all, there was no way a show off like Goda would give up a flashy job like bringing in tea when the guests arrived. He had ended up wasting time preparing the tea once again. So when he realized he wouldn't be able to score any points for this job, he pushed the task of setting the table on Shannon, who happened to be passing by. You might call it a clever move on his part, but there could be no doubt that it was a cowardly one. It's okay, Kenan Kun. Thanks. I'm not bothered by it, by it at all. Kenan's silence vividly expressed the, the distance between Shannon's words. <laughs> Holy shit! Oh, uh, I don't get it. Because I mean, the story is basically like, just in case you don't understand what just happened, let us spell it out for you and just the, just directly. Oh my god. Between Shannon's words and how she actually felt. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Even if you're the only one who understands, I feel a bit better. You keep your feelings to ball up, Nissan. I wish Silent Hill 2 had taken that approach. Then I would have understood it. Damn. You should be less hard on yourself for once. Yeah. Thanks. Suddenly, they both felt someone's presence and whirled around. 
A middle-aged man stood there. Who the fuck are you? Oh, you have the insignia. Okay. It was Genji, the head servant. Oh, yeah, Genji. What were you doing? Oh, wait. Genji's not the doctor. Who's the doctor then? What are you doing there? Shannon, hurry back to the kitchen. Yes. If you'll excuse me. Wait, aren't we running out of room? Genji, Shannon, Nat, someone else. Okay, I guess we're not running out of room. Yes, if you'll excuse me. Shannon humbly obeyed and promptly made to push the cart and leave. However, Cannon appealed to Genji in silence, bearing something in his eyes that he could not express in words. What is it? Did something happen? Shannon didn't do anything wrong, but even so, they... Stop it, Cannon kun Please excuse me. I'll return to work immediately. You know what? There's three characters on the screen. It's so different, isn't it? Such a different vibe. Why is his hand like this still? Why are you elbowing her boobs? Cannon Kun, you should go back to your post too, please. If you say so, Nissan. If that is all, then let's go. Yes, if you'll excuse me. From the shadows in the hallway, an old woman wearing an apron watched over them. It was Kumasawa. Poor Shannon San, Cannon San. There's no reason for those two to be picked on. Still, Gota San's dislike for them is an undeniable effect. Okay, so we're her now. Or maybe we're just switching between different ones, which is fine. Until Goto-san was taken in by the U Ushihead family, I hear he worked for a fabulous hotel somewhere. The manner of work he'd learned there was quite impressive, I believe. It's just that Goto-san is the newest servant here. He must have a lot of pride accumulated from his previous positions. Because Shannon-san and Kanon-kun are his seniors here at the mansion, and yet are inexperienced and have gone through much less in life than he has, he picks on them at every chance he gets. Yep, it tracks. And also, sad as it may be, they are disliked by Madame Nat Nats too. Of course, if we're talking about experience, the madam has been in this family for much longer. And you all live on the island and you're the only people here? It must be fucking miserable here. Holy fuck. And yet, this is one point where I cannot help but sympathize with the madam as well. This game is the ur origin of uh, Resident Sleeper. Hey, stay tuned. Four years later, we're going to do be doing the next part of it. Are we even going to finish an episode today? I don't know. Truly, th truly, the master is a man with many sins on his conscience. Why didn't he realize that such trifling whim of his, of his would give the madam such an inferiority com complex? Of course, on the inside, even the madam is fully aware that those two don't deserve to be treated so harshly. However, the heart has reasons that, re the reasons that reason knows not. Ah, uh, I feel so sorry for them. I can't do anything but watch over them from the shadows. I need to make myself feel better. Let's see if Battler will grope me. Oh, shit! Something happened! Did you know this is longer than the Bible? You know what else is longer than the Bible? The four of us cousins were enjoying our stories, just shooting the breeze. Is the Bible even long? I've only read parts of the Bible. Is the Bible a long read? Do you put Old Testament and New Testament together? Or are you just talking about New Testament? It's like 700,000. Is it really? Wait, hold on. You must be adding Old Testament and New Testament together. What about the, um, the, the, the James Webb version? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I made myself laugh. The, are you? What version of the Bible are you talking about? Why wouldn't you add the testaments together? Well, I mean, I guess you're adding the questions and answered arc of Umi fucking Neko. So yeah, you should, I guess, right? But the New Testament is like... The Old Testament is like, here's shit I used to believe, and then God was like, nah, scratch that. New Testament just dropped. Ignore all that shit. We're now on this version. I I think that you should just read the New Testament. No, you know, the Old Testament is just like, whatever, it's fine. You don't need the Old Testament. That's not how it works, Joe. Okay, first of all, it's all bullshit, so it doesn't work at all. Second of all, our atheism is coming out, all right? Gonna be hitchin's a ride over here. The Old Testament has this. Yeah, the Old Testament is when God was kind of like pissed off and moody and going through puberty. And then New Testament is like, you know what? I've cooled off. Right? It's all right. I got new rules. I count them. I don't think you need to, to read the Old Testament. Is the King James Version really? What? what? I have held a Bible in my hand in the past. And it has been tiny. And the text wasn't that small. There's no way that was 750k words. So what, what, I had an abridged version, I guess? What was I holding? Isn't New Testament the Jesus Ark? Also known as the Answers Ark? Yep. 
God asked a lot of questions in the Old Testament, and then Jesus showed up and answered them. Yeah, pretty much. Thin page. The pages were pretty thin, yeah. We have a Bible. Hold on. There's a Bible on the shelf here. I'm sure of it. No, that's an Anne Rice book. I mean, same thing. <laughs> There's one somewhere. I don't know where it is. Anyway, let's keep going. Anyway, there were both girls and guys here. Plus, we had people over a widespread of ages, adult high school and elementary school. Even if we just talked about our own lives, the other three kept listening attentively. I think I'm finally getting used to all this. Jessica and Maria have grown more than I could have imagined in the past six years. To be honest, I was feeling a bit uncomfortable, but talking like this, I guess that on the inside, nothing's really changed back then. I agree. You haven't changed a bit even after six years. Even though your body's gotten gigantic, you're still a kid inside. Nah, I'm a kid too. I'm a kid too. Well, even you aren't going to be a kid forever, are you, Maria? I mean, you're going to transform from a kid into a cute young lady, aren't you? And when that happens, that flat as a board chest, chest will reach Jessica's level, huh? <sighs> is there an update from Mouse? Update from Mouse? Were we forewarned? Sire, cliff approaching. Brr, brr, brr. You're gonna hate this part, get through it. Apparently there's a Bible anime. We're, my weeb, we're reading it right now. This is the worst it gets, says Iron Wrath. Hmm. Hmm. Xenoblade 1 isn't like this. Xenoblade 2 is though. Like coffee with milk. The chair agree. Oh, it doesn't agree. Well, oh, that's a new sound. Holy shit. It's a promise. Oh my god, when that happens, you gotta let me touch him, okay? It's a pro I didn't even read that part. I checked out after this. What the fuck, dude? Let you touch him. Promise. Ooh. No, no, Maria Chan. You can't make that kind of promise. That's, a, that's bad, 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 bad. Why are you mad at her? Well, I fucking punch him. I promise, so I'll let him touch him. I keep my promises. Always keep him. Ooh. Maria, you really are an earnest good girl. The guy you marry is gonna be really lucky. Hey, stop trying to change the subject by making it sound pretty. Maria, that promise never happened. Never. The promise is cancelled? Ooh. As I thought, without without Battler Khan in our little quartet, this group of cousins just didn't feel complete. These six years have been kind of lonely without the pervert. That's that's true. We didn't really goof off like this. <laughs> that's true. We had some jokes and fun times, but we didn't go to sexual harassment of a minor. That's true. We still, we did have some pretty constructive conversations, right? Stuff about pre 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 preparing for our future exam taking finding jobs. Oh, I'm so, so sorry. Now that I'm here, we just talk about stupid stuff and mess around. But I'm having more fun this year. Ooh, ooh. That's true. I agree. This year's the most fun yet. Maria's sincere words probably spoke for everyone present. George and Nikki stroked Maria's head and she giggled like a happy kitten. Pardon me. Your meal is ready. A timid knocking sound and the equally timid voice of a young woman came through the door. Jessica answered brightly. Shannon, come in. You remember Battler, right? Jessica- Oh my god. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Boobs in a maid uniform are coming in. Oh my fucking god. You know what? Four year cliffhanger. I did my time and I want out. See you next- See you next leap. There stood a servant girl who must have been about our age. It's been quite some time since we last met, Battler Sama. It's nice to see you after six years. My, how you've grown. It's me, Shannon. Trembling a little as she noticed me, she bowed deeply. Ah, Jessica had me surprised, but look at you, Shannon Chan. You've turned out, turned into a total beauty too, haven't you? You are too kind. Is the new one blushing too? Oh. See, here it's like... Maybe I'm a little uncomfortable and I don't need to say anymore. I'm just putting up with it But with here, it's like oh battler cut. That was such a nice fucking thing that you just said tell me more I'm so fucking blushy crushy like it changes the tone of it completely right and he's like oh look I'm such a fucking Chad look at me with my fucking spray tan and fucking hair and here it's like <laughs> I'm a kid that's just trying to flirt for the first time like it's so different You were too kind Still, the food on this island must be really nutritional, huh? What are you eating, and how are you training to get boobs up? Ah, there it is! There it is! Guess I'll have to feel them a bit and see whether yours or Jessica's are bigger, okay? With both hands poised and saliva dribbling from my mouth, I closed in. For the sake of justice and my personal honor, I'd like to point out that I don't suffer from some strange disease that makes my lymph nodes itch until I scratch my neck open, and which can only be prevented by fondling breasts. 
That's just a battler style method of communication. If I slowly close in on her like this, odds are 8 or 9 out of 10 that I get slapped or clobbered, right? Worth it. So I can use this battler style original technique to spark a gag like that and break the ice. Well, well, it also means I really do get to touch them on that 1 in 10 chance though, right? Like that had ever happened. At that point, my hands were less than a centimeter away from Shannon Chan's booze, but the Counter-Strike had yet to come. For no reason at all, let's go to new images. Oh my god, what the fuck? Okay, she blushed and lowered her head in embarrassment when she realized what was going on, but she just stood there with both hands pointedly joined in front of her, not even trying to resist or cover her breasts. George, take the fucking wheel! Please, my god! Hey, I wasn't planning on this, but please hit me right now, or I'm seriously gonna... Which is why I was glad that Jessica chose that time to drive her elbow into the back of my head. Unfortunately, she sent my my, my nose right into the middle of her breasts. Gua, gua. Thank you so much, Jessica. Why the hell are you thanking me? Seriously, my bad, Shannon Chan. I almost got overwhelmed by your hypnotic chest. More importantly, anyone who gets that close has got to be a molester. You've got to fight back when, when people do that. Does he have a tongue piercing? Oh no, it's the fucking period. Okay. But you are an important guest, Battle Osama. Ooh. Oh no. Oh, that's bad. Is that a plot point? Or is that just more perverted? Oh. Oh, that's really bad. I don't know. Now look here, a pervert's a pervert whether he's a guest or not. A girl's chest has got an air defense identification range of about 10 centimeters or so. I'd say even more than that once someone trespasses within two centimeters. Two, two, oh, that was down to two. In a second, you'll be touching them. That's already an invasion of airspace, so you better scramble the jets immediately and give them an instant slap. I, I couldn't do such a thing because we are, um, furniture. Uh... Of course she didn't want her breast touched, but if a guest so desired, she was prepared to sacrifice herself to suit their wants. Does the BDSM, the M and BDSM stand for mansion? What's going on here? A girl like this- Yeah, that's not fair to be the SM. A girl like this needs some urgent protection. What the fuck's going on here? To think such devoted girls still existed in this era. I promise this makes sense 200 hours later. That doesn't help me, Kasaro! That's fucking 36 years from now! It doesn't help me! It's enough to make a man dizzy. But no, no! I'm coming at you with a perverted face again. Knock him- mock me down. Look out, pervert on the loose. This guy can't end until you deliver the punchline, so slap me, please. Hit me. I cannot fulfill your request because I'm furniture, but if it were an order, I'd obey you because that is my duty. Ha ha ha, then I'll make it an order. The next time Battler Cun tries to touch your breast, counterattack with a slap. Got it? Yes, as you wish. From now on, that's what I'll do. Please understand, Battler Sama. Shannon Chen announced this while bowing elegantly to me. Her expression was radiant. I gave her a thumbs up. <laughs> I gave her a thumbs up, sure, I was fine with that. Six years ago, you might have been mistaken for a servant's daughter who lent a hand to your parents' work. But now, you're a full-fledged adult servant. How long have you been working here? Well, I've had the pleasure of serving this household for about ten years. You don't go to school? She's, the kanji for her name, are, are, the kanji for her name are read as Shannon. Oh, kanji is plural? Okay. Now there's another, or I guess maybe it can be. Now there's another name for, for another name that's far from typical for a Japanese person. Back in the day, I was a kid myself. Still are, bud. So I accepted her name without paying much, paying it much attention. Thinking about it now, though, her name's pretty unusual. Everyone has unusual names here. It's, it's usual. Even though she's not a member of the Ushi family. Maybe it's like a servant's professional name or something. If so, that might explain why her name's so similar to Canon Kun. That kid I met earlier in the Rose Garden. I feel like we're kind of glossing over the furniture line, everybody. But, you know... George should be picking up on that, maybe he already knows, but the rest of you are kind of young still, so I get it. She's a long-term servant who served here since the, she was six years old. Her appearance had changed so much that I, I couldn't match, match... Oh, so she's only 16, and we were doing the boob-grabbing thing. Oh, that's the same age as Canon. So Shannon and Canon are the same age. Are they twins? Her appearance had changed so much that I couldn't match her to the person of my memories, but we both knew that each other's... Sorry, we both knew each other six years ago. I'm getting a little tired. Bear with me. I'm still gonna. Oh, we're at break actually. And there's a whole YouTube video dedicated to how good I am about piss breaks. So you know what? Let's take the piss break exactly on time. Every two hours, you do a piss break. I don't know how long we're going for today, by the way. For no reason at all, new image and clear. All right. We're back in about five minutes. 
<laughs> Alright, I didn't realize how how cursed this looks. Completely clear with no with, with no text on the screen. Whoa sugar. Oh no. Okay, let's uh <laughs> Uh Joe, can we get a plot summary? Um there's a Wealthy family that lives on an island isolated in the world and maybe they got their wealth from some deal with a golden witch or something is, is hasn't really been clear on that the the character up here the the grandfather the patriarch of the family um, They're the Ushi Ushi family um, and we're coming back for a meeting That happens every year where the family gathers for some reason uh, He's about to die and I don't know who's getting the inheritance probably this line up here um, and that's it. And that's that's all that's really happened so far. There's been some interpersonal stuff that I can't go into, but apart from that, like, uh, our mom, that we're this person, or honestly, as the story goes on, we, we, we might stop being this person. We're this person for now. 95% of the time we've been this person. We're following their, their perspective. Um, and his first wife, as Azumu. Okay. Uh, our mom is dead. Um, so we have a stepmom who we actually have a pretty good relationship with. So we're about to see some orange text on a black background, maybe. Uh, and we don't have a really good relationship with our dad because he wears shoes like this. But maybe he's not as bad as we think. I don't know. Um, and there hasn't really been much said at all, really. George is the favored one. And honestly, we're not even bitter about it, which is kind of weird, to be honest. Like, no one seems, no one is calling out George being the golden child out. No one gives a shit. Everyone's happy that he's a golden child. Um, there's some bad things with the servants. These two. Oh, they're twins for sure. The same nose, same eyes. Absolutely twins for sure. What the fuck is this? Oh, interesting. That makes it... Maybe they're not. Maybe it's just the art style with those two. Huh. Uh, anyway, so we're, we're at the island. It took us a long time to get here, mostly because I kept talking about Jurassic Park. Um, we went, we had to go through the, the airport, there was a plane ride, and then on a car, and then on a boat, and then, and then uh, walking up the island through the fucking rose garden, and then to the guest house, and, and it's, it's been a while. Um, nothing has happened yet. And that's okay. I want to make it clear that I'm, I'm, you know, I'm bored. I'm not gonna lie about being bored, but I'm also trying to entertain chat and I'm also reading out loud a lot and it's strenuous If I was reading this on my own I would be a lot further into it by now and I might be like, you know what? I can skip through some of the so the parts This is not a, a great format for you know consuming VNs for some people for other people It's a great format because they want to hear it narrated by someone or they want to hear some introductions You know, it's like re or they're re-experiencing it again with the community So I understand that there is there is some allure um, but for other people it's it's gonna be a little dull please continue watching but like yeah it's um it's it's not going to be the most fair format for judging a story and this goes for any vn even steins gate even though i hate steins gate um and i think it deserves it <laughs> <laughs> sorry um <laughs> It, uh, it's still not a fair format, you know? Uh, you might really enjoy it on your own. Um, you might really enjoy that story in a, in a different um, medium. Like, uh, I hear the anime is a lot better than, than the VN, although a lot of people think that the, the VN is good too. Uh, but yeah, uh, we'll, we'll continue for the next uh, hour at least. And then, you know, I'll see you in uh, 2028 for uh, Umineko Wednesday on a leap day, especially in her breasts. Oh, for fucks! <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's shy harbor always been there but she did seem to develop the allure you expect of a girl her age especially in her breasts yes that kid we met earlier canon kun is her little brother He's not exactly my little brother. Still, he loves me like a big sister. Oh, whenever there are twins, you always have to know whoever came out first is technically the older one. That's a rule of twins. He didn't cause you any trouble, did he? Haha, -ha, he's the same as always. If only he were just a bit more sociable. I apologize if he caused you any trouble. Nah, he didn't cause any trouble at all. As a fellow man, I understand how moody you can get at that age. It's no surprise he's unsociable. I get called that all the time too. I get called unsociable, just like Canon. 
Ooh. Shut up, Wendy. Giggle. You aren't sociable at all, Maria. Sa oh, Maria, that's the thing. Okay. Wanted to be like him. Ooh. Um, you said the meal was was ready, right? Mm, yes. I'm sorry. Your meal has been fully prepared, so please allow me to guide you all to the mansion. Shannon bowed again formally and returned to her, her duty mode. We realized that if we made her stick around for any more like conversation, it would actually make it harder for her to do her job. We got up off our butts to avoid interfering with her work any further. So shall we go to the mansion? Everyone's probably hungry, right? Yeah, I'm really looking forward to go to Sans food. That guy was apparently a chef at this famous hotel, so he's super good at cooking. Don't you live here? Oh, was it? Who, who, who's saying this? Oh, I can't wait. Let's go, Maria. We're gonna stuff ourselves like pigs. Stuff ourselves like pigs. No, no, you can't take everything Battler Kun says seriously, okay? Because he's always just joking around. Always! Okay, let's go. Under Shannon Chan's guidance, we headed toward the mansion. Speaking of reading on stream, Homestuck Day is coming in a month and a half, and some new readers on Jazz are reviewing it positively. Oh, that's nice for them. Yeah. Are they going to move on to books afterwards? Books are pretty good. Not mine, though. Met once again by the magnificent Rose Garden, we continued onward as the intimidating mansion of the Ushi head family came into view. It had been apparently built shortly after the war, so you could feel the, the dignity of almost a half century hanging about it. The building was gorgeous on the surface, but as old as it was, equipment such as its AC and heating were apparently quite frail. How did they build things like this in remote locations? How does that happen? How much work has to go into like shipping all this stuff over? It must be it must be quite an ordeal. Like respect. Mo yeah, money, but like, like I mean like logistics, like how big are the boats? Like are, is it like big huge boats to transport over or is it like lots and lots of like ferries back and forth with the smaller boats? I guess it's about the money, but yeah. Like you ever seen shots of some like European castles that are built up in bumfuck nowhere in some forest? Like how long did that take, you know? Like holy shit. Oh, deck yeah, like a long ass time. Damn. The building was gorgeous on the surface, but as old as it was, equipment such as this AC and heating were apparently quite frail. Generally, those get built with nearby rock. No, oh uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, maybe they, they source a lot of it on site. Yeah, yeah, I'm probably thinking of it wrong. According to Jessica, midwinter was especially tough with all those with all the drafts. Haven't these people ever heard of a uh, kotatsu? I know what that is. That's one of those things that it's it's like a coffee table but lower, so you sit at it and it's like at knee height, and you can dig your feet and legs under, and it's nice and warm and toasty. I know what those are. Those look good. Ooh. As we entered the entrance hall, an aged servant greeted us. Now him, I remembered. Genji-san, who had been working here longer than anyone, filled the role of head servant. Battler-sama has been quite some time since since last we met. As our eyes met, he greeted me with a calm, composed voice. Okay, so I was wrong that only people here who are blood relatives have it. I guess it's anyone who's a part of the household and also a blood relative, so the ones that are visiting or married into the family don't have to wear this shit? Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Kind of weird that you would keep that tradition with your clothes when you're not even on the island. Maybe this is formal wear that we're... we're maybe we're wearing... Oh shit, wrong button. Maybe we're wearing this um, because we're coming here? Oh, you have two! Oh, damn. As our eyes met, he greeted me with a calm, composed voice. His bow wasn't as graceful as or refined as Goda's, but despite its simplicity, it communicated his feelings very well. Genji-san, it really has been a, been a while. You look well. Thank you. I've been quite well. And I'm glad I look it. And Battler-sama, you have become, become a splendid young man. You are beginning to resemble the master in his youth. I look like grandfather? Guess that means grandfather was pretty popular with the ladies when he was young. He he he. From here on, I shall take Shannon's place and accompany you. Please come this way. And also, yes. Shannon Shan bowed deeply and watched us leave. After that, we headed toward the dining room under Genji-san's guidance. Genji-san, just like Kumasawa-san, stood in stark contrast to us young people who had grown beyond recognition over the last six years. His appearance was exactly the same as my memories from six years ago. It was as though time had stopped since the last time we met. Genji-san was an extremely quiet and diligent person. He was basically grandfather's close aide or caregiver, and you might even call him grandfather's companion of many years. In fact, it seems he was grandfather's... he was by grandfather's side even more often than my late grandmother was. Interesting. According to Jessica, Grandfather trusted him more than any of his blood relatives. But I wonder how long he served. I never got the details, but I heard something about him being here since the very beginning, when this mansion was first constructed, which would mean that he's dedicated half of his life to serving here. It's easy to see why he's so trusted. 
As we passed through a massive hall that extended up into the second story of the mansion with no separating floor, I spotted something that hadn't existed in my memory of six years ago. A painting? What is this Final Fantasy VI intro? Yeah, painting! Called it! Called it! Alright, what's this? It was an awfully big portrait hanging right in front of the stairs that rose to the second floor. Without thinking, I stopped walking, captivated by it. Since I'd stopped so fast, Maria, who was following behind me, ran into my back. Ooh? Ah, sorry. Hey, Jessica, has that picture always been there? I pointed at the big, prominently displayed portrait in the hall. Everyone else stopped, too. Oh, right. When you last came here, that hadn't been hung yet, had it? When, it, when was it again? <clears throat> well, if my memory doesn't fail me, it was put on display sometime around the, the year before last. You are correct, sir. In April of the year before last, the master put it on display there, having previously ordered a painter to create it. Grandfather did that? So he paid to have it painted just for him, huh? The portrait suited the, this western mansion, and that woman in the elegant dress gave off a sense of refinement. I couldn't have guessed her age, but her sharp eyes and the strong will she seemed to possess made her look youthful. She seemed somehow different from the composed middle-aged woman women you often see in famous pictures. If she had normal black hair, I might have assumed it was a portrait of my long-deceased grandmother in her prime. However, she had beautiful blonde hair and didn't look Japanese at all. So, just who is this lady? Maria answered that simple question enthusiastically, as though, she, as though proud she knew the answer. Ooh, I know. She's Beatrice. Bea what? Be what's Beatrice? Beatrice? What? Beatrice. She's a witch. Didn't you ever hear stories about her long ago? A witch? You mean the witch of this island? I think I already said this, but Rock and Jima is a small island, only 10 kilometers in circumference. However, that's actually pretty massive considering that only the Ushi family lives here. <clears throat> so only the harbor and the area around the mansion were set up to be lived in. Beyond that, the island remained as untouched as when it was uninhabited. The vast and empty forest has, has absolutely no lights, phones, or people passing through. To understand how dangerous that is, you need to forget your common sense as a city dweller. After all, if you happen to fall down a hole in the depths of the forest and sprain your ankle, no one would come, to, would come save you, no matter how much you cried or screamed, like a seagull. Then, once the sun went down, the forest would be wrapped in complete darkness, since there were no streetlights. And since there were no signs, it'd be easy to get lost and confused, losing your sense of direction inside that dark forest. Nowadays, most people see a forest as a peaceful place, but to the people of bygone eras before the light of civilization drove out the night, forests were as geographically separated from civilization as the sea. They were oceans above the ground. Fisher okay, this does not sound like something fucking Battler would say. So what is this narration right now? Fishermen who go out into the ocean are putting their lives at risk despite their te technical knowledge. In the same way, hunters who go out in the forest are in danger despite having specialized knowledge of their own. If, the, if children were to go play in such a dangerous forest, something terrible might happen. Someone's parents might, must have thought so. Maybe grandmother first said it, or maybe it was grandfather himself. Or perhaps the story's been passed down on this island since ancient times. Oh yeah, by who? There's a terrible witch in the forest, so you must not go in. At some point, this ghost story of Rakanjima was born. This is the legend of Rakanjima's witch. That's why, when we talk about a witch on this island, we're referring to the master of that vast and savage forest. Come to think of it, when I stayed at this mansion as a little kid, during those eerie nights when the wind and rain pounded on the windows, I remember being terrified by a story of the forest witch who roamed around searching for human sacrifices. So, is it is it really Beatrice? He said Bea what, so I'm thinking it's Beatrice, but I want to say Beatrice. I'm saying Beatrice, fuck it. Beatrice, huh? When Eniki mentioned it, I searched my memory and was sure I recalled hearing a name like that when I was little. I see. Still, I totally forgot that the witch in that legend had an elegant name like Beatrice. So, did Grandfather go out of his way to have a portrait made just because we grandchildren didn't believe the story? She's the witch from Grand Grandfather's Delusions. Ever since he had this picture hanged, he's been hanging, having a harder and harder time telling the difference between truth and fantasy. To us, she's just a witch that exists in Grandfather's mind, but to him, she's a being that exists on this island. Exists. He says he had that painting made because the rest of us would be incapable of understanding otherwise. Hmm, the whole thing's creepy as hell. Okay, I wonder if there actually is going to be a witch, or if it really is just all delusions. That would be interesting. So far, nothing supernatural has happened. Or, if there has been, I haven't caught it. 
Hmm, okay, milady. This portrait is precious to the master. He's hooked. Weebs! Uminako Weebs! Uminako Weebs, we're winning! Oh my god. Oh my, let's go into spoiler chat. Oh my god, he's getting hooked. Oh my god. We, he might continue. It might become a weekly feature. Oh my god. This portrait is precious to the master. I beg of you, do not say such things in front of him. I know. Even if you didn't tell me, I'd never do something like that. Jessica glanced at the portrait with an irritated gaze before turning away. Let's go. We're making everyone wait into wait in the dining room. Are your glasses always fogged up or is it Oh. Okay. I like this pose better. Man, he's more of a Chad in the new ones, huh? Oh, one second. I'm having an extra tea today because of the stream. How's your idol game going? Ignore my voting badge. Oh, I checked on it in the break. You can't you can't trick me, sorry. I'm capped at 37 mech bays. Oh, I'm sorry, 39. 39 mech bays. I can't get any more than that. So that sucks. This part of the game I don't like actually. But maybe it gets faster the more you do it. Let's go. We're making everyone wait in the dining room. What game? Evolve Idol. Any tips for T4? What are you trying to do? Have you done TP4? No, I've done TP1. I haven't done TP2, 3, or 4. Uh, I've just been doing back-to-back -back T4s lately um, to ascend the planet that I'm on and just getting Harmony Crystals. I have 114 of them, so that's pretty good. I did Orbital Decay on 2-star? Two 2-star, two 3-star? Not 4-star. I did it on 2-star. It was actually really easy. I was stunned at how easy it was. I think on 4-star it would be just insanely difficult, but 2-star it was, it was really easy. Let's go. We're making everyone wait in the dining room. I'm hungry. I thought you quit. I relapsed. I didn't quit forever. Only a small portion of this island was controlled by the Ushi family. All of the lawless remainder was uh, was the domain of the witch Beatrice. You might even call her the true ruler of Rock and Jima. I felt the faint revival of that unsettling sense of misfortune, which I'd felt when I learned of the tutelary god's shrine being struck by lightning. And I remembered that Kumasawa-san tried to tell an ominous story about Rock and Jima before Jessica stopped her. I don't know what she was planning to tell us about this island. I do know one thing. I want to squeeze these boobs. Even though they're a portrait, I'm called to them. It isn't the Ushiroma family... Ushi Romia family that rules Rakanjima. It's the witch Beatrice. That's right. That's right. After all, this is the witch's island. Ooh. Battler. Ooh, you're so you're slow. When I looked around, everyone was already heading toward the dining room. I hurriedly chased after them. We walked up to the huge double doors that led to the dining room. Genji San knocked. I have brought the children. Please pardon the intrusion. The doors were opened and we were invited inside. The dining room, which looked exactly like you'd imagine a rich person's dining room to be. <laughs> Had a super long table that was obviously positioned with no purpose other than to make guests the guests conscious of their rank. <laughs> this is a really good example of, of there's a really big difference between being good at writing plot and being really good at writing prose. Enough of you, and I trust Kasaro's opinion on some things, um, enough things, let's say, that I believe that the story probably does have a good mystery, which means it's probably well plotted and it's and it has stuff going on. But when it comes to like the prose, the, the, the writing of it, like the, the paragraph construction, you know, how things are, are worded, diction, whatever, however you want to call it. I'm not being very specific, sorry. I'm doing it poorly right now, too. Um, it's really amateurish. It's not really great. Um, and that requires a fair amount of refinement, usually a lot of editing as well. Like, this this paragraph... Oh, shit, I just spilled tea all over myself. Uh, this paragraph is basically saying what? Like, the same thing three times? Two times? Could be a translation thing, too? Yeah, probably, but I think that... The length of the game probably means that it's not, but yeah, it could be. Sure. You should read Homestuck. It's a lot better in both prose and plot. Oh, Balder posted that on his alt account without changing, without checking. Oh, how embarrassing for Balder. Our parents were already sitting in accordance with that ordering. You're late, brats. Hurry up and take a seat. The old bastard pressed us to sit. The only gaps in that group of people were the spots we were supposed to sit, which only made us feel our tardiness all the more. The seat at the head of the table called the incipients, incipients chair, was for the most highly ranked 
was for the most highly ranked reserve for grandfather it was still empty he probably wanted to show up show up for uh show up last for dramatic effect like the scene earlier in in um when eva was needling nats nats through the servants um i thought that was actually quite well written um there was there was stuff going on there that wasn't immediately obvious uh the way that the characters were talking and the, and the pointed questions like you could you could get a sense that something else was going on you know um it was direct it wasn't wasting time it wasn't overly flowery either it was it was that was a good scene i really liked that scene um but then it gets into this mode where it feels like I find this a lot. I, I, this is going to sound so pretentious, and I'm sorry. I, I don't think I'm an amazing writer. I think I'm a pretty good writer, actually. Um, I, I have a, a pretty confident um, appraisal of my own writing. I don't think I'm fantastic. Um, the work I've already put out there, I wrote a long time ago, and it, and, and for what it is, I'm happy with it. Like, it's meant to be genre fiction. It's meant to be... Um, I wrote it very quickly. I'm happy with it. Um, so, like, who the fuck am I? But at the same time, I've read a lot, and I mean a lot of amateur fiction, because that's one of my biggest hobbies I used to have, was, was uh, reading a lot of um, uh, unpublished work uh, that people would post on message boards and writing groups, uh, DeviantArt, that sort of thing. Um, and I think a lot of writers don't have the confidence to just skip over the parts that they just really don't need to fill with text. It's kind of like me with streaming, although it works so well that I feel like I should always be talking and that leads me to say some bullshit sometimes, but um, with a live format, it actually works well here. A lot of writers don't have the confidence to be like, you know what, I can just say a sentence here instead of three paragraphs and that's it, I'm done, I can move on. Or I could just skip over this completely. Um, and then you'll have these like, flashes in between where they get it they understand what they're doing they have a lot of confidence they have a really good idea of what a scene should be and they write it beautifully and beautiful beautiful writing doesn't mean like you're using some big word or like you have some great metaphor or whatever sometimes like we just saw with that scene it can just be showing a character needling another character through conversation interaction and and like um and showing them up without having to spell it out you know um so this kind of like bridging scenes with just relentless description and just being like, I need to fill this space. I need to fill this space. I need something to happen here is showing that there's a lack of confidence in those parts, I guess. Um, although it can be, if you would look at a writing structure, sometimes, uh, sorry, this uh, uh, narrative structure, sometimes you want a scene to breathe. You want like, okay, I want this big plot point here to happen in this box. And in the next box, I want there to be like a, a lighter scene that will give the other time you to think on the other one. And before we get into another heavy plot point. And what happens with a lot of anime games that we, that we go have on stream is that it's really annoying that that lighter box ends up being some stupid perverted bullshit that ends up taking up way much more time than than it should probably because the writer was like he he i think this is funny and i'm gonna expand it you know um and that can be kind of annoying but anyway i'm sorry i'm rambling at this point um i i think that so far the writing has been pretty pretty bad in terms of prose construction in terms of the story construction and what's going on with the mystery and everything i think it's not that bad I, i'm i'm interested i want to see where it goes um they're setting some stuff up and i can pick i can pick up what it's putting down and that scene when with, with the dinner scene was the first time i'm like oh actually this is pretty interesting and the witch stuff is interesting as well but i i like i like witches and something else that sounds like witches um anyway sorry let's continue it was he wants to show up for dramatic effect yeah from the perspective of someone facing the incipient's chair head-on, the seating order went from left to right, with the lower-ranking seats progressing in rows of two further away from it. So the left-hand side of the, uh, of the first row, closest to the incipient's chair, was where Uncle Cross should have sat since he was the second highest in rank. It looked like he hadn't yet arrived, so that seat was empty. Ax across from his chair on the right side of the first row sat the eldest daughter of the family, Aunt Eva, who was the third highest in rank. Okay, so again, we're kind of this is an example of something that's kind of bad, whereas this would be a pretty good scene actually if this is where we were first introduced to these characters or it was the second scene with this character, but we've already established like the pecking order of these characters, we know more about them, and now we're just kind of repeating that again. I don't know why. Um, just more formally, more in depth, I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah, maybe it's going somewhere. We'll see. Left-hand side of the second row was the fourth highest in rank. There sat my damn dad, Rudolph, the third of the siblings. Across from him on the right side of the second row sat Aunt Rosa, the youngest sibling. At this point, you might expect their husbands and wives to come next. But nope, the left-hand seat in the third row, ranked number six, belonged to Jessica. Opposite her was George. I sat next to Jessica, and Maria sat across from me. And then finally, next to me on the left-hand side of the fifth row, sent Aunt, Aunt Nats, the 10th highest in rank. Really? She's 10th? Okay, see, now this is an interesting tidbit. I like this part. So I guess my criticism will change now from this, this scene and showing the packing order is fine. It's just maybe we should have skipped over an earlier scene or an earlier scene should have been a little more brisk. 
Because if you're doing this here, and this seems to be important, it's giving us new information, maybe we shouldn't have had a part earlier needs to be removed, you know? And that's something that you can do in editing a lot, where you're like, okay, let's let's move it along. Um, there's a, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm talking too much, let's keep going. We, the, we, Umineko Wednesday on a leap day is precious time, I can't ramble. Opposite her was Uncle Hideyoshi. Next to Aunt Nat in the sixth row, in the final seat of the left-hand side, sat Kairi-san. The seat opposite Kairi-san was empty, even though silverware had been there and everything. Oh, because Nats was married into the family. Okay, that's why. According to this ranking system, Nats box. So even though she lives here, so she's not blood-related. So, you know... On the table, according to this ranking system, that spot was where Aunt Rose's husband should be sitting. Even though she wasn't supposed to be coming, her place was made up. Normal rank, normally ranking systems of the sort give spouses equal positions as their partners, but the Ushi family's system was unique. Maybe it's a remnant of uh, male chauvinism. If you start with the assumption that a woman's womb is just something to be borrowed, then the children of direct descendants w descendant would come first, directly followed by the grandchildren. In other words, spouses have no blood ties and are therefore placed at the end of the line. It's terrible, but by the system, my grandmother would be ranked even lower than me if she were still alive. In their youth, they obey their father after they get married, their husband after aging, their children. There's, there's the old saying, women have no home in any realm. Long ago, when I was still incapable of figuring all this out, I'd thought it was so great that we could all chat in little groups, adult siblings with adult siblings, and cousins with cousins. However, now that I can re-examine the seating order after growing up a bit, it stirs up some very complicated feelings in me. This is actually pretty good. Aunt Nats, who was married to the eldest son and was the de facto number two in managing this family, sat to my right, which meant that she was two steps lower than me in the ranking order. It was hard to imagine that might be going on inside her heart. That's why I made a small apologetic gesture towards her before sitting down. I nice to see you, Battler Kun. You've grown quite tall, haven't you? Oh, uh, yep. Six long years of eating well, sampling various cuisines, and, and dri deriving sustenance from Mother Earth's bountiful gifts. Hard work, but I pulled through. Growing just like a boy, I see. How tall are you now? Guess about 180 centimeters. But Aunt Nats, that's where you're supposed to say, heck, sounds like all you did was eat. Huh? Oh, giggle. I'm sorry. After a short pause, she did laugh with me, but it seemed like she couldn't quite figure out what she was supposed to be laughing at. Oh, it's like uh, me and chat. This, this woman is Aunt Nats. She's the wife of the eldest son of the family, meaning she's my father's old, older brother's wife. <sighs> Fucking hell. Is it simpler to just call her Jessica's mother? Yes! Yep, it feels bad to say, this, say it like this, but while I didn't exactly dislike her, I didn't particularly like her either. Neutral. She hardly ever spoke with us kids, and all my memories of her involve her taking talking to the adults about complicated things with a scary look on her face. In fact, in fact, since we hardly ever exchange words, I spent a long time trying to figure out how I should approach her, though my efforts seemed to have ended in failure. The silverware sat neatly on the table, but the meal itself hadn't been brought in yet. As a general rule, you couldn't start a meal until the person sitting at the head of the table arrived. So as long as grandfather didn't come, lunch would be put on hold indefinitely. Not even the appetizers would arrive. Simply put, the silence in this room was caused by our parents enduring their hunger while they waited for grandfather to arrive. However, the grandfather from my memories would always show up on time to meals like this. He was the kind of person who would never be so late that it kept everyone waiting, especially after the entire group had arrived. Grandfather's pretty late. As far as I can remember, he was always strict about time. Well, that might have been true six years ago, but it hasn't been that way lately. In fact, he's off in his own little world, so often he doesn't even show up at the family meals. So what, you just don't eat? Still, I figured he'd be at least come down today. Then again, I feel a lot more relaxed and happy without him. Jessica. When her mother scolded her, Jessica stuck her tongue out and looked away. No way around it. How does this look? Is there actually... Ooh... Might as well wait until our host arrives. When I glanced at the clock, I saw there was almost, uh, 12.20. Ushiro Mia Kinzo, the aged family head of the Ushiro Mia head family. <laughs> I am Arthur, said Arthur. Oh my god. What a line. Oh, I hit the microphone. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> this man could be seen in his study. The clock had already passed noon, but he didn't even attempt to rise from his seat. With his spectacles on... Nope. 
He built up a growing pile of books with elaborate bindings, which he then read intently. You couldn't really say that he was having too much fun to stop. Rather, he filled the room with a sense of impatience, or perhaps a sense of impending danger, as though every second wasted was a tragedy. In this sealed room, a dense dust danced through the air, which was thick with the stench of chemicals that exuded a mix of suspicious odors. Those odors were somehow sweet and heavy. Mom's spaghetti. If anyone with a normal nose came in- A NORMAL NOSE! NORMAL NOSE! Just normal nose came in here, the first thing they would do would be to open a window and ventilate this room. The knocking against the study door had been going on for a while, a voice calling father sometimes mingled with the knocks. As Kinzo he heaved a deep sigh, he snapped shut the old book in his hands and slammed it on the table. Then he yelled at Cross, who was still knocking on the door. Silence. Enough with that racket, you fool. Who told you the door would be opened if you but knocked? I'll crucify the imbecile. Do you wish to suffer the same fate? Uh-oh, father. This is the day of the family conference, which happens only once a year, is it not? Everyone's gathered down below. Please come out. Cross called out to his father through the door. Kinzo always shut himself- Kinzo and Cross? What's our dad's name? Kinzo, Cross... Uh, fuck. Um... Rudolph! Okay, not another K. Entered the room. Oh, wait, hold on. It's Rudolph and Rosa. Right? Rudolph and Rosa. Eva. Hmm, okay. For that reason, Cross had no choice but to call to him from the corridor like this. Molest me not. <laughs> Just who is this everyone of which you speak? Do you mean the fools trying to drag me out of here? Then kill them all. Tear them apart, use their bodies for firewood, and feed them into the witch's hearth. Put a pot on in that hearth to boil the wormwood. Force the imbeciles who, to dare try to lure me out of here to drink the broth of the apocalypse. I will soak their dregs in liquor. Ah, uh, where is Genji? Call for Genji. Have my demonic absinthe prepared. All right, Hamlet, calm the fuck down. All right. The whispering of the green fairy reaches me no longer. Ah, uh, where is Genji? Bring him here. A horse, a horse, my kingdom for a horse. On the other side of the door, Cross, Nanjo, and Genji kept waiting for the master of the house, who stubbornly refused to come out. Humph. Who the fuck are you? Oh, you're Cross. It looks like he hates me to the core. All right, let's see what you really look like. Oh. Well, well. Humph, looks like he hates me to the core. My voice doesn't reach him anymore. Nevermore? Cross shrugged as though to say, It's no use, and smiled bitterly. It can't be helped. From the beginning, he hadn't really expected his father to respond to his calls. However, since it was the duty of the eldest son, he had tried as a formality. Oh, he's back! Kinzo-san! Your sons, daughters, and grandchildren have come to see you, have they not? Could you just let them see your face, if only for a short while? Shut up, be silent. You dare admonish me, Nanjo? I never told anyone to get you, I told them to get Genji. Now call for him immediately. Time is short and the apostles are already readying their trumpets. So why can't you foolishly sh you can't why can't you foolish sheep understand? Foolishly foolish. Kinzo slammed an old heavy book against the table over and over. That racket clearly expresses great displeasure. Kinzo put his spectacles down and flew up from his chair. He spread his arms wide open as if to sing into a packed opera house, as if appealing to someone and yelled. Why? Why is there always something in my way? I would throw it all away, I would offer up everything, and there's only one thing I ask in repayment. Oh, Beatrice. Oh, he's crying! Oh, damn. Alright, but this looks kind of like more of like a sad, like, crazy cry, and this looks like I'm fucking furious and unhinged. Oh, Beatrice, if I could see your smile but one more time, I would plunder your, the smiles of the earth and offer them all up to you. Oh, commanders of the legions of locusts, reap the smiles of the earth. Cough, 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 cough. Uh, everything is filthy. Everything is irksome. Why must I suffer this impediment on this most precious of days? Cough, 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 cough. Cough, cough. Call for Genji. Cough, cough, cough. Heh. <laughs> I have no idea what he's yelling about. He's probably lost his mind by now. cross -san. Isn't it a bit harsh to say such a thing of your own father? I mean, it's true. My father's already dead. There's nothing here but a phantom of what, what father once was. At any rate, as long as he has no intention of coming out, there's nothing we can do. Kinzo-san. Choking coughs continue to pour from the study. I'm going back downstairs. It would be a waste to let the fruits of Goda's prized cooking talent get any colder. It's one of the few things our relatives can look forward to when they come to this house. Humph. Cold. Unlike the food, Cross spun around. He looked at his watch, mumbling and acting as though he wasted time. He had wasted his time doing something he knew would be in vain. Genji-san, father is calling for you. Keep him company. Certainly. Doctor Nanjo. Nanjo, let's go eat. If we stay here any longer, this sweet stench will ruin our sense of taste. Without waiting for Nanjo, Cross went downstairs. Genji earned Nanjo to go and eat. 
Nigel glanced between the study door and crossed his back as the ladder disappeared down the stairs and let out a deep sigh. Sorry, Genji-san, but please allow me to leave this in your hands. Yes, please leave it to me. Do what you can to avoid giving him alcohol. That's a habit that's far too difficult to break. Is Genji not here yet? Who dares keep Genji from coming? Uh, where's Genji? Call for Genji! Please, allow me to handle the situation here. Very well. Forgive me. Nanjo bowed slightly and descended the stairs. Genji watched him leave, then knocked on the study door. Master, it is Genji, said Genji. Genji? Why have you kept me waiting for so long? You're alone, I trust? Correct. I am alone. Kinzo returned to his seat in the study and pressed an old-fashioned switch on the table. After a small delay, the heavy sound of the door unlocking could be heard. Oh, that's, uh... Hardcore? What? Kinzo was convinced that his family wanted to make a mess of, this, of his study. Or perhaps someone had once opened the window for some air and ended up scattering things that, to him, were important research materials, leaving him in a terrible mood. Is that the only way to unlock the door? Because uh, Agatha Christie is getting excited. Kinzo had outfitted his room with a formidable lock, preventing anyone from entering without his permission, and thereby sealing himself in jail of his own make- Oh yeah, for sure! Yep, okay! Genji, whom he trusted the most, was relatively free to enter the room, but even that didn't always hold. If Kinzo was in a bad mood, even Genji wouldn't be able to answer. Anyone else would be limited to holding a conversation through the door, unable to even to see Kinzo's face. And most of the time, what they what they got could hardly be called a conversation. However, this didn't trouble the rest of the family much. After all, it just wasn't worth the effort to disturb this aging family head, who was impossible to please and always stayed shut away, immersed in his research. <sighs> Taking advantage of his refusal to leave his room, they supported his isolation, putting his care entirely into the hands of the servants. Genji, my usual. I'm busy. Yes, sir. Genji headed to the counter in the study. Corner in the story, so, sorry. There, suspicious looking bottles boasting venomous colors were on display. They were actually liquor, but considering the shady atmosphere of this room, one might easily suspect them of being some ghastly poison. The poison for Cusco. Inside the study, the mysterious collection of books gathered by Kinzo had grown into a mountain. They were bizarre, ancient, or banned books, all of them either forbidden, cursed, or sealed. What? What do you mean, cursed? If you tried to call them old books, Kinzo would fly into a rage and say, Call them grimoires. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a book. It's a grimoire. It's not an anime. It's a hentai. There were also many mysterious objects that presumably held some meaning with regards to black magic, like candles suspiciously melted and molded into strange shapes. Damn. The occult. The constellations drawn on, certain on a certain celestial globe contained quite a few shapes that would draw puzzled looks from anyone familiar with today's night sky. The carelessly strewn about books contained many illustrations, all of them of all of them of a religious or mysterious nature, including some depicting demonically grotesque subjects or bizarre diagrams of various magic circles. And above all, a sweet poisonous smell filled the room, profoundly assaulting the eyes and noses of those who entered for the first time, providing, of course, that they had normal eyes or a normal nose. Eventually, it must surely make a person go numb and lose their grip on reality. Inside that study, Genji prepared Kinzo's usual drink with a well-trained hand. No one would even think of drinking such an ominous dark green liquid in that complex or an ornate glass unless someone first told them it was alcohol. He poured a little into, a, into the glass. Then he placed a cube of sugar in a strangely shaped spoon and poured water from a pitcher over it. Strangely, when the transparent water was poured, the dark green liquid turned to a, turned a cloudy white. It was a strange optical illusion, as though the water had caused a chemical reaction and made the drink become even more unrecognizable as liquor. Then Genji added original flavors Kinzo loved, fine-tuning its taste. <laughs> there was no recipe. Its success was measured only by Kinzo's mood swings when he drank it, and it had taken Genji many decades to learn how to do it right. So, a recipe. Genji placed the glass on a tray and walked over to Kinzo. By this time, Kinzo was gazing out the window. Here, master. Thank you. Kinzo had regained his composure and was now unrecognizable as a shouting, screaming, yelling man from a few moments ago. Looking at this man from behind as he tilted his glass and gazed down at the scenery beyond the window, he projected a sense of dignity and intelligence. To allow Kinzo to set his glass down at any time, Genji motionless, motionlessly waited behind Kinzo and to his left as though he were, he were a living sideboard. Like, half of this is just actually unnecessary crap. And the other half is, is decent to good, actually. It's, it's hard to judge, though, because the other half is just, what are we doing? <sighs> it's strange that it's like half and half. You know, half, well, maybe it's more than half. I don't know. It's like Lord of the Rings. Oh, don't say that. Don't say that. 
Then, without averting his eyes from the window, Kinzo held out his glass. There was only a mouthful remaining. It was not a gesture intended to set, to set it upon the tray, but a motion to hand the glass over to Genji. Drink, my friend. Uh oh Your words are too kind for me. No need for ceremony between us. Drink, my friend. And they were roommates, thank you. Genji respectfully received the glass and inclined it a, inclined it a little to taste its contents. After that, he gulped it down. I attempted to imitate your concoction, but no matter how I try, I cannot replicate the taste. The way you make it is pure relish. Thank you very much. It is the fruit of your guidance, master. Humph. Kinza smiled at his loyal subject, who refused to put aside rank even when asked to. However, he was not making fun of him. His smile was relaxed, as though chuckling at a close friend's old and shakable habit. We have grown old together. I stopped counting the years long ago. It is entirely thanks to you, master, that I have been able to live like this until today. Kinzo gave a faint smile, as if to say he didn't need any flattery. Up in until now, you have served me exceedingly well. My sons called me its ec eccentric. The servants that were once many have all quit in fear of me. Only you serve me even now. Your words are more than I deserve. My life will not last much longer. My sons are vultured, vultures, lazily waiting for my inheritance to fall into their hands. Cross is a fool who squanders money like water, who throws away two gold coins to obtain one, and then he has the gall to claim that he's earned money. Eva is a slave to money who thinks of me as a mere chicken. Chicken. When I die, she plans to use my bones to make a bra- Oh, okay. Alright, makes sense. Alright. That dunce Rudolph just wants to fool around with women. Rosa bore the baby of a man who came from nowhere and about whom he we know nothing. Jessica is incompetent. He's not even here! Jessica is incompetent- Oh, wait. Hold on. Is he here? No, is he here? Is he- is he, um... Who? No, he's not here. It's Eva that's married to, um, the uncle whose name I can never remember. Jessica's incompetent and uneducated. George has none of what, what it takes to be a man. Battler is a fool who threw away the honor of the Ushiro Mia family. And Maria is obscene to the eye. What? Why is the Ushiro... Ushi blood so incompetent? I mean, it's your, it's your blood, bud. Is there no one worthy to inherit the glory I built? Ah, uh, of course I know. This is part of Beatrice's curse. I know it. Ha, you golden witch. Are you trying to take revenge against me in this way? If you want to hate me, then do so. If you want to run away, then run. I won't let you go. 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 You belong to me. You must always be in my arms for all my life. You must stay in my birdcage for all eternity, whispering only to me, Beatrice. Why won't you smile back at me? Oh, oh, Beatrice. Oh! After howling, Kinzo choked once again. Genji set the tray and glass down and rubbed his master's back. Genji's facial exp expression did not change. It was always like this, because we didn't have a different sprite. Cough. Ugh. Thank you, my friend. When his seemingly deranged fit subsided, Kinzo regained his composure once again. It was like seeing two different people, a wild Kinzo and a composed Kinzo, living together inside one body. I know, yeah, we just saw it. Oh, Elden Ring. And so, I have decided... I cannot bear to spend my dimmed remaining years procrastinating like this. If I have one final coin to bet, then I choose to abandon it on the whims of the demon's roulette. The power of magic is always determined by the risk of the gamble, like visiting a shrine at the hour of the ox in ancient Japanese sorcery to nail a curse doll to a tree. Magical power is pr pr produced specifically because of the risk that, would have, that will be seen within the seven days the curse takes. The greater the risk, the stronger the magic power will be. Many miracles that happen in myth might be called the crystallization of shocking magic power with a low probability of occurrence and an astronomical risk. That Moses parted the waters of the sea was not a miracle of God. The risk of that desperate situation cor- Wait, what? The risk of the de desperation, desperate situation cornered by soldiers on the Red Sea shores weighed upon the scales of slaughter and gave birth to that miraculous magic power. If the same thing occurred again on the same scale, the sea would surely fail to part. After all, Moses was able to magnificently summon a miracle engraved on but one of the on the countless innumerable results on the roulette of those with power. This is the force that can triumph over astronomical odds. Indeed, good fortune that can grasp miracles is magical power itself. To obtain this mighty power, one must face the risk of despair. Despair. Those who gain some big dang Europa vibes, chat. Those who possess no magical power may call that desperation rather than a bet. However, people who truly do possess magic power can grasp hold of that miracle and make the enigma come into being. And if that power exists within me, I'll seize that miracle. I'll have a chance at making the wish I devoted my life towards come true. 
Kinzo looked up to the sky outside the window. He spread his arms as if appealing to someone up in the sky. As the sky is blue, and so am I. If only, if only I were capable of grasping that miracle. Oh, Beatrice, Beatrice, show me your lovely smile once more. No matter how much time passes, your face does not vanish. I just want to see your smile, that is all. I'll return everything you granted me. I'll return all the glory I've gained since that day. I don't need fortune, prestige, or gold. I'll return everything you gave me. I just want to see your smile. I beg you, Beatrice. Oh... His nonsensical yells became a scream and then a wail. Kinzo slumped to the floor, tearing at it with both hands. Genji had no choice but to wordlessly watch over his master's lamentations. Well, ladies and gentlemen, incorrect Dangarampa is good. Is it though? Well, ladies and gentlemen, the family's... The family head's health is not at its best. He seemed extremely sad not to be able to share lunch with you all, now that you've all gathered for this event that occurs but once a year. Goda, let the lunch begin. Certainly, I shall begin today's luncheon. Exciting luncheon! Alright, here we go! Dr. Nanjo, is father's condition really that bad? I thought we couldn't eat if you didn't show up! Couldn't he have at least see us in- uh, let us see, see his face? This is the T-Rex going stealth mode all over again! It's more a problem of mood than a physical condition. And for that, there is no medicine I can prescribe. I mean, there is. Most of it's illegal. Hey, are we talking about his mood again? You gotta be kidding me. We took time out of our schedules during this damn busy autumn season just to come and find out how he's doing. And now he's... Humph, then you should be happy, Rudolph. You now know how he's doing. Or or what? Would you rather take my father and try to persuade our ill-humored fa- Sorry, try to take my place! See, I fucking moved that up there in that line. Taking my place to try and persuade our ill-humored father to come join us. Are you kidding? Rudolph shrugged. Apparently, though, Rudolph was willing to be indignant at how self-centered his father was. He wasn't particularly disappointed to be spared a face-to-face -face meeting. I didn't read that very well. Maybe we're, we're coming to the end. Apparently, though Rudolph was willing to be indignant about how self-centered his father was, he wasn't particularly disappointed to be spared a face-to-face -face meeting. There you go. That's how it should be. Wrong inflection. Does it seem like his mood will improve before dinner across Nissan? I have no idea. If he wants to know that, you should ask him directly, although I think his mood will improve faster if we don't bother him. <laughs> Genji sounds the only one who can get grandfather out of a funk. It's pretty pathetic though, making the servants deal with your own parents' bad mood. How far are we are, are away from me are from the Kakali? I want to see the Kakali. Jessica, don't speak out of turn. She planned for her complaint to be heard only by her cousins, but it had reached even Cross's ears. Scolded, Jessica scowled and turned away sulking. A full chapter? Oh man, that's like a couple leap years! Holy shit! If he's as cranky as they make him sound, he can't be that terribly sick, right? I mean, they're saying he's in a bad mood, not that he's got no energy, which at least proves he's got his wits about him. It's because Grandfather has especially strong willpower. However, that doesn't necessarily mean his body will be able to keep up. Since last year, they keep saying he has three months left. Alright, so, so he's like Lily's dog. Just keeps on inexplicably living. Since last year, they kept saying he has three months left. If the initial diagnosis was correct, Grandfather has been prolonging his life by willpower alone. It's right for us to worry about him. Thank you, George. Lunch started with the family head's seat still empty. The man who should be sitting there had already grown old, and the brilliant glory which he had rebuilt the Yashiro family within the span of a single lifetime was being forgotten. Even though they were beginning the meal with that seat still empty, no one felt it was that odd anymore. Oh, sh- Alright. It's 1.30 now. Ushi Family Conference was held once every year on the first weekend of October. Yeah, we know. If a normal family were to hold a so-called family conference, you'd expect to be nothing more than a reunion of rarely seen relatives who greet each other around buckets of sushi or something. Buckets, you say? However, part of the family's great fortune had been lent out to the grandfather's children, and no one in this family was considered an adult until they had met with success in business, so this meeting literally was a conference. Uh, what? How much of the fortune was invested? What sort of business was conducted? How much profit was earned? As a result, how much of the fortune borrowed from the main family could be repaid? Or possibly, how much more would be borrowed from for future business ventures? What lessons had they learned, and what could they learn from their mistakes? It seems that topics like these were discussed very seriously in the past. My dad said it was it was likely sorry it was like lying on a bed of nails. Apparently, it used to be a very serious family meeting where people were bathed in scornful and angry voices, and some people even got slapped despite their age with a wooden sword. However, that had become a thing of the past. 
Now, with everyone pursuing their own business ventures and achieving success, it was becoming more of a normal yearly get-together. Even so, telling grandfather about recent events was extremely stressful, so while it was nothing more than a simple get-together for us grandchildren, it was still a real stomach ache for our parents. The absence of the man who was the source of all this trouble, regardless of the reason, probably made today's lunch taste more, much more delicious. The phrase, while the demon is not around, everyone can relax, comes to mind. Never heard it once before in my life. Anyway, let's introduce Jessica's father, whose face I haven't seen for six years. The man sitting to my father's left is the older brother and Jessica, is his older brother and Jessica's father, uncle whatever. This name is, sh is sure is easy to read, Kraus. Now that we've gotten used to this string of weird names, our perspective is totally skewed, so Kraus doesn't actually seem that bad. It even starts to sound kind of cool. Does it? Just like with Aunt Nats, I don't didn't have many memories of speaking with Uncle Kraus. He had never been one to chat to children, and I felt like he was always talking with the adults, just like Aunt Nats. According to my father's gossip, he was a spiteful and violent man. If what he said is true, Uncle Kraus used to be very domineering from his position as the oldest sibling, and was despised by all the other siblings. Such a different vibe. Can't believe how different it is. Though despite that, those siblings all seem to be chatting happily together. Oh well, even if even if their relationship was bad when they were children, sometimes when people grow up and live apart from each other, their relationship relationships change. That's probably what this was. After all, they all had children of about the same age. By sharing the same family environment, they probably profited by exchanging opinions. Maybe because of that, a short while ago, the circle of parents began to dis the circle of parents began to discuss the exams Jessica and I would be taking. Jessica, in order to escape questions about exams from my father on her left, purposefully faced faced right while firing off a rapid series of comments, not giving him any chance to get awarded. Okay, is there like tutors on the island? Does Jessica? Okay, am I wrong? I thought Jessica lived on the island. D doesn't Nats and Kraus live on the island, or do they not? Did they just arrive before everyone else? The lodge of parents. <laughs> She lives there, but she boats to school. Oh my god, every day? Or does she only go to school part-time and she just does more when she's there? Maybe if she's um, if she's not a, a, a wimp about the boat rocking, maybe it's only a short boat trip. It's like taking a car to school, maybe. Moving on, let's look at the, uh, at the end opposite from Kraus and the others. In the very last seat of the table, an old gentleman with a sturdy physique is sat facing uh, Kiri-san. This was my first time meeting him sturdy. I'd only just been introduced to him, but it seems he's grandfather's personal doctor, a man called Nanjo. I heard he used to own a huge clinic on a nearby on the nearby island of Najima, but he turned it over to his son and began living a life of leisure in his old age. He had known grandfather since the very beginning, when the mansion was first constructed on this island, and they built up a relationship over several decades. I thought at first that the, the two of them might have gotten to know each other through grandfather's suspicious hobbies, but it seems he was actually grandfather's chess partner. I see. That kind of hobby seems very like our grandfather with his love of all things Western. Nanjo is probably the only person who could re what? Who could enter Rakanjima despite being neither a family member nor a servant. He looked like a calm old gentleman as he listened to the discussion between Kairi and the other women who sat near to him. Considering how long he stayed by the side of our short-tempered grandfather, his generous heart was probably nothing to laugh at. I have a feeling there's going to be parts where you'll you'll get pretty angry. Oh, we've, we've already had a couple. They haven't been plot related though. They've been pervy weeb related. Still, even if he was a family doctor, having anyone outside the Ushi family attend the family conference was a little odd. It made me think that grandfather's condition might have worsened so much it'd be a major topic of discussion at today's conference. After all, George said something, something like that just a second ago. Something about how we've been getting continuous reports since around last year that grandfather didn't have long to live. It's nasty to think about it, but consider how rich grandfather is. At the time of his death, his wealth will suddenly be released, probably along with a fair share of our parents' stomach acid, and it'll lead to ulcers for everyone. After all oh so they're saying i i was sorry i misunderstood so they're gonna fight over his money okay after all this sort of wealth this sort of thing gets just gets messier when there's more wealth to be divided there's a good chance they'll be taking talking about stuff like that at the family conference still it's not like it's got anything to do with us kids or does it finally even though he hasn't shown up let me introduce our grandfather the person who should be sitting in the incipient's chair is ushi kinzo it really sucks Everyone else in the family has these weird names, but he's got this perfectly normal one himself. Weirdest name out of all of you, bud. Oh, wait, no, your name is literally Battler. My bad. You're, you have the weirdest name. If only his name was, was were written Kinzo, but he let us call him Goldsmith or something, I'd totally freak out. 
As you can probably guess by now, he's a frightening person with an extremely short temper. Yeah, we saw it. We don't need this. I'm one of his grandchildren. Yeah, we know. Not a son, and I haven't seen him since elementary school. Thanks to that, I have no memory of being beaten myself, but our parents were apparently raised with an iron fist. It's fucked up. That earlier conversation between my dad and Uncle Kraus about who should go convince Grandfather to come down seems pretty darn funny once you know their background. You can't really tell Grandfather's story without covering that pivotal event back before the Showa era. <laughs> 1926 1989 all right <laughs> of course not until the the meiji 1868 1912 and taisho 1912 1926 eras the yushi romia family were was great and prosperous they owned several spinning mills, making them rich uh, enough to just double over laughing every day as the money kept rolling in incidentally Grandfather was a member of a branch of, uh, of a branch family and had pretty much nothing to do with the main family. Not only was he, he way down the list of people who can inherit the headship, he streamed it, but he had hardly any contact with the glamorous main family. However, during the Great Can Kanto Earthquake in the year Taisho 12, 1923, the mansion owned by the Yush Yushi family in Odawara was flattened. The spinning mills in Tokyo were all burned down in a huge fire, and the Ushi family lost most of its wealth and family members in an instant. So once they started trying to figure out who the successors to the Ushi family should be, they apparently found no one remaining except Kinzo in his branch family. In Kinzo's later reminiscence, okay, so this is this is another another instance that they're pointing out of like um, pecking order in the family and who's who's the most important, kind of like a presidential line. So this was important in in his history. It was also important at the table. Hmm. Okay. Um. In Kinzo's later reminiscences, reminiscences, I can't say that properly, he referred to this as good fortune so great that it overturned fate. I'm a poet and I don't know it. With that, grandfather's boring everyday life did a 180 and walked away. He was entrusted with reviving the dying Ushi family, which had lost nearly all of its wealth. However, just because he had been entrusted with this task, this task didn't mean he could accomplish it. Apparently, those around him weren't really expecting much. However, this is when Grandfather began displaying his extraordinarily, extraordinary talent and good luck. Grandfather used all of the family's remaining wealth, as well as everything from the hair on his head to his toenails, as collateral in order to borrow a massive amount of money. Once he built up a gigantic war chest, he immediately invested in businesses. It was like someone tumbling down a hill on a bike without any brakes, and then jumping in onto a neighboring bike and then another one, just like some crazy street performance. I'll bet everyone thought Grandfather had no business ability whatsoever, but he kept jumping on bikes. However, after several miracles and turns of good luck, with coincidences piling up and every chance taken, taken advantage of, he was suddenly in control of powerful connections with the occupying forces. At that time, MacArthur and the GHQ were the ultimate authority in Japan. Grandfather, in a twinkle of an eye, began succeeding in business under the protection of the occupying forces, quickly becoming very rich. By this point, it's probably safe to say that information, not luck, saved the day. He must have made some seriously deep connections with the occupying forces. Grandfather knew beforehand about emergency demands that would be made f that would be made for the Korean War. No, it was more than that. He must have predicted those emergency demands from the very beginning when he started investing his money. The history books make it sound like all of Japan made a large profit off of the emergency demands during the Korean War, but that isn't actually true. On a very li limited number of uh, only a very limited number of the super rich played played the money game and made an easy profit. Most of the citizens remained poor. In other words, grandfather was a member of this extremely lucky group of winners. I'm pretty sure all this happened during the year Showa 25, 1950 or so. The Great Kanto Earthquake happened in Taisho 13, 1924 or so. That means grandfather was able to revive the near-dead Ushi family in about 20 years to a level even higher than it had ever been before. Damn. With that, you think he'd revive the main family in Odawara, but for some reason, he went and did something as crazy as buying an entire small island in the Aizu Archipelago. Who doesn't want their own private island? I challenge anyone. If you had the money to live comfortably on your own private island, and you have to deal with anyone's bullshit, and you can get food there or anything, who doesn't want their own private island? Like, come on. Buying an entire island is not something you can do or you can ordinarily do today. However, grandfather was clever. He contacted G GHQ and applied for the, re the establishment of a marine resource base. He acquired this island as a business opportunity, then tossed that project aside and claimed it as his own pl plot of land. Yeah, that's probably not legal. Whatever. Money gets through it. After the war, there were there were prevention measures against food shortages, and having the sponsorship of the GHQ meant that nobody could oppose him. From what I've heard, Tokyo Metropolis of that day offered this land to, hit, to him practically for free. Later, Tokyo made difficulties by telling Kinzo to return the land, but the pushy GHQ intervened. Anyway, it seems under the table bribes did their work well. In the end, the city gave up in frustration. They just really wanted that island. Holy shit. 
We, we want it. It's full of forest. We want it. Grandfather, with considerable skill and good luck, managed to weather the stormy seas of that period, obtaining a vast fortune and his own island. Of course, it probably wasn't all luck. He was obsessed with all things Western, which helped him cultivate his English skills. He was able to use this to his advantage and sink his teeth into the GHQ. I'm not really following this. It's kind of interesting, but I'm not really... I, I, is it just because it's vague? I'm not... I don't know. Um, okay. A mansion was built on the island soon after. This mansion, in fact. Grandfather, with his love of the Western style, made this once uninhabited island a canvas upon which he could realize his dreams to his heart's content. He now had the Western mansion of his dreams, overflowing with emotion and atmosphere, and a beautiful garden featuring all sorts of roses. And he had a private beach where, where nobody other than himself would ever be per permitted to leave a footprint. This would be a dream come true for any boy. Exactly. After that, he made good use of his, of, of his huge fortune, becoming a large stockholder in the extremely stable iron and steel industry, and was able to live an easy and comfortable life just using the dividends. Well, he's just that incredible. This kind of person usually has the ability to foresee and predict the future, or at least that is how they're portrayed after the fact. But Grandfather denies all of that, repeatedly saying that he was simply blessed with extraordinary luck. Anyway, even a lord like that can't help but grow increasingly eccentric when locked up alone on an island where all his dreams are made real. Everyone knows that he's had, a, he's had a western obsession from the start. Yeah, you keep saying it, but none of our parents really know when his bizarre black magic hobby began. Did his love of black magic begin way back when he became fascinated with everything western? Okay, so my read on this is that he made a deal with the witch, kind of sold the soul or whatever, to revive the family. Why is he- why is he so fucking arrogant and high and mighty about all of his family then? If he's fucking like- he, he didn't get it from skill or anything like that. He just said, hey witch, I want to be successful. And the witch was like, alright, there you go. What a dick, man. Or did his miraculous stretch of good luck while reviving his family cause him to feel a mysterious power himself? Please revive the marble race? Alright, you know what? At the end of the stream, why not? As a treat. As a treat. Alright, there you go. Uh, did I read this? Or did his miraculous... Okay, I did, yeah. At some point, Grandfather began to make the research of black magic his life's work. He filled his study up with suspicious books, chemicals, and magical items as he became increasingly bizarre. I think that... It's kind of hard to decide what would be more interesting that there's some sort of supernatural slant with a witch and it's going to be like, okay, how's that going to work? Or, and it probably is that to be honest, but like the having like a fake out with like, oh, it's supernatural, it's the occult and all that shit, but really it's an old man that went crazy and deluded himself into thinking that there was some deal when really it was actually his own success and a bit of luck. That sounds interesting too. Like uh, uncovering that sounds like it could be a fun time. Hmm. I wonder which it is. Too bad we're never going to find out. He filled the study with suspicious books, chemicals, and magical items as it, began increase, it became increasingly bizarre. From what I've heard, those around him warmly, question mark, watched over him, figuring that someone who had achieved success in life had a right to do as he pleased. But there's no way that's true. They were probably just creeped out thinking, that's disgusting. I don't want to get involved. Anyway, that agitated period was an age of big gambles with both opportunities and risks. Let's say grandfather was born in this time period. I mean, he was. He would have had no opportunities and would probably have advanced. Oh, I see. Advanced like a chess piece from mandatory education to college at a leisurely pace. Unless he got unpassant off the board. I, I, I hear chess. I say I know unpassant because I know what it is. Those are the rules. Do you know? Never becoming more than an average salary man. If that happened, he'd probably have sat somewhere happily taking, uh, talking behind his boss's back. No, no. Not in a fancy dining hall like this. More like a, at a table in some bar. Then again, I'll bet this family conference would be a whole lot more relaxing if that were the case. Probably wouldn't be happening, bud. Okay, that's enough about the old geezer. More importantly, let's talk about this incredible lunch. <laughs> I'm already convinced by that sashimi salad appetizer. Gota sounds an excellent chef. Plus, these fish were caught in the adjacent seas, weren't they? They're totally different from the sashimi you get at the supermarket. I know sashimi from Stardew Valley. I've made some sashimi in, in my time in that game. Hey, quit it, battler. Your upbringing will be exposed. Everyone let out a big laugh. Ha 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 ha. Let's let's egg on him about the boat again too. Damn it! You you say that even though you you love those cheap pubs. 
Ha 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 ha. I've eaten at many unusual places because of work, but this stands right up there with the best of them. I'd be willing to bet Gudasan used to be pretty well known in those circles. Oh, George, you're such a chad. Well, I don't know the details, but stuff got complicated at the long-standing hotel you used to work at. What with them opening a new establishment with the same name and breaking the factions or whatever it was. And also people kept dying. In the middle of all that, he was apparently forced to retire. At that time, Mom just happened to be sending out job offers for uh, a servant. As Guda removed the empty plates, he began to recount his own bumpy past without losing his smile. I fucking hate this character. This word, this world is a difficult place. However, thanks to the madame, I was given a chance to display my skills as a chef once again, this time for the Ushi family. Although I enjoy experiencing the smiles of a larger number of people, I also find it quite entertaining to perform more delicate work that can please a limited number, limited number of those who have employed me. All this is thanks to the opportunity given to me by the madame. Godasan respectfully bowed his head toward Aunt Nats. That's because you were the most talented of the applicants. The decision was purely objective, not based on personal feelings, so there's no need to thank me. Dang, why does Aunt Nats always have to sound so indifferent? I fucking love Aunt Nats! Holy shit! If only she spoke with a bit more kindness, she might leave a different impression. Shannon Shan and Kumasawa-san entered from the hallway with a serving cart. Please excuse us. Now then, let's move on to today's dessert. Gudasan and the others laid the beautifully adorned dessert out in front of us all. I guess it's true when they say you have another stomach for dessert. I thought I already filled up on delicious food, but as soon as I laid eyes on that dessert, my stomach started yelling more. I don't know much about desserts, but this looked really good. A white pudding-like substance was garnished with two shades of red sauce and elegant rose petals adorned the dish. Normally during a high-class meal like this, you're supposed to wait for the chef to extol the virtues of this particular meal before eating. However, Maria was completely indifferent to strict rules like that, and so she got excited by this beautiful and delicious looking dessert, jumping into the fray as soon as it was placed before her. Aw oh, man, no wonder the grandfather hates her. Wow. Aunt Rosa scolded her, calling it bad manners, but George responded by saying, Now, now, it's okay. Ooh? This part's sour. This part's sour. Battler, this one's no good. Ooh. Maria exclaimed as she sampled the two colored sauces. What, some are good and some bad? Okay, I'll give it a go. Mmm. Apparently one sauce was sweet and the other sour. Despite it being bad manners, I also stuck my little finger in and licked it. Whoa, one of the sauces was, was sour enough to make you pucker up. If it were yellow, I'd suspect... I would have suspected... Sorry, suspected lemon, but I couldn't guess what kind of sourness would be red. Maybe it's dyed lemon. I decided to ask Shannon, who was putting away the serving cart behind us. Shannon Chan, what kind of sauce is this sour stuff? I don't fucking know, battler. Um, uh... Shan Chan hesitated. Maybe her job was just to set the table so she doesn't really know. Still, even considering that, she seems pretty stressed. Maybe I shouldn't have asked. Or did they use some ingredient that we'd better... That we'd be better off not knowing about? While Aunt Nats made a gesture that seemed to indicate an oncoming headache, Kumasawa-san, who was setting the table at the opposite seat, began to chuckle. Ha 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 What do you think we make it out of? Made it out of? Ho ho ho, it'll shock you. Human entrail? <laughs> I don't have a clue. Wait a sec, Kumasawa-san. That laugh's pretty creepy. So what is it? Don't tell anyone, okay? Listen very carefully. Kumasawa-san leaned across to the other side of the table. I leaned forward myself when she asked. Their, inter their, their interest caught Jessica, George and Aki, and of course Maria also put their ears closer. It's piss. Uh, what? What? Quickly, quickly, what is it? See, the sour part is made from... Juice squeezed from a mackerel. Ho ho ho, ugh. What? Mackerel? That's crazy, we all, th we all thought horrified. Only Maria accepted it, nodding sh sagely. Ooh. Mackerels are sour. This is what comes out when you squeeze them. <laughs> when Maria started clamoring that... Clamoring that mackerel were sour, the adults were unable to contain their laughter. Wow, so fucking funny. Only Aunt Rosa... <laughs> Sorry. Only Aunt Rosa, her face red, whispered to Maria that mackerel is sour only once prepared as shimisaba. Yeah, you idiot. How do you not know that? Uh, now I totally remember. Kumasawa-san was always like this, wasn't she? I think I remember her tricking me too in all sorts of ways when I was young. The most lethal has got to be that, got to be that one. Those flimsy black things in Chinese dishes. They're... Kikuragi? Mushrooms? She told me they were penguin meat, and and I went all around school like a smartass telling everyone, didn't I? Kumasawa, you sure haven't changed. You know Maria's gonna believe it now, right? Ho ho ho, it's just a joke. Now Godasan's going to tell us what the sauce r really is, won't he? Guda looked a little put off about his masterpiece being laughed at for such a bizarre reason, but after clearing his throat once, he introduced the dessert to us. Well then, allow me to introduce our dessert! After seeing how much you all enjoyed the Rose Garden earlier today, I finished this pa panna cotta in a, in a Rose Garden style. I'm ready for my dessert. All right. 
Maria should play 12 minutes. The rose petals scattered across were selected just now from that very rose garden. The sauce is a combination of two reds, strawberry and rose hips. Please enjoy this mixture of strawberry sweetness and the rose hip sourness. What the fuck is a rose hip? Furthermore, the rose petals are merely decorative, so please avoid them while you eat. Rose hip. I don't know what a rose hip is. What's a rose hip? Rose hip. Bro, seriously? I'm sorry, I don't know what it is. Rose hips are commonly used in herbal tea, often blend. It's a berry blended with hibiscus. An oil is also extracted from the seeds. Rose hip is sour. Okay. Also called rose haw and rose hep is the accessory fruit of the various species of rose plant. It is typically red to orange, but ranges dark pearl, purple to black in some species. Oh, I didn't know that. That's interesting. With that said, please enjoy. Whoa, man. Whoa, man. A rose hip. I always want to applaud before eating. Just like with medicine, reading the detailed description first may seems to make it work a whole lot better. As good as San elaborated on the details of this dessert, it started to feel even more appetizing. Seriously, should you should you call him subtle or just talented? The dessert was probably planned from the beginning, but taking the hint when all when all we stopped when we all stopped in front of the rose garden earlier today, he displayed an incredible and timely awareness by just adding a few rose petals from that garden. Okay, like and yet you couldn't get the tea done on time? Dude, what's what's your angle here? Did you make a deal with the with the fucking witch too? And it's just like shit just happens? Like how are you this talented but couldn't get tea done? This combination of sweet and sour was also exquisite. If it was just sweet, you'd get used to it and bored halfway through. But if you reach the sour sauce at that point, you'd get a really vivid taste. And then, once you return to the sweet sauce, all of the sourness in your mouth would be replaced with an enjoyable sweetness. Oh my god, George R. R. Martin, it's fine. We don't we don't need to just fucking go. I'm sure everyone else fit the same way. Every time go to Sam passed by one of our seats, someone praised the taste in his present presentation. How is it, madame? Splendid, as always. It is worthy of entertaining our guests. I am most grateful for your words. You know what? That's not fair. It's it's building his character a little bit, and, and it's like a, an actual example of how the atmosphere is in the house. It's better than a lot of the other scenes we've seen where they waste the time. I take back. I retract my criticism. The more I read, Umineko, the more I find myself retracting earlier criticism. Ma Madame, did you know? Did you know? I have heard that Rose Hip has the ability to cure headaches. I thought you in particular would appreciate it, so I had it specially prepared. Is that so? Thank you. See, did I tell you, Nats? Rose hip is great for headaches. Speaking of that bit, has has the Skyrim subreddit completely turned on um <laughs> said Skyrim? <laughs> ah shit. Has the Starfield subreddit completely turned on uh on Starfield yet? <laughs> I said Skyrim shit. Starfield sub subreddit more or less has. Has it really? Oh man. It's still full of cope, really? <laughs> Uh, waiting for February update. Is there an update? DLC? I haven't been online in a while. I've, I've had, I've been on like a, a bit of an internet hiatus. I have been watching some YouTube videos on my phone. Um, but apart from that, I haven't been really going on Reddit or seeing new sites or anything like that. Did you ever play more? I didn't know. Check the last post on your own server. I haven't been checking that either. I'm scared to. NL librarian videos? Nah, I haven't been watching any of those. I haven't watched any, any NL in months. The Coke Zero thing. Have you been watching Cracking the Cryptic still? Not as much. I did watch um, one that Viking Prime did, because Viking Prime is a member of our community, and I think it's cool that Viking Prime makes makes puzzles that are featured there, and it was pretty good too. But I've fallen a little bit out, uh, out of Sudoku. I haven't been watching uh, um, quite as many. Did you try the new weapon, Eliza P? Is, I, is there a Eliza P update? I don't know. I haven't seen that. Favorite character so far in Umineko? Mm. I actually quite like us when we're not being a pervert. And... I was gonna say it, it was somewhat interesting that he was scared and wanted to be stopped when he was being like that, but at the same time, I think that was just a joke that didn't land very well. Um, I don't think that's a plot point. I, I like us when we're not doing that. Uh, of course, I gotta give it to my boy George. Like, holy shit. Like, like come on, that's the goat. Uh, f um, for no reason at all. Uh, where is she? There we are. For no reason at all. I, actually, I don't know. Like, no, no character is really sticking out to me so far. But um, the most entertaining and interesting character has probably been Eva for just being <laughs> so cruel to Nats. That was the best interaction. But that's the most interesting thing that's happened by far. Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't think I really have a standout character. Rosip is great for headaches. So it seems. I do hope it actually helps. Ha. Go to San. I love ya. Hey, later on, why don't you tell me how they're treating you? Or if you can't, just let me know what sort of salary you'd like. Having your talent confined to a small island is sacrilege to humanity's cooking culture. What do you what do you think about working your craft for my company or and delighting all our customers? Ha ha ha, Hidi Yoshisan, are you trying to steal away our Gouda? Now that won't do at all. We'd better start treating Gouda better, or he'll get snatched up. Yeah, you better. 
giggle. Yes, you should. If you don't, someone's going to grab him and you'll be stuck with three meals of Kumasawa-style mackerel cooking a, a day, won't you? You guys are going to keep living here even when Grandfather croaks? Really? Huh. Ho ho, that's harsh. It seems someone's holding a grudge against me. Wah ha 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 ha. Everyone let a huge laugh. Ho ho ho. According to Jessica, Kumasawa-san's mackerel jokes were a running gag that her parents had long since gotten used to. Kumasawa-san often claimed that mackerels had precious nutritional value which could slow aging, make people smarter, and more. Supposedly, while it couldn't stop the outer signs of aging, it helped prevent it on the inside. Since she was still spirited enough to tell the kids, uh, sorry, to tell these kinds of jokes at her age, there must be something to that theory. Ho ho ho. In that case, if you'll excuse me, prepare yourself for tonight's dinner. I'll be cooking plenty of mackerel dishes for you all, so you better look forward to it. Alright, here we go. Another hearty laugh. Wah ha 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 ha. We sure will. Can't wait to get all puckered up from tonight's shimmy shaba, whatever the fuck it is. That sounds wonderful. I wonder if they'll be serving any, any good Japanese... <sighs> sake. Oh, we certainly will. Haven't you heard of Rockin' Jima's famous mackerel, Sochu? Wah ha 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 ha. Kumasawa-san, together with Shannon chan bowed and pushed the serving cart away. It was pretty funny to watch Goda-san, who looked like his show had totally been stolen, explain in a serious voice that we would be having calf steak for dinner. Oh, Goda-san is very, uh, upset. Very upset. Um, Kumasawa-san, thanks for doing that back there. She pushed the serving cart. As she pushed the serving cart, Shannon bowed her head very deeply. Ho ho ho, I haven't done anything that requires thanks. Kumasawa may have played dumb, but she had obviously understood and saved Shannon in the nick of time. Back when Battler had asked about dessert, Shannon had unfortunately hesitated. There may have been several ways to dodge the question, but all of them would have required some quick wits. Shannon, who hesitated when hard-pressed for a response, was always, always suffering because of this small weakness. If only Shannon had a little craftiness needed to cleverly uh, shake off a mistake like Gouda, her life would have been a bit easier. Okay, what was the mistake? That she didn't know how it was made? Or is was his answer bullshit and she had to cover for him? Or... I think it's probably because she didn't know, but, hmm. The fact that she could perform other tasks flawlessly made this weakness even more unfortunate. However, there were some who understood Shannon's honest nature, her, her inability to gloss over a mistake and draw attention away from it. That was why Kuma, Kumasawa had smoothly come to her rescue. I just heard from Genji-san that there will be a change in the afternoon shifts. I believe you were given a break until this evening. Ho ho ho, I'm jealous. Huh? Oh, sorry, I haven't checked the, the shift chart yet. There's a shift chart? Ah, yes. I was thinking I might start cooking some mackerel in the oven. If you don't mind, I would be happy if you would help out a bit before your break. Ah, yes, I would be delighted to help. To Shannon, Kumasawa was like a mother among the servants. Wait, is this not first person? Why do they talk about Battler in third person? It's not always, no. Sometimes it's first person from Battler's perspective, and other times it shifts to third person or a first person perspective that they're not telling us. Um, you know, it's pretty common actually. It's not, it's not an issue. If you hear me saying, I wonder who we are right now, it's not like criticism or anything. It's fine to do this, but, um, it is important to kind of keep track of who, who we are, right? The dining hall needed to be cleaned up. So we were chased out. Instead, tea was being served in the parlor. Apparently they prepared the black tea that Aunt Rosa had bought for Aunt Nats. Maria said she also wanted to have some black tea, but my old, but my old bastard said she couldn't and told us children to go play outside. Battler Khan, why don't we all go for a walk outside? Okay, is it time for the perverted interlude? Here we go. Go ahead and take a look at the roses or something, but keep a close eye on the weather. The sky's still clear, but the weather report we kept on talking about rain. Ooh, I want to go to the beach. The beach. Oh, fucking hell. That sounds wonderful. Playing on a sandy beach isn't something you get to do often, is it? Ah, good point. Okay, let's, let's all go to the beach then. Beach episode. Let's go, let's go. Maria, be careful not to get your clothes wet or your shoes. Uh... Won't get wet. Giggle. That obedience is so cute. Battle the cunt. Make sure you keep an eye out for Maria-chan, okay? Sure, leave it to me, mommy. Hey, you're pretty obedient and cute yourself. Listen to Kyrie like that. Why don't you also listen to me obediently for a change? Ha! Hell no. Let's go, everyone. Come on. Shouldn't have fucked over my mother, who's dead now, if you want me to listen to you, Dad. See you later. The children flew out of the parlor. They were replaced by Genji, who pushed the serving cart in and prepared to serve the tea. That's also an interesting angle, actually, that he's he's on better terms with the new stepmom than he is with his own dad. Even though, like, he could easily just be like, you know, fuck you, stepmom, you replaced my mom, who my dad didn't take care of. He's like, yeah, I, I like that, actually. That's a, a good subversion of the usual kind of shit, right? Evil stepmom, whatever. Maybe it turns into that later, who knows. But the fact that he's like, you know what, you're here, it's not really your fault what my dad did to my mom, whatever, like... You know, we can be friends, I guess. You know, that's interesting. I hate 
repeated conflict that's just like the easy way to get the drama in in the in the story going you know like oh i fucking hate my stepmom or my stepdad or whatever they were replaced by genji you push a serving cart in and prepared to serve the tea the parlor was filled with uh, a sublime aroma which delighted everyone while they waited to sate their thirst ha 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 rudolph's family certainly seems close it's a wonderful thing quit it we're no match for your family Aniki. That's true. You've raised Jessica Chan to be so adorable. I imagine that's yet another fruit of your talents at education and training, Nat Nat Natsuki san. Thank you. Ooh, Nats answered coldly. Ooh, this is the best thing in the story so far. Oh man, she hates her. <laughs> Everything she says, Nats like, what the fuck is your angle? Oh, the conversation broke off then and the parlor fell silent. Maybe Hideyoshi couldn't bear the silence uh, because he broke it himself with an exaggerated gesture. Still, they sure do grow fast. I thought they'd be kids forever, but they start getting huge all of a sudden and then they, they're like adults like us. Badalukan looks like a completely different person now. His body has grown much bigger, but he's still just a kid. Though you could say the same about my husband. I wonder where the border between child and adult is. Nope, not taking it. Not taking it. I still don't feel as though I've grown up. Um, isn't that pitiful? That's not something the mother of a child should say. That's right. We're not children anymore. We're all adults now. So I wish we could talk together on an intellectual level rather than an emotional one. Oh! When Eva smiled with sharp sarcasm, everyone seemed to get more tense. It felt as though the pleasant tea aroma that had been tossed up, had been tossed at the window. Since long ago, we've always endeavored to engage in intellectual conversations. It seems your sarcasm occasionally misses its mark, just as it always has. Oh, what is it you've always endeavored to do? <sighs> my, my, I wish I could wrap those words and send them to this room a few decades ago. Right, Rosa? Oh, all right. Rosa gave a vague smile. She knew that whether she agreed or disagreed, she'd earned the displeasure of one of her siblings. It was a bit of worldly wisdom that had been essential for someone growing up as the youngest sibling. Quit it, Ineki. We better get started on our main topic while the brats aren't around. Let us make that our intellectual discussion. As Rudolph glanced over the faces of all present, some let out a slight sigh and some let out a small look of resignation. So sorry, some let out a small look of resignation cross their face. Some not. Why I say? Why I'm saying out? Did I add out there twice? Small. Little, okay, let's keep going. They're approaching their unavoidable true agenda. Let's kill Grandpa. Last year, his life expectancy was estimated at about three months, which I guess means he's got negative nine months left now. <laughs> Should we take that to mean it might suddenly happen anytime? The family head is still alive and well. The fact that you'd bring up such an inappropriate topic under the light of day makes me doubt your sanity, Rudolph-san. Still, Nats. This is the sort of thing you can't put off until, until after something happens. He's still healthy now, which makes this the perfect time to talk about this while we still got time to plan. It's just a bit of financial etiquette, you might say. It seems father is the focus of everyone's concern, Dr. Nanjo. Could we hear the details from you? It, that appears to be what everyone else is waiting for, after all. Fuck, fucking Nanjo's here? I didn't know Nanjo was here. Cough. Nanjo had been standing by the window and staring out of the rose garden, let out a single cough when he realized he was being called. Dr. Nanjo, how is father's condition? Well, to begin, allow me to start with a revision, since my estimate last year that he had only three months left and was not born out. <laughs> uh, okay, no need to explain. You're saying that measuring remaining life is only a prediction, not a promise, right? That is correct. Because of that, while I will accept everyone's repeated questions, I can by no means confirm when he will pass away. A human's life is supported by their body and their minds. If the body is weak, the situation becomes more dangerous, but if the mind is strong enough to compensate for that weakness, the effects of one's condition can sometimes remain in a subdued state. So you're saying that even if his body is weak, his mind is still firm and spirited. Kyrie, sorry, but please stay quiet for a bit. Ooh, I'm sorry. That is correct. Why is your eye closed? Kinzo-san's body is being overwhelmed by the demon of ill health. This will hold especially true as long as he continues to partake of such strong alcohol. Al Ghul. So he's in crisis now because he drinks. And maybe he's lived this long because he drinks. There's dad for you, the heavy drinker. Well then, doctor, I know you can't give anything more than a prediction, but what do you think about father's chances living until this day next year? That's quite a rude question to ask about the family head. Nats jumped on Eva, not even bothering to hide her astonished expression. Eva stared back daringly, but Hideyoshi realized what was going on and tried to smooth things over with a forced smile. Ah, Nats-san, forgive her. 
Eva, choose your words more a bit more carefully, okay? I'm sorry. I was just so concerned about father's condition. Giggle. Is that so? <laughs> I hadn't realized. Dr. Nanjo, please tell us, for the sake of the- Ah, oh, shit! So for the sake of the beautiful love of a daughter, worried about her father's lifespan. Nanjo, please say three months. Be a Chad and say three months. Still three months, Cross laughs, laughs sarcastically, and Eva, smiling sweetly, returns an identical chuckle. You ask whether he will still be healthy next year. But as a doctor, it is very hard to say. Because while I do think this lull in his condition will continue for a while, if he suffers some kind of fit, there may be nothing we can do. After all, Rockinjima is a solitary island. It is not as though an ambulance could quickly jump in to save him. Normally, I would want to have him placed in a large hospital on the mainland, but... Father stated that he does not want his noble research interrupted. It seems he holds a grudge over the way we tried to force him out last year. Apparently, he strongly suspects that he'll be shut away in some hospital if he goes outside. And that's how things are now. And he's totally right. Has Dr. Nanjo been examining him? Father trusts Dr. Nanjo. It seems he can be examined when in one of his better moods. I can examine his condition, but if I try to recommend me medicine or hospitalization, he refuses to listen. I've really only been able to look. Is it true? It's true some people hate doctors. Still, what a hassle. Nanjo sighed deeply. The purpose of an examination is to determine what medical treatment would be appropriate. Receiving an examination and then not following the advice given makes the whole thing pointless. I'm sorry, so you just, like, thought he was, like, three months to live just by looking at him? Dude, just trust me? What? So to sum it up, he's still expected to live three months. There's no way to guess how long he'll continue to live while still on the verge of death. Rudolf San, couldn't you be a little more discreet with your words? Ah, uh, sorry. I've always talked this way. Give me a break. I understand how Dr. Nanjo sees it. What about you, Kras Krasnisan? Humph. To be perfectly honest, I have to disagree with Dr. Nanjo. I find it truly difficult to think of father as a person so sick that he only has three months to live. His yell is as healthy as ever, and I still get chills as at the thought of his fists raining down on me. Pushing the care of your father solely on the shoulders of the eldest sibling is far from fair. Ooh, ha 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 ha. In the next world, get born after me. Wow! Holy shit, Rudolph! Okay, let's get back on track. So in the opinion, uh so in the opinion of our impartial and neutral doctor, it wouldn't be odd for him to go any time. No offense to you, Iniki, but I'd rather trust the opinion of an expert in this field, which means it's definitely not too early to start talking about dad's assets. Father's personal funds probably reach as high as several ten billion yen, right? But it's not as though that's all neatly gathered as ready cash. It's not as simple as simply cutting a birthday cake with a knife. That's an interesting way to put it. That's right, you sometimes get strawberries or chocolates on top of the cake, making it hard to cleanly cut into it in equal parts. Given that, don't you think it's important to discuss beforehand how best to stick the knife in? Wow, you're all vultures, he's right. I cannot understand how you all can openly discuss this as though the family head is dead even though he's still alive. Come now, don't you see how important this is? After all, when the time comes, the inheritance of his fortune must be carried out immediately, right? More, uh, you know what though? It doesn't sound like he was a very good father. So can you blame them? <sighs> like, like beating them with the wooden sword and shit? Like, <sighs> moreover, the glorious Ushiro Mira, ho Mira house, uh, house's wealth is vast. Don't you understand that careful discussion is necessary beforehand? There's a huge difference between this family's resources and your family's wealth. How rude. My birth family has nothing to do with this. Nats responded indignantly, though in a low voice, and the already dark atmosphere grew even more hostile. Give it a rest, Eva. Nats, forgive us. Pardon her rudeness. Hide Yoshi tried to smooth things over by glancing at both with a forced smile. A lot of forced smiles from Yoshi, and it only resulted in making the hostility between Eva and Nats even more intense. It seems I'll just get in the way if I stay any longer. Please excuse me. Nice. Nanjo rose from his seat and exited the parlor. To an outsider, it may have seemed like a normal act of courtesy, but his back was watched by several glances envious of his ability to escape. E oh my god. <sighs> Pretty good scene, pretty good interactions, and then there's just like this nugget of shit. Like, here you go, that's for you. Like, <laughs> here's like this fucking like rabbit dropping that we're just gonna put on the pillow. There you go, enjoy. You know, like fucking hell. Like, oh, come on, after the doctor exited and his footsteps had disappeared in the, into the distance, Krauss recrossed his legs. 
In other words, this is what you would all like to say. Father's remaining life is short. You want to quickly enter into a practical conference concerning the distrib distribution of the inheritance. Why are you so eager, I wonder? Certainly, as you say, estimating and distributing the Ushi family's wealth is no simple task. In that case, shouldn't we make careful and deliberate calculations? It seems to me that you are all impatient to split up the cake tonight. Isn't that true, Rosa? What reason is there to be hasty? We aren't being hasty. However, we need to have an agreement between the siblings. It doesn't matter when we do that, but if the day father's condition worsens is approaching, discussing the matter beforehand hardly seems hasty to me. Rosa shot a glance at Eva and Rudolph. As the youngest sibling in the family, it was hard for her to be cross-examined by the eldest. Oh, is that your true opinion? I didn't expect that the, that the most honest and pure-hearted of the siblings would say something like that. I wonder if those two told you to say it. Ooh, quit it, Nikki. Rose is one of Dad's kids, too. She's got as much of the right to the inheritance as the rest of us. It's only natural that she'd be interested. After all, Dad'll definitely die, and that's not something that'll happen in the distant future. On the contrary, Eniki, you're way too relaxed. It almost it seems almost like you'd like nothing better than to turn the discussion away from the inheritance issue. What do you mean by that? Are you trying to accuse my husband of something? C calm down, Nats. Listen to what we have to say. Nissan, I hear the times have been extremely good lately. Yes, since last year we've been in an unprecedented boom and the yen keeps on rising. It seems that it's no longer a dream that the dollar will reach 100 yen. Also, the ruling party says that it will establish health resort maintenance law... What? Law by next year. At this moment, resort development companies across Japan are running about trying to gather as much funding as they can. You certainly seem to know a lot about it. Japan is about to experience an unprecedented boom. It'll be a repeat of the Korean War demands, the time during which father revived the Ushiro R Romia family. I just said that wrong. The people of Japan have been working like mad, achieving vast economic growth and becoming the most well-off people in the world, reaching the height of our prosperity. We've reached an era where private, va private spending is vast, which means easy money for institutions that can capitalize on that fact. The three kinds of electrical appliances are no, long no longer represent the people's needs. The people need ski resorts, golf courses, public pools. Is this some business talk that I'm not familiar with? That they need like ovens, fucking dishwasher, washing machine, whatever, something like that? I don't, I don't know what this means. I kind of get the intent, but I don't know what specifically it's, it's talking about. People need ski resorts, uh, golf courses, public pools, resort hotels, and theme parks. Have you gone to Del Delsney Land? Del Delsney Land, which opened a few years ago. What an excellent theme park. It's a place where even an adult can be a kid and have fun with his family. No longer do we count our sole virtue to be selfless devotion while failing to care for our families. We have become the most prosperous people in the world, and now we can finally enjoy the benefits. Krausan, your foresight's nothing to sneeze at. When I heard that sort of thing several years ago, I thought it was crazy, but when I heard about the G5 Nations Plaza Accord, that all changed. The end shot up, and I'll bet the price of land skyrockets soon, too. It won't be long before Japan becomes the economic center of the world. You've got a great sense of the direction of the world's, that, that the world's moving, Krausan. At least there can be no debate about that. I feel the same as Hideyoshi-san. Aniki, you can read into the next decade of history. I'll bet you got that keen sense from Dad, and it's incredible. Do you know Beatrice? However, unlike Dad, the timing of your predictions has been a bit off sometimes, right? Nissan, you've been starting resort projects everywhere, convinced that Japan will soon will soon see a boom, but almost all of them continue to fail. While I'm sure that the era you predict will soon arrive, it seems you misread the timing of that boom. You were too early. You then panicked and tried to sell everything off, which only opened the wound even further. Your nose was really so reliable. If your nose was really so reliable, then there should be no reason for you to sell off your property. Is this proof that you that you mistrust your own ability? <sighs> how dare you? Yeah, how rude! Oh my god, are you trying to insult my husband? You need to calm down. I kind of like you. Almost everyone else, uh, more than anyone else in this room for some reason. I don't quite know why, but you need to calm down. Nat's forehead creased as she rose from the sofa. Eva, paying this no heed, stared at Kraus with a confident smile. Kraus, who also maintained his confident appearance, told Nats to sit down. Please stop, Nats. Eva's always been incapable of take talking any other way. Calm down a little, or your headache will get worse. There's proof of your lack of talent right next to us. After all, Nissan, weren't you all excited about turning this island into a resort? You built a wonderful resort hotel and beautifully maintained garden. I'm just an amateur and don't pretend to understand, but you must have, must have used a significant amount of money for that, right? And what is that to you? My husband's business is none of yours. Actually, that's not true, Nats. 
Rock and Jima doesn't belong to An Aniki, it belongs to Dad. Of course, the hotel does belong to Aniki, right? In fact, we'd be more than willing to pay lodging fees for tonight. What do you think, Rosa? Well, hmm. So there's a hotel here too? And a resort? Not just the guest house and... Or is the guest house the hotel? I think it's... I, I think the guest house is something different. Well, hmm, if I have, have... Sorry, if what I have on hand will suffice... If I can make it into a resort, this island's financial worth will rise. It is true that expenses have piled up, but but we can expect a large harvest in the future. When that happens, all of you stand to profit as well, do you not? I understand that. If the value of this island rises, that will increase our portions when we distribute the inheritance. Of course, I won't ask you to divide the island and, and the mansion into four equal parts. We can just resolve the matter with money equal to the value of the property. If you understand that much, what about my business? What about my what about my business makes you so dissatisfied? We aren't dissatisfied, we're uneasy. In the first place, Aniki, when do you plan to open that hotel? Left this way, you won't get anything out of it except our grubby handprints, right? That's right. It's an important tool for your business, isn't it? Surely you can't keep it locked up until the moment you open it. Buildings go bad. I didn't expect these two to be like such a, a team. Buildings go bad if, if uh, you don't- Ah, I'm fine. kind of liking the game. God, it's not a game. I'm kind of liking the story. God fucking damn it. Oh, god damn it. I'm kind of liking it. Shh. Oh. It's kind of interesting. Fuck. I wish it, it hadn't taken six hours to get here, but it's kind of interesting. I like that this dynamic is so different than how they were acting in front of the kids in the, in the airport. It's like, oh, the kids are away, and this time we finally get to see it, and then it's just like a boom, business. The tone is completely different. Like, they still feel true to how they were acting back then. You know, like... I just hope the next four years pass pretty quickly, you know? Buildings go bad if you don't use them and I have to air, air them out every once in a while. Even so, it's a bit extravagant for a guest house that we only use once a year. Right, Rosa? Oh, it is, a, it is the guest house. Okay, that's right. Considering how wonderful it is, I'm sure it'll become quite popular once you open it. Oh, so the hotel you keep talking about is the guest house. <laughs> Thank you, Kyrie. Thank you. It's splendid. Just as Rosa said, if you were to open it, I'm sure it would become popular. <sighs> Lodging they had been gui guided to wasn't originally intended to serve as a guest house. It was originally constructed as a resort hotel. However, even though it was built two years previously, there was still absolutely no prospect of it opening. Seems kind of... Wasteful. Nissan, it's just like all of your enterprises. Your attention and planning are both fabulous. Then it's always... It, it always becomes unmaintainable partway through and ends before you have a chance to earn any profit. You were brilliant when you saw that using this island only as a place to live was a waste. I think it was a pretty good plan to turn it into a resort that could use the prospect of marine sports, fishing, honeymoons, and the like to attract customers. If I were the oldest son, I'm sure I'd have strained my brain looking for a way to, to make a profit off this, uh, off this island. Two. But two full years have passed since you finished building, right? After two years, you still haven't had the opportunity to open it. Where's the managing company you entrusted it to? Impertinence. This, this, that is not my husband's fault. There's been some, there's been some trouble with the company that my, that's, this is completely normal, very polite, courteous fucking, like, this is fine. Shut up. Impertinence is not my husband's fault. There's just been some trouble with the company that my husband contracted with. No matter how you look at it, we are, we are victims here. And yet, the rumors we've heard about this company you've hired haven't been good at all. Let's be clear about this, dear. Did you really think we wouldn't hear about how lack of payment, embezzlement, and other issues led to the project disintegrating mid-flight? Mid we ha we even have evidence. Okay, so maybe she's hiding something, and that's why she's super defensive. Huh. Huh, okay. I don't know what kind of evidence you think you found, but it's all baseless. As new members in the tours tourism industry, it is necessary for us to lay the groundwork with various people. It's also important to investigate the trustworthiness uh, of our partners. It's merely taken us some time to meet that goal. I'll admit that in my rashness, the hotel was completely too early. However, it's not as though we're paying maintenance costs. It's a foundation that will eventually become immensely significant. I mean, there are, people, there are people in it right now. Liar, I'll bet you want to liquidate it, but can't. After all, there's no reason for anyone to buy such an extravagant hotel on an isolated, empty island without any established sightseeing routes. And anyway, what about all the loans you made for this project? Even if you aren't in co How are you a part of this game bang? What the fuck are you doing? Hideyoshi? <laughs> Why are you, you, you- Shut up! <laughs> Even if you aren't incurring maintenance costs. 
The borrower, borrowed money that you can't return just keeps growing. Sorry, Krasny san, but I've investigated the development plan for this island a bit. To be honest, I haven't heard anything good either. Hideyoshi san. Even you? I can see how you might be left with the imp that impression by looking only at the current financial situation. However, this is a forward-looking investment. I have no choice but to admit that my prediction was mistaken, and that up until now, several liabilities have been created. However, the times have finally caught up with me. I, I will soon regain everything that I have lost up to this point. No, actually, all of the investments I have made up until now will finally return to my possession. That's right, just like throwing away a small fry to catch a salmon, they will soon come back even bigger than before. I'll accept that. The resort business will probably see an unprecedented boom before long, though I don't know if it'll be if it'll be enough to cover all your debt. However, Kraus Nissan, after all your failures in the past, who exactly do you expect to provide who exactly do you expect to provide you with funding? And this isn't some small amount we're talking about, we're talking talkings about. You will need enough funding to fill the massive hole you've dug. What are you trying to say, Hideyoshi san? Ah, uh, Nats, please don't get angry. We we looked into this too. We checked to see who might have provided Krasnissan with enough financials with enough financing to support his recent large scale projects despite his string of failures. And we discovered that no such backer exists. The iron rule of the money roulette is that you bet against the loser. And Iki, you're a fairly well known loser in this field. It's true that prosperous times are about to come, but when we looked for people who considered that enough to overlook your strings of failures and also had enough of for the investment, we found no candidates. So, the big question now damn! The whole ambush they had planned for this guy! What the fuck? So the big question now is where you got that money from. Ho. Oh. So <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Hi ho! Now, isn't this intriguing? And? Your point? The deer! How long do you plan to let these ridiculous remarks stand? Sit down, Nats. Let's cut to the point. Aniki, you've been diverting Dad's private funds for your own business. Businesses, there's pretty much no room for doubt. If you think we've made some kind of mistake, please feel free to explain. Rudolph, don't call it diverting funds. This is embezzlement, plain and simple. A huge crime that can be criminally prosecuted. This sort of rudeness cannot be tolerated. How can you face the successor to the Ushi head family and level these absurd accusations? They aren't absurd. They're right on the mark. I'm sure he'd like to somehow make his business succeed and recover his losses, but his debt keeps getting bigger. He's just trying to cover up the failure of one gamble by making an even bigger one. It's only natural that he try to grab any source of funding close at hand. Let me be frank, Nissan. What you're doing is embezzlement. You're betraying father. You're betraying father. Man, I wish I knew about enough about finance to know if it was embezzlement. I don't even really know what embezzlement is. I'm going to be honest with you. You know that we'll have the court settle this after it's all over, right? Do you think that kind of person has any right to call themselves the successor to the Ushi head family? Of all the, you dare claim that he has betrayed the family head? You no longer have the right to straddle the threshold of the glorious Ushi R R Romia family. Leave this place at once, now. Get out, said Gollum. Nats, who had already reached the limits of her anger, shouted at Eva in, ra in a rage. She then pointed alternate alternately at Eva and the hallway, demanding that she leave. Man, Rosa hasn't said anything in so long. Eva took out a folding fan and, fan and fanned herself with it. That's what fans do, glaring maliciously at, at, Nats, at Nats as though silently daring her to repeat what she said. However, her mouth was still smiling, curved in the shape of a crescent moon. In that unpleasant silence, Rosa gulped. Hey, Nats? To whom do you think you are speaking... To, to whom do you think you are speaking in such a tone? I'm speaking to the exceedingly rude sister of my husband. As the person in charge of the main family's kitchen, I cannot overlook any more of this. In charge of the kitchen? <laughs> Be silent, lowly maidservant. Ooh! Eva folded the fan with a snap and rose to her feet energetically. Compared to the elegance and playfulness she'd shown until a, until a second ago, she was now unimaginably aggressive. How foolish. You stand down. Before Eva of the Ushiromiya family. You tell me to stand down? Me, Ushiromiya Eva, the third ranked in the Ushiromiya family hierarchy and the, one allowed to, and the one allowed to sit at the left shoulder of the head. Oh, damn. Know your place, I know mine, it's that chair. And then look at your shabby self in a mirror. Where is the symbol of the wing on your clothes? Where are you, where are you permitted to wear the one-winged eagle? Okay, that's where it is then. Aren't you nothing more than a borrowed womb to house the next successor of the Ushiromiya family? Understand your place, you common housemaid. Ooh, Eva's face twisted hideously as her words gouged into Nat's heart like talons wrenching at it. She is damn! 
There were a hundred ways Nats wanted to respond. However, her anger and sorrow crushed her throat, and none of those words managed to make it to her mouth. Her anger had nowhere to go and became a single hot tear that slowly, slowly dripped down. What's wrong? If you have something to say, please do so. Come on. Eva faced her with a provocative gaze. However, Nats could do nothing but tremble, her clenched fist quivering. Crass quietly broke that powder keg tension. Nats, leave your seat. You should go cool your head. What? Nats, resenting the fact that her husband had not come to her aid, shifted her focus of attack. Dear, don't you understand what they're saying about you? These people are baselessly calling you a traitor to father. They are making light of the fact that we protect the glory of the Ushi Romia family even though we are constantly expending every effort to earn that glory from father. They trample all of that underfoot with their hateful rambling, and you don't even try to fight back. Why? I'm only standing up for you, us, because you won't, but you've been, but you've been putting the entire burden on me for some time now, and now you tell me to go cool my head? It's always me. Even though I've always considered the family's affairs so seriously, you've... Agra! Nats was already unable to hide tears. She flew... <laughs> Sorry, I'm not a voice actor. She flew from the room in that state. After that, all that remained was a somewhat embarrassed mood about the parlor. When the sound of footsteps grew distant and, silent, and silence returned, Cross shrugged his shoulders slightly. I apologize for my wife. She's always been bad at controlling her emotions. It's even been rough for me. If that's what's been man if that's what's been managing your household, you must suffer suffer no end, Nissan. <sighs> giggle giggle. Oh ah, ah ah Madam, it's nothing. Leave me be. Nats flew into her room and, and threw herself onto her bed lamenting. Those heart wrenching sobs reached Kumasawa in the hallway. Poor Madame Nats. There is a deep enmity between her and Iwasama. Explaining the relationship would be very trying, very trying for me as a woman. I, I don't think you need to. I get it. I I, I get it. You do oh, for the love of God. Okay. So pretty much any time we're not in dialogue, the story has a ninety percent chance to be shit. Okay. The Ushiromiya family holds blood. Ah, maybe a little less than that. The family holds blood in high regard. But if a woman marries and leaves the family, they are normally removed from the family register. Thus, under normal circumstances, Iwasama should have been removed when she married Hideo Hideyoshi-sama. However, there is no one deserving of blame in this matter. The madam certainly bears no guilt. There is nothing to call it other than a whim of God. Cross-sama and Nats were not blessed with children for some time. After all, this is the, this is the male dominant Ushi Romia family. A wife is merely a tool to create an heir. If a, if such a wife cannot fulfill her only duty, she will not even be treated as a human. It it pains me to remember how the master tortured Madam during that time. Back then, a wedding between Iwasama and the Hideo, Hideyoshi-sama was being discussed. Iwasama was sly. Taking advantage of Madam's inability to become pregnant, she gained the favor of the master. She inspired him to allow her to marry and give birth to a, success a successor herself, making sure to avoid transferring her name out of the Ushiromiya Yort Register. There was a vast difference in the Ushiromiya hierarchy between Madam, who married into the Ush Ushiromiya family and was treated like an outsider, and Iwasama, who was related to the family by blood and, who, uh, and whose husband took on the Ushiromiya name. Ooh. Furthermore, Iwasama actually gave gave birth first, and to a boy. As for how much weaker Madam's position was than Iwasama, Iwasama's well, I believe you could see for yourself. Yeah, I, yeah, we did. Man, George. I'm sure Madam's gotten tormented by the thought that... If, wait, is that George? I think it is George, isn't it? Or is, is Rose George? Yeah, it's George. Okay. I'm sure Madam is tormented by the thought that if only she had gotten pregnant earlier, the master would, wouldn't have accepted Iwasama's request to keep her last name after marriage, and Iwasama wouldn't have been permitted to act as arrogantly as she did today. However, that was not Madame's fault. All of the blame lies with God's whims and the stork that delivered Jess J Jessica late. Even so, Madame won't allow herself to see things that way. She probably can't help but cry bitter tears as a woman, and her inability to carry out the duties expected of a wife. Ah, how sad. I cannot do anything except watch over her from the shadows. What? Why are we going backwards? No, go forwards, please. No, man, the, the pacing is literally going backwards now. Okay, cool. So we're going to the beach now. All right, piss break. Hey, you can go piss for as long as you want, cause we are you done. We are you done. All right, how do I? I saved it, right? How do I go back to the to the main menu?
do 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 all right so how far did we get are we all we're not even on episode two what oh my god can we unlock remove the lock does it say on the load <laughs> still episode one. Oh shit oh man all right anyway so um so far, this is way better than Steins Gate, which is weird because I feel like the tone and the theme of Steins Gate is much more up my alley, but it just, I don't know. I'd have to go back and measure it, and that would then I'd have to go through with, with Steins Gate. It's just, Steins Gate was interesting, but the pace was so slow, and I feel like Steins Gate kept being a, a fucking cock tease where it was like hey we're gonna do something interesting now and then it would do something interesting for like i don't know 10 lines and then it would be back to oh cut in fucking elsai kongru here we go like you know like b complete bullshit you know um whereas this gets interesting and then it stays interesting for like a whole scene you know it's like it's it's pretty good um and the bullshit isn't as long it is it is there though like I, there was a, like i would say at least half of what we saw today i think you could just actually cut it <laughs> like or if it's important for later in the story and i don't know i think you could definitely trim it down or you could combine scenes or whatever like th don't get me wrong this was not like incredible but there were a couple of good scenes i think whereas at the beginning of steins gate there was like kind of the intrigue of what's going on with the time travel shit and then there was the um uh i like the the scene where uh mckeezy gave the speech but then after that that kind of became a double-edged sword because it set itself up to be like kind of serious and then it became chini bayou bullshit for for so long that i i hated it uh, and then great vegetables happen and that was the nail in the coffin so you know that's the story of steins gate that's that's what you know um but yeah this was pretty good i feel like the characters are carrying it and i like the characters a lot and i like the dynamic that that scene that we just went through was really good um and it kind of came out of nowhere but now i'm realizing that it really didn't because the dinner scene before was setting it up a little bit and i just didn't have any respect for the story because everything that we're seeing as as battler is just fucking bullshit but now it's making more sense and i like it more because now that the airport scene has taken on a new context where it's kind of like ha 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 we're all wearing our masks here you don't realize it and then it, they come off and it they really held back showing um uh kraus for so long that it's like kraus shows up and then almost immediately where he's being ambushed and, it, and it's like oh we don't even really know him and also you don't know if he's if he's good or not he's being kind of mean to the father but the fa father's also bad it's it's really hard to judge the morality of what's going on like they all seem like they're 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 money money grabbing children that are out for blood and just want their father to die and get it over with but then on the flip side like the father is actually sounds pretty fucking awful so it's interesting because it's like maybe they're right to be like this and i don't know enough about finance to know if you should actually be starting to split off the the, the inheritance this early and then it comes out with well actually there's a bigger problem here is that Krauss has got his like his fingers in it early and is spending it before they can even get it so they're upset about that so there is a really good reason to be there so yeah I would say it's actually surprisingly interesting and and, and I'm I'm stunned that um that it got so interesting so quickly um yeah so that's cool um yeah Anyway, such a shame that we, we can only play it once every four years. That's a shame. Anyway, thank you very much for uh, for the for watching. Um, thank you anyone for any gift subs or, or subs or anyone who gave bits or anything. We're, we're not doing that today because it's a it's a special Leap Day stream. Um, I will be back somewhat soon. Hope you enjoyed the Witcher teaser. If you were not here for the beginning of the stream, I played the first minute of the Witcher 3 video if you want to go back and see it. Um, so, yeah, uh, that's me done. I'll see you later. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Oh, is Persona 3 out yet? It was a good. I was at a GameStop recently, and the the a trailer for the remake played on the TV that was there, and I had to hide my power level, and I had to look at it and be like, oh, what's that? I don't know what that is. Hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> Pub sub loved it, did he? Okay. All right. Anyway, see you later, chat. Maybe we'll be back with Persona 3 right away or something. Anyway, see you later.